hang on. Whoops. Uh, hang hang on. <laughs> Good start. Hang on. Let's let's get this open because it looks like my cam's being a little a little finicky right now. <laughs> let's see. I think I may have forgotten to test it. Sorry. One one moment. This happens sometimes. It's perfectly good and normal. It's not at all distressing when my camera is being a dingus. Come here, camera. Come on, camera. Nice outfit. Yeah, it's real dark in here. I know. You t I had to. Whoops! I forgot to turn my lights on. Hey, <laughs> everyone. Sorry about that. My bad. All right. This is what I meant to do. And also turn the camera. There we go. What's up, everybody? Happy weekend. Happy Saturday. Welcome back to the Lorathon. Thank you so much for showing up and get ready for the fucking pop quiz. Perfect timing on this music, actually. I freaking distracted myself. I was doing, well, really, the tech issues distracted me. I wanted to do a cute little post um, because the Elden Ring first playthrough is done. Boom. Link isn't too bad. Boom. And pin message. What do you mean unable to pin? Freaking gosh darn. Oops. This is why you do things not live on stream because when there's issues, then you can. <laughs> oh, it did pin. Oh, thanks, Lyco. Thank you. Thank you. Hang on. Is it set to unpin until. Unpin after manually unpinned or end of stream, Poggy, and then we get this. Um, fa, my face tickles because of my hair. Uh, Rob, thanks for the gifted membership. I appreciate that so much. Hey, gamers. Thanks, Rob. Aren't you glad to be done? Through is done. Real. The realest thing has ever been said in the chat. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, um, also on YouTube, you might have seen that I did, well, I, okay, I did a, I did a poll. This music is actually very fitting for the discussion. It's very epic. Uh, we'll find things for the 100 bits as well. Uh, so we're going to be... Doing Lorathon tonight, Gold is Lane Dell, Forbidden Lands, like finish that off. Other sounds off. Oh yeah, I didn't unmute te Oh right, uh, I could hear the music, but you guys couldn't. I forgot to do that. My freaking camera, it threw. How dare you? You were supposed to behave. You distracted me from the tasks that I had set myself out to accomplish, Mr. Camera. I forgot what I was saying. Tech issues, I tell you. Glad to be here, ready for some more. I'm so glad to hear that. Yo, Tara, thank you for 27 months as well. Welcome back. Thank you so much. Appreciate the support. Raph Snake, Raph Snake, Raph Snake, Raph Snake, Foggy. Oh my God, it's a freaking Twitch hype train. Let's get it. You want to get some emotes? Time to prime. <laughs> okay, so. Today, Lorathon, Lane Dell, Forbidden Lands. Also, as you can see in the pin message, which is currently hidden, but it'll come back in a second. I finished the Elden Ring first playthrough. The last episode went up yesterday. Uh, it's done. It's done. I, I, I simultaneously have had the it's been 84 years meme in my head constantly. And also the it's done. Uh, Frodo, it's done meme. It's been both of those. Just all, it's, it's, I can finally feel like I'm like chilling again. Like it's great. But also I had some other plans. I put up a poll on Discord, on Twitter, and on YouTube. So you might've seen it in one of those three places. Effectively the same poll, but with some minor wording differences. Um, because I have some really neat ideas for scripted lore videos that I like to do for the first time. Um, it's a little late. Who cares? Half of the stuff that I'm thinking of considering relates to stuff to do with the DLC trailer and sort of like what we know. It's almost like a like a repository of knowledge of certain things that we know right now that could become relevant in DLC. For example, things like Shadow, things like Mikola and Marika, considering they seem to be central to the general story of the DLC. Uh, and then Omen, just because I think they're cool. So 
those are my three plans, my three ideas that I initially had. I know we talked about them a lot during the Lorathon. It's something unheard of, but it's just, you know, people will come in and ask questions. And from now on, I can literally just be like, hey, like, if you want to know this, check out this video, which is sort of like a, like an essay. Because that's what a lot of videos are. They're just essays. It's like a thesis that you're discussing, like a lore thesis. Every single video pretty much is like that. Every lore video it sort of has a concept. Only to edit the DLC playthrough after. I'm probably not gonna edit that. It's gonna. I'm gonna turn off alerts and then just split and upload. I'm not gonna go through that. I'm not doing that ever again. Ever again. It was awful. It was way too much effort. Um, but I wanted to get it done. But I'm never doing it again. I'll find different ways to do the same thing. I want to get playthroughs up, but just not like that. That was horrible. That was hell. I finally don't have headaches, and I think some of it was staring at the screen all the time. Have you tried looking for the one thing they announced? What, what are you, what, what, what? How many hours did it take you to finish your first playthrough? I believe the final clock was about 187 hours, maybe a bit more, like 190 or so. I think I might have checked in the video and seen at the end, but I don't remember. However, some of that was PvP. I, I cut out all the PvP from the first playthrough because I, I made videos out of those clips and it just wasn't relevant. So there was hour-long segments, multi-hour long segments that I was just chilling, doing PvP, and those were cut from the first playthrough, so that counts. Um, and then, of course, all the time that I spend like this, talking to you all while I have the game running, that's playtime, because I, I have the game normally loaded up, and it's like, you've been talking for an hour, but I haven't been playing, you know? So stuff like that. Keep the raw streams on YouTube, easy peasy. The thing is, the thing about YouTube, and it's not a problem with YouTube, but YouTube lives go in sort of a different category and I'd rather they be videos. So what I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna put them up on, I'm gonna stream it on YouTube and Twitch when it's, when it's going on. Alerts off, sort of like minimal, so that way, you know. And also to avoid spoilers and stuff, because I tend to take my time with these things. It's always a risk. Uh, and then, I think you can move it, not sure. I'm really not sure, but what I did plan to do is simply take the lives, trim them, uh, have them unlisted on, like once they're done, like remove them from YouTube and then put them up on YouTube as videos. Something like that. That's pretty much the plan. One Piece series, they said no one has found it yet and told everyone to try and find it. Um, I, if you're talking about the Miyazaki thing, we, we've addressed that. That's just Miyazaki trolling. It's really, it, it shouldn't be. <laughs> I think people think it's going to be like, I hit an area and a secret interaction. If there was something like that, then people would have found it sooner. He's probably memeing about something. It's really not that big a deal. It's very funny how it's blown up, and I understand why, but I bet Miyazaki's loving it, genuinely. Premieres automatically turn on video, but don't quote me. What do you mean? Yeah, uh, he's done it before. Miyazaki has done the exact same thing with Dark Souls 1, actually. <laughs> he was like, there's a secret thing, you know? On the list? Listen, this this is for later. I don't care. I'm gonna What I'm going to do is I'm going to do it as live. Premiers don't list as live tab. But I'm just... I'm not going to premiere it. Because I, I can't with my current setup. <laughs> With the data miner community, it is very difficult for something major to slip through. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, that that's pretty much what normally occurs, yeah. We can pet Sif, Source, I did it, believe me. God, do you remember how with games, I, I've seen it for Sonic, I've seen it for Harvest Moon, it was really exciting. A lot of the time that they would always be like, hey, you know, this is happening. Uh, you can do, if you do a secret thing, you can uh, get this guy as your friend in this game or something, right? Like there was always these message boards that had these like just outright lies and people would try and try and try and no, 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 my uncle told me, no, my friend told me you can do it. It's true, I swear. And nowadays everything's just kind of revealed um, before the game is even out. Like I know a lot of people were like, I'm not, I'm not roasting by the way, like good for them for like data mining the network test. But I remember we had a lot of information from the network test that they necessarily didn't want us to have, but you know, stuff like that. You get a lot of really cool information from data miners. So it's not like, it's, it's not a problem I have um, at all, but it's just like this whole idea that people think is gonna be some like big super secret. It's, it's probably maybe something really minor um, or it's just a troll. 
the thing is, it wasn't even a, a lie. It wasn't even a lie. I think people... It's, it's like the internet is a, a giant game of telephone. Uh, so you say one thing. For example, for example, you tweet, I like pancakes. And then if you're famous enough, it'll go down the line and someone will be like, yo, did you hear this celebrity said they hate waffles? You know, that's not what was said. But someone will get that. Mew is under the truck. The big one's Mew. Yeah, that's a big one. I remember in one of the Harvest Moon games I played, there was like a bunch of animals. That they, they basically were a tell. Like, um, if this animal showed up, you would have extra luck in this department. It was like a sign. That it, like, if the raccoon was there, you'd have special luck here. If the chihuahua appeared, you'd have special luck in the mine or whatever, right? Um, that's all it was. But there was a lot of, if you do this at this time, you can get the... It, raccoon is your pet or something, you know? It was all BS, but it was there. <laughs> the big one I remember was near Automata. There was that super secret thing that no one's discovered, and then it turned out to be, like, not... Um, it, not not a scam, not a not a trick. It was a it was a trick, but it was a cool one, and it was still cool to to observe, you know. Now we're test open. Everyone, no, it was a beta. It was a closed beta. So it was um, you had to get a code, and it was only at certain periods of time. And I managed to get a portion of the code because someone got another one or something, and they sent it to me. So I had one opportunity to play it for six hours. Most people had closer to thirty. Um, so a lot of people have like straight up PvP clips and things like that. I, I just had like six hours of largely running around. <laughs> Not enough. Not enough, let me tell you. But it was still really neat. Hey, Wolf Twin, welcome. How was the first playthrough? You should watch, um, you should watch it entirely on YouTube. The link to the playlist is in the pin. Oh, look at that flawless. Look at that flawless. Seriously though, it was a great playthrough. Um, editing it nearly took me the heck out, but it was also really fun to get to see everything again fresh. Perfect timing for the DLC. It works so well with the Lorathon in my opinion, because there's certain things that I'm seeing more now that I'm watching or like reassessing with new information. Oh man, it's, it was a really great playthrough. That's why I put it up. I wanted people to be able to watch it forever and it's really great and oh man. Rumor that you can go back to Johto in Ruby Sapphire? That one I don't remember. I didn't hear about that one. But that's, I bet. I think it was a very common theory at the time that you'd be able to do that, so makes sense. All right, so as I said today, we're gonna be doing Lane Dell. So we are kind of there, um, but not quite all the way through. We're doing the boss, Morgoth. Oh, here we go. There we go. Arkham Asylum hit a secret room for years. I just, I think these games are too popular for people to miss things. I don't know, maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's some super secret thing, but. I remember a big one with the Dark Souls 1 community. Like I heard about this because I wasn't there. It was the, the whole story related to uh, Ash Lake. Uh, people discovered Ash Lake. There were people who discovered it super late. You know, they didn't know about Ash Lake. It was a entire zone leading to a covenant in Dark Souls 1 that was hidden behind two hidden walls that eventually, like, hidden wall in a random spot. There's an item there, a chest, another hidden wall behind the chest, and then it leads you to the Great Hollow, which is a bunch of trees, and you descend by a bunch of tree routes to a whole different area that is otherwise inaccessible. Sound familiar? Actually, if you know Elden Ring, yeah. There's a reason I was checking hidden walls behind hidden walls in this game, and it's because of the Great Hollow. And that's how I found the first, um, the, the, the place at the Frenzy Flame. A lot of people might not have found that, but people who play Dark Souls sure did, you know. Well, you joined the manor, huh? I sure did, Patches. I believe it. Didn't think you had it in you. And here I thought Raya was barking up the wrong tree. All good, though. We're on the same side now. We'll do good work together. Can I just say that I think that Dark Souls 3 patches was the most handsome? Oh, and of course. Maybe Dark Souls 1 patches. Do business, if you like. Patches Emporium at the Volcano Manor. Especially for you. About patches. Are you surprised that I belong to the Volcano Manor? 
I always hated the gibberish about Lost Grace and the laughable Two Fingers. I thought I could lend a hand in unmasking the charade. Not to mention, Tanith has always made me curious. I guess her master must really be something, but she's pretty damn smug about it. Even after announcing her blasphemous ambitions, she still stands proud. I've never seen a woman quite like her. In all seriousness, this is a lot more significant than we might think of. Try to find it. Patches in his appearances almost always, and there's different versions of Patches. Patches has appeared in so many different games. Apparently his first appearance was in Kingsfield. I, th I heard it was Armored Core. I don't know exactly because these are sort of before my time when it comes to playing these games, but he has been in all of them. He's in Demon's Souls. He's in Dark Souls 1. He's not in Dark Souls 2, technically. In fact, not even technically. He's not. There's similar characters who take on the role of Patches, and there is a, a bald guy named Pate, not Patches, but eerily similar, like a spiritual successor. And then back in Dark Souls 3, we have Patches. And then we have Patches in Bloodborne. And then we have Patches in Elden Ring. It's a different character, but kind of the same character at the same time. They always have a sort of thread of similarity between them. There's a couple exceptions. But one very important thing with Patches is he hates clerics. He always has. He hates the faith and the faithful. And part of his whole thing, at least from the start, is punishing the faithful because he considers, like, okay, this is a bit sub subtext, so I'm not, like, saying he says this all right. He doesn't seem to like hypocrites. And uh, what's really interesting is in Dark Souls 1, there is a figure who is a cleric and he's so like, oh, I'm a good person because I'm a cleric. And he also happens to be one of the biggest jerks in the entire series. I'm talking about, um, can I remember his name? Bowl cut, bowl cut boy. Uh, Patches targets clerics. And I think part of it is their faith that they're doing something important, whereas they don't really, Petrus, thank you. Thank you, evil, yeah, Petrus. Ugh, Petrus is quite a scumbag. Either way, Patches is interesting because he will mess with you in a way that will potentially kill you. Sometimes he straight up will just kill you, but most of the time it's just like a little troll, a little prank. But a lot of the time he ends up helping you indirectly by sort of showing you where to go via his, his tricks. And at first you're going to be like, oh no, he kicked me into a pit, but oh, there's an item down there that I needed, or a person that I needed to find. He sort of actually guides you on the correct path with his, with his behavior. But the fact that he's really into the Volcano Manor, and specifically Tanith, is really interesting. Because unlike the Two Fingers, the clerics of this game, uh, the followers of the Two Fingers, the Lost Grace, all the, the religious bullshit that he absolutely does not abide. There's Tanith, who doesn't pretend, who doesn't pretend that she's a good person while masquerading as, as someone, or he, she's not masquerading as anything. Ironically, she does wear a mask. But she just does what she says on the tin. She's like, hey, listen. The Two Fingers is BS. The Earth Tree is BS. We are trying to take them all out. Um, we are on a blasphemous path. I'm not going to lie to you about what you're doing when you get here. We're not tricking you. This is just what we do here. She's very charismatic, but she's basically the complete opposite of a cleric. She does have faith in something. But it's kind of a complete reversal of the norm. Now, the one exception to, Cler to Patches' cleric hate, I would argue, is Bloodborne, which is really interesting because in that... He is the faithful servant of a particular god in the game. But it's not a god that anyone else seems to worship. He kind of seems to be alone in that. So it's it's interesting. He's a very nebulous figure. Um, in Dark Souls 3, it's sort of revealed through his quest line that he has a fixation on the greedy and he wants to punish the greedy. That's another big thing of his. But that's added quite late. So it's hard. He doesn't tend to lie to you but he will manipulate the situation. That's kind of his MO, but he's really interesting. Contempt for people who want to impose their will on others and kind of just wants to be free. Yeah, the thing about the Dark Souls 3 version of him, like I'm not saying it's not true, but because it's the latest, like super, super future version of him, there's something else, like I feel like there's other things that need to be addressed with this behavior too, right? Like he has a goal 
but his motivations are difficult to understand in many ways. Um, also in Dark Souls 3, his whole thing is that he, he, if he owes somebody, he will help them. He actually goes out of his way to help somebody in Dark Souls 3, which seems out of character, but when you understand everything that he is, makes a lot of sense. Only time he will straight up kill you is on the bridge in the catacombs. Only if you're not quick on your feet. But no, he will totally. Yeah, you know what's funny? I uh, He didn't kill me there. I might even on my first playthrough because I saw a ledge and I went to jump for it. And then I heard something turning and I turned and I was like, what's going on over that? Well, how did that happen? But I got lucky. <laughs> but he will probably kill you. Yeah. <laughs> Patch is showing up later in Shaded Castle, so random. It is a little random, I agree. But then again, a lot of the NPCs, when you don't know what they're doing, are pretty random because you don't know what their goals are. Patches appears in all different sorts of places. He appears in a random cave. He appears in uh, on a random island. He appears on a random ledge. You know, like that. that's kind of the thing about these NPCs. They appear in random places. It just seems more random because his game is so big. And most of the time, you're going to end up going to the Shaded Castle earlier. So what are the chances that you're going to return to a place you've already cleared looking for somebody that appears there significantly later? It's it's hard. He's a, he's a difficult quest to pin down. Um, but the thing is, he has a strange care for Tanith. Like, you could argue it's a crush, for sure. He definitely does seem to be interested in that. And he also wants her to kind of become who she was with the castanets, but she completely disregards the gift. And that's basically the end of her whole story. And at the end, he appears exactly where you found him in the first place. Ready to do the cycle again. Back to being Patches the Untethered, as he puts it. All right, so this is where I left off last time. I'm going to try to remember. I think I, you know what? I was doing some assassinations. So I'd like to continue those as well. Um, right. Okay, so we can't do this right now because this is uh, in the forbidden, past the forbidden lands. But we're getting close. So I'm going to go talk to Bernal. Because I've been waiting to explore the real round table. It's just as my noble brother says. I'm a complete fool. I can't believe I thought I could become a champion. It's notable that this dialogue seems to occur after you get the target for Juno Hoslow, Knight of Blood. As the final request, the letter is vivid red. Juno Hoslow, Knight of Blood. He can be found in the mountaintops of the giants. Find the red mark on your map for the exact location. And he's all the way over here. Patches the trustworthy somewhere? I don't remember what it is in DS1, actually. Don't you think a quest log would be a very good addition to the game? Absolutely not. No. No. God, no. It's called taking notes. It's what I did in my first playthrough. We have tons of games with quest logs. We have tons of games with check marks. We have tons of games with quest markers. Having one that doesn't is not only okay, but a breath of fresh air. Trusty Patches, that sounds familiar. Yeah. So he calls himself Trusty Patches. He's like, come here to Trusty Patches Emporium or whatever. He's really, he's always a merchant too. Or yeah, and wait, Dark Souls 3, is he a merchant? I think so. He's usually a merchant. Very opportunistic. Someone earlier said he's opportunistic. Absolutely. 100%. Mm -hmm. Oops. Bloodborne appearance was iconic. Yeah, he's very interesting. Ever find the weapon behind the bestial sanctum? I did. It's unfortunate. I kept that bit in there because I looked and I was like, huh, oh no, I don't know how to get down there. And then I gave up. But yeah, I did find that. I did complete Patch's quest line. Unfortunately, that was uh, in the follow-up stream where I basically asked chat, what what did I miss? And then I found all of it. Um, so I didn't like keep it and I didn't think it'd be relevant to the first playthrough, but eh, it's whatever. Patch is the hyena. That's his title. Yeah, so the hyena... Hyenas are scavengers. Pack hunters, though, interestingly. Well, pack scavengers, I guess. But no. He's an absolute weasel and I hate him. I love Patches so much, genuinely. You have a little moment of like, dang it, Patches, and then you're like, wait. Hey, are you- Perhaps I am a fool after all. Yeah. No, it's worse than that. Yeah. As things stand, I've given up on the path of revenge and sullied the name of my house. 
What an easy mark I must have been. No quest log, I want to explore lands between, not complete a chore list. Exactly, exactly. If this game had a quest log that led you to the random spots that NPCs have, would you really actually feel like you were exploring a world or would you feel like you're just fulfilling a checklist? There's nothing wrong with quest log and, and quest marker games, but we have so many of them that it's really nice to have a game that doesn't. I know I've been on the record as, as with this exact subject before, but the one thing that I it, it just I hate I hate the idea of this game having a quest log. Just make some notes. That's what that's what gamers used to have to do in the olden days before everything was a was a Skyrim Ubisoft game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just a quest log? I keep that up here. Or or I make notes for things I forget. Like seriously. There's no need. Also, you do have a quest log. It's all these. This game's actually way nicer about quest markers than uh, and quest log stuff than any other in the series. So it's pretty interesting. That hack infection from back in the day. I'm not saying that those games invented uh, quest markers. I know what you're saying though. I'm just saying that generally it feels like that's what a lot of people expect. And if they don't have it, they feel dismayed by the fact that they uh, have to kind of go back to the old-fashioned take notes and stuff. But also, the whole point is that you're supposed to miss stuff in these games, and then you go back, or you talk to your friends. It's very much like a, you work together to solve the puzzle. You know, it's interesting that these only have one candle lit, huh? Like, no matter how many candles they have, they each only have one lit. Center one, center one. The candlesticks are actually pretty interesting considering the fact that the, the whole candle tree thing. Chat, where do I get the candle tree shield? So can someone tell me? Because I, I know we talked about it before, but it must have it would have been a long time ago. Yeah. Also, mod appreciation day was two days ago. Oh dang, I missed it. I'm so sorry. Souls games are social games or parasocial? They're not parasocial. <laughs> they're just, they're, they're basically online games. They really are online games in many ways. So, you've blooded your Sage's cave. Heart. Then I shall introduce myself once more. Sorry, Bernal. Bernal, a recusant just like you. Recusants have particular battle arts styled to our methods of slaughter. Why not add some to your repertoire? So he says reintroduce himself because you've met Bernal before. We met him way back with, um, what is it called? Limgrave, in Limgrave. And he called himself a war master. Didn't wear the helmet, but otherwise was the same. And now he sort of says, this is who I actually am. Ash of War Eruption. Skill of the knights who serve at Volcano Manor. Slam armament into the ground, spawning roiling lava, which spouts up upon release. Assassin's Gambit. Skill that masks the user's presence at the cost of a self-inflicted wound. Grants near invisibility and silences footsteps. And that's it. I think he gets a couple more. I don't recall, though. But either way, this is a guy we've met before, but basically now he's... Uh, mask off and he says who he actually is but what's really interesting about Bernal he doesn't want ever anyone to follow his path a lot of other figures in the lore are like oh yeah like you should follow my path or you should listen to what I have to say he dis he wants to dissuade you from following in his footsteps he doesn't want anyone to take on this path he knows that it is a path that leads only to death and and dismay and blasphemy he doesn't want to be on this path but it is the path that has chosen him that he has chosen perhaps and he, but he doesn't want anyone to follow it Wings. That's really interesting. So his armor is, of course, uh, covered in beasts. You can see dogs slash wolves, lions fighting on the helmet, but also wings. It's pretty interesting. It's the most intricate armor in the game. You've come to understand now, eh? To take power and make it his own. 
The recusant must hunt his own kind. Mm -hmm. To raise the flag of revolt against this sanctified pillaging, we recusants must become the most wretched of predators. Mm -hmm. All you can do is laugh. Yeah, it is actually well, a little funny. Until we meet again. He pretty much calls it like it is. In fact, look at his helmet. It's several lions, three, reaching for this thing at the top. Like, they're all, like, climbing and struggling and fighting each other to get this one thing at the center. And that's basically what the recusants do. But that's what all the Tarnished have to do. I love Bernal. I love Bernal, too. He's really, really intriguing. And he actually looks a lot like Liam Neeson. Yeah. So he does have the particular set of skills. <laughs> Like to see introduce so like a dialogue log to reread them. Oh, you know what? That's one thing I can understand to a point because unfortunately a lot of characters will give you very quick directions and they won't repeat the dialogue. So one issue I had, for example, was uh, this guy, Dialos, was like, uh, the Volcano Manor is over by the village of Windmills. And I was like, Windmills, hit it, hit it, hit it. And then I talked to him again. He didn't say it again. So the only thing I kept in my mind was Windmills, 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 Windmills. And that's all I could remember, right? So I see what you mean. And like also in real life, if someone if, if someone was giving you directions and then you talk to them again, they would give you directions again, probably. So I don't know. There, there's like a line, I think. But I don't know. Beautiful and damn night trope, according to what I remember. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Intertwining twins one, finely tuned for a paladin roleplay. It's actually really funny that the, the D twin armor seems like a paladin like fit because they are some of like the d twins are so dark and twisted and hypocritical and violent they're zealous it's so interesting but like not, not that paladins can't be zealots but it's interesting because you know when you think of a paladin you think like i am a good person and i swore a holy oath and that's what the d twins do but they use it to absolutely kill people without remorse as needed because it's according to their like order you know what about his brother and whether we've met him already or not? Oh, this is this is oh right, his chess piece mentions the art the, the brother. I was thinking about something. Do you remember the I'm not saying it's the same thing, but a big part of uh, Bernal's outfit is the gladiator like styling of the like the skirt. It's got he's got Marlo? Sorry, one second, please. I heard a weird noise, making sure it wasn't the cat destroying something. <laughs> okay. He's got the gladiator skirt, and there's that character who also has a really bulky armor that also has a skirt in the trailer. Although I think that character is a woman, so it wouldn't be his brother. But then again, it wouldn't be the... I accidentally just kind of like zoomed in on his grundle there. I apologize. Um... There has been precedent for item descriptions having the wrong gender. Uh, because the Japanese has a, um, what's it called? Well, then again, brother is a little bit obvious, right? You know, it's not sibling, right? But I don't know. I'm just saying there's always precedent for like the, the item description in English is, is incorrect, right? So I don't know. I don't know. I just, I saw the skirt and I was like, gladiator. So we'll see. Bernal's a brother. Yeah, I think it's, I, I, I'm gonna, oh my God. I think it's mentioned in his armor description, but I don't remember now. You have a nice jawline? I know, thanks. It's fucking sick. That's an H mark lower thought. Give it a second. Nightbot's a little slow on YouTube. There it goes. Only takes like 30 seconds. Okay, so that's a Volcano Manor. Uh, Raya. Have I talked to Raya? No, we all talked to Raya. And she's like, Have you heard some slithering sounds in the walls? Have you ever heard any strange sounds here at the manor yeah dog is called your ambiance walls, like she combs her jawline daily or no I, I don't know oh fie what am i saying it just is impossible i must be tired she do have the gamer eyes so 
Sometimes I hear strange sounds. This is the hint to start looking for hidden walls. Like breathing or slithering scales. Oh, perhaps I'm just feeling tired. She does, and also the gamer posture, of course, as we know. Raf's jawline is Poland's and Canada's national treasure at the same time, true? It's true, yeah. Uh, it's, um... As I say... Uh, Canadian made with Polish materials. Sure, makeup mascara? Most of, like, the eyelashes in this game are pretty dark, by default. Also, I don't know what mewing is, but I've heard it's like a, it's like some sort of jaw exercise thing. I don't do that, but I do have um, a habit of tensing my jaw, even in my sleep. So it's possible that I do it by accident, but it's causing me damage, so it might not be a good thing. Like your t-shirt, you look elegant. Thank you. Very kind, very kind. Jaw sharp as her finger is crooked. For real, for real. It is true. I do have crooked fingers because I, I I have gamer fingers. Reminds me of when Roderica tells you about noises. Oh my god. You look so cute when your eyes glow, cutie patootie. Serpent arrows. More serpent arrows off of these guys. That's really intriguing. Okay. Neat. Natural tongue posture? Then I don't know what it is at all. I like your brain, you look very smart. Yeah, it's the glasses though, probably realistically. Lately I've been getting ringing in my ears, don't recommend. Yeah, no, it's the it's the it's the thing. The bruxism. Yeah, I'm getting a night guard. In like two weeks, I cannot wait. It should hopefully help, maybe. All right, so right here on the other side of this door, which is like locked, is uh, is it is this the door I'm thinking of? Okay, hang on. Is this is this the hallway on the other side? I think so. Night guards make it worse. Make what worse? Lose your wall needs a hundred hits to break. Still a thing? No, I don't know. Right in front of Patches? Is that the one in front of Patches? No, the one in front of Patches... Um... Is... Past... Uh, you know what? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Because we, we should... Okay, I've kind of forgot that we haven't finished Volcano Manor. We should do some Volcano Manor. I think it's through here. Let's hang on. Temple of Aegle, and then the Guest Hall. Temple of Aegle. It was patched out? I thought it was patched out! Uh, and then someone told me that it just- they just increased how much damage you can take? I'm not sure, I don't recall now what point it was. Thank you for the nicest, one of my only remaining channel point redeems. <laughs> oh wait, I don't have to go through here, I opened up the shortcut. Didn't I? Wait, is this what I'm thinking of? Hang on. No, no. I'm having a- I'm having a brain moment where I don't- I can't, like, map out the volcano matter mentally, but it's okay. We'll just ask for directions. Yo, thank you for flexing your point. See, that's what it was invented for. So we're gonna tell Raya. I'm surprised Bernal hasn't given us the quest yet. Maybe I gotta talk to him more. Maybe I gotta buy his battle arts because he asks you to do an assassination for him. I probably just haven't gotten the dialogue. I have to talk to them a few times. Dead Rising? Is that the game with the zombies or the one with the boobs or the game with the- Oh, is it the game with the boobs and the zombies? Uh. Oh, I'm fucking dead. I did not realize. <laughs> oh, 
Oh boy, look at all the snakes on the outfit though. We got a good look at the outfit. We got a good look at holding the baby, right? And the other thing about those things is apparently each and every one of them was initially supposed to kidnap people. It's just the only functional one that still kidnaps people when it eats them is in the in the uh, Ray Lucaria castle. But the others apparently did that. So that's why you see them all over the place. They were out trying to kidnap people. You want to know what's even weirder? It's not even the first time that FromSoft has created enemies that are basically golems that are designed to kidnap people. The first time they did this, there might have been another time, but the main time that I remember is Dark Souls 1. Seath was experimenting on people. Mainly maidens, in fact. In, in fact, entirely maidens. He wanted to experiment with maidens. Who really knows why? I don't know, maybe he wanted to, like, fit the Beauty and the Beast uh, trope or something. Um, but he would send his crystal golems around to kidnap people. Women. Maidens. Which is another reason uh, people think uh, he's associated with Priscilla. It's definitely a safe bet, based on the fact that she also has white scale. No! And appears to chronic. Oh, I'm getting eaten again. Yo, you can't spam that. Yeah, the imagery of serpents wrapped around is really interesting, but other than that, despite being these weapons of war, these Iron Maidens also have a depiction of a silver baby being held. Very reminiscent of the statue of, uh, behind Mesmer in the DLC. Now, they are definitely associated with the Volcano Manor, so they were likely kidnapping people for the Volcano Manor. Considering a lot of them don't work anymore, though, I wonder if it's because they are old. Um, maybe they've lost that ability, but their initial goal was to do that. So it kind of suggests that whoever was here previously was the one who would uh, who wanted that. Rikard, he does want to kidnap people, for sure. Um, in fact... Patches leads you to one of the Iron Maidens, right? Good job on finishing Yo! the Earthling. Thank you. Thank you so much, Master MPS. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for a hundred and f that's a huge freaking dono. Oh my god. I'm gonna buy a plushie. <laughs> Thank you so much, Master MPS. That's so kind of you. It's really good to be done. It hasn't quite sunk in yet, to be honest. Like literally today, I just like allowed myself to chill and not edit for like six hours and it was glorious and nice so it was nice Whew. bloodborne with the giant sock people the bloodborne with the giant sock people as well yeah so let's let's actually talk about the precedent of kidnapping in souls games that's a great point or pokemon cards yes there's this card that i want but i'm waiting for it to go down a little bit in price because it's new and everyone you know the pokemon fucking card community is so goddamn awful they're all like it's invest 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 and i'm like go back to the finance stock market subreddits you fucking dickholes anyway the point is that they're like talking about pokemon cards like they're fucking investments i just want it because one of my favorite boys is on there <sighs> Finishing the Elden Ring playthrough videos is a bigger achievement than finishing PhD. Bro, literally, I actually genuinely feel like I have like a PhD in this game at this point. Not really, but still. <laughs> I finished The Mound by Lovecraft and Zelia Bishop. Major Nocron vibes, not familiar. Feel free to like mention why. Is it, could, could that be like The Mound Makers? Do you think it could be like The Mound Makers from DS3? Bone cards will never be investments. It's it's a strange it's a strange twist the community's taken on, to be honest. Several small plushies are like one really big plushie, and there's this one, there's this one plushie that I'm looking at. But the problem is I wasn't around like looking at plushies when it came out, so now people are selling it for more, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm taking it. So maybe, I don't know. 
Do you have more hours in playing or editing, do you think? I mean, definitely playing. But do you mean like editing total? I don't know. I'm pretty new to editing, all things considered. Oh, it happened again. <laughs> I need to stop doing that. Why? Oh, there's a shortcut. Never mind. It's actually good because I forgot there's a shortcut there. Now I remember. I love Volcano Manor very much, but I have a... S I have difficulty, like, mapping it out mentally. And this is a great example. This shortcut that I keep not using for some reason. Whee! Good of all big splashy- Oh, right, I forgot about that. Good of all big splashy sit on your desk. What- what kind- Kantoian or Alolan? No! <laughs> okay, kidnapping people in FromSoft games and the purposes. Um, the reason I want to talk about other games for this is because it's interesting to see what the purpose of the kidnapping is. Because a lot of the time we can make guesses based on that. Oh, you're just dead. Sorry. Right, this one I think I've already been to. Yeah, 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 I already have the item and stuff. There's another way to get here. Okay, okay, okay. So many innocent co-opers? That can't be true. I've never heard anyone innocent before. Kanto specifically? Mm, there's the Crystal Season one, but those are like, those are a little older now, so they're harder to find. But they are so cute and fluffy. Ditto Vulpix, same dealio. <laughs> Fuck, what is actually going on with me right now? <laughs> like, what am I doing? <laughs> I'm so lore pill that I keep falling off the dang map. Oh my god. Remember being kidnapped first in Bloodborne and was horrified? Bloodborne's really fun because they do not, like, no one is safe from the kidnappers. Raph moment? Yeah, I have an emo for this. It's the Raph gravity emo. There's a reason that I have the emo. Lover for the lift first? No backseat. <laughs> I'm trying to lure. I'm getting freaking distracted. Okay, kidnapping. Number one. Now that was just out of spite. Yeah, I'm a very spiteful individual. Very petty. Very petty individual. A lot of Albanarchs were kidnapped. I really, that's another thing about the, the Albanarics. We don't know that they were kidnapped. We know they were experimented on. But we can guess that they were kidnapped for that. Experimentation or interrogation. It's possible. The thing is, considering they're artificial beings that are often used as... Servants? And don't really have much status and are looked down upon? I don't know what kind of information they would have. So, likely they weren't being interrogated, they were just being tortured. It could be for fun, frankly. Um, definitely precedent that these people just freaking suck, right? Show the door that opens in front of Patches? Yeah. That's where I'm going. So, in Dark Souls 1, we have kidnapped ladies for experimentation. In Bloodborne, we have everyone kidnapped including the player the player will access this area by being kidnapped by the uh snatchers snatchers i think they're called snatchers although they could be like the fan given name i don't remember their official name they are these large gaunt figures wearing uh holding sacks and they are really terrifying because they they role play walk toward you and then all of a sudden they will jump out at you with an extreme speed and they are very strong for when they start appearing sack man Sack man, dude. Oh, shit. God, this place is pretty, huh? I don't remember how to get this item, but I remember it being really, 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 really weird. So we might, I might need some chat guidance because it's been a minute now. Um. So, oh boy. 
So in Bloodborne, the purpose of kidnapping people was they needed people and or body parts for further experimentation. They were doing a dark ritual. And part of the ingredients needed for various dark rituals were body parts. So what they would do is they would kidnap people uh, and or kill them and then en masse send their bodies to Hemlock Charnel Lane, which would then create ritual materials out of the bodies. So basically experimentation, but not directly relating to the bodies. Just they needed the parts. So the fact that there are kidnapping maidens here, you gotta wonder why. So it could be something dark and twisted that we don't yet understand. It could be simply torture was required to get something that they wanted. Um, and considering everyone can be kidnapped, it's a little bit more in the Bloodborne category in that they weren't exactly picky. Yeah, the things that kidnap are also covered in snakes. It's really interesting because we have a lot going on here. It kind of depends on who you think controlled the Volcano Manor before Rikard. It's like Rikard seems to be continuing this for sure, but there's definitely something to the fact, at least to me, that the, that the maidens don't work anymore. Like they aren't able to actually kidnap you anymore. So they just kind of grab you and chew you up and then spit you back out, but they can't do anything with you like they used to. So it's interesting. It suggests they're way older. All right. So we got a seedbed curse, another one, in the Volcano Manor down here. Royal Knights Resolve, Ash of War. And then, right in front of a chair, just for staring at it, is yet another portrait of Rikard. Let's uh, see if I can. Let's drop a glowstone first. Made in the bottom of Rhea Lucaria. It's a weird place for them to be. They are all over the place. There's actually quite a number. Even there's one outside of Rhea Lucaria. Um, if they're meant to kidnap people for whatever purpose, it makes sense they're all over the place. But that one's interesting because it's the only one that still works. So why does it still work? Besides gameplay and they needed one to, to get you somewhere. Um, well, that suggests that rather than time making them lose their ability to teleport, like literally just as they get older, they lose their potency of magic, it suggests that it's number of kidnaps, it, like, uh, like charges. Like they can kidnap 10 people before they need their batteries replaced, and that one only managed to kidnap a few, right? Karian family thing. There's one at Radon's Castle too. Yeah, there's also one at, there's, there's three at Rhea Lucaria, I believe. One, two, th one outside. I'm counting that one. It's like way outside of it, but it's still there. Um, there's none at Karian Manor though. There's that place with, no, I don't think there's one there. I don't think there's one at Karian Manor. Yeah, Radon's castle. Notably alone, though. Like, no one else is there. Karaman is near the Arumi? The Rampart. I haven't gone there this place. I always forget about that area. I gotta go there. I don't think I've been there since the first playthrough. Good old-fashioned torture? They do look like Iron Maidens. In fact, that might actually be their initial name, but Iron Maiden is obviously, like, not a name they could have named it in English. But yeah, so, you know. They look like torture implements. What am I looking for in here? Oh, a glowstone. Mm, not what I wanted. Let's get my arrows equipped. Can I craft those glowy arrows? Because now I'm concerned I'm going to need them, huh? Oh, plenty. Plenty. 
Oops. There we go. So, it's not the easiest to see him. Um, my man looks freaking old, though. That's one thing about Rikard. Um, <laughs> he looks way older than his siblings. Radon looks a little older in his portrait, for sure. But I think we can agree, he looks way older than his mother, Ranala. Right? Age definitely means something in this game. I'm not saying just disregard it, but I mean his hair, you could see his hair appears to have gone gray. You can see tinges of red in it, the, the original red it likely was. But, you know, uh, it's also gray. Unlike his mother, who looks like, you, know, you could tell me she was 20 years old and it would be right, you know what I mean? Near crabs that cause sleep, possibly snake's venom is rendered to sleep based on illegal venom. I don't know. I don't know if I'm willing to come to that conclusion. Lazy eye on his right eye. It's hard to tell because the angle the portrait's taken and the fact that the lighting, like, it's hard to get good lighting here. Um, but also, this portrait, really interestingly, is hidden away from the others. And there's a, there's a viewing chair here. It, it's quite interesting. This one isn't as accessible. Volcano Manor gives you a key and lets you access it pretty readily, but you can't get to this door. This is a from the other side thing. Seal tunnel, Aldous Plateau. I'm on his way to Divine Tower, connected to Rikard. Yeah, I I don't think I like. Okay, once again, it's a bit tough, right? Because they are definitely linked to the Volcano Manor. I just personally think they're older. Like Rikard's using them, possibly. Um, also, we we do know that Rikard and Ronnie had something of an alliance and did work together. Um, also, despite apparent disagreements in their ideology, like we'd have, we know nothing about what Radon thought of Rikard doing what he did and becoming a blasphemer, but there is a portrait of Radon here as well in a place of honor, right where the family hangs out. In fact, this is Rikard's family, right? His potential actual daughter, straight up. Um, his other recusants, this is where they hang out. And then there's a portrait of Radon here, right? So this is his family. Also, notably, Radon looks quite, in my opinion, quite a bit younger than Rikard. Less lines, but still, you can see a little bit of, like, heaviness on the eyes. Like, he doesn't look young, he doesn't look old, you know what I mean? Um, but this would have been a picture of him before he got all Rotterinoed. So, considering Rikard is a figure that has several portraits, all in his... different, different portraits, too all in his castle, it's a little interesting. But especially that one hidden away portrait, you know, that looks a little particularly dark and morose and has a seat in front of it. I'd be remiss not to mention uh, the, the portrait of Dorian Gray, Oscar Wilde's uh, novel. And in that story, there is a man who is beautiful, like so gorgeous visually that a painter asks, can I please paint you? And he basically does. But Dorian starts to do evil. A lot of it's... It, it's, a, it's an interesting novel. I have read it, but it's been years now. It's a little fuzzy now and only with the once. Um, he starts, like, I think he kills somebody. But basically, he doesn't age. He stops aging. He basically gets frozen in time. But as he does awful acts, murder, general crime, bullshit, whatever he does, the portrait starts to become hideous and age, but Dorian does not. It's not a new concept. Like, I mean, that that sort of cemented it, but this idea of, like, the picture changes, but you don't, right? It's, it's a little interesting here, considering that Riker is a blasphemer. The only other thing is, though, this portrait doesn't really look that much different. You can still see the same facial features, the same hair color, the same grayed out uh, beard wrinkles, lines around the eyes, you know, like he doesn't look that different. So if it's really like, this is my secret portrait, no one is allowed to see this, then how come there's one over there, you know? Opium dens, that's the other thing, he, he loves the opium. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Doesn't Dorian get seduced to doing weakness by an evil mentor type? See, the thing, like when I read it, there is that, there is a little bit of like, oh, you should just do this, but there's also a slight tinge of, it wasn't my fault, it was an accident, and therefore I shouldn't be blamed for it from Dorian. Um, very much like a self-justification for his behavior. Like, he doesn't take responsibility for any of his, his mistakes. 
Um, he just goes, well, oh, it was an accident. I didn't mean to murder this guy. It was just, it was an accident. Uh, I guess I should just, like, hide the body and, you know, not uh, ever tell anybody. You know what I mean? There's a little bit of that going on, too. But like I said, for myself, it's been years, so I, I don't remember all the details. Um, but no, Dorian and things related to Dorian have appeared quite a few times now in media. So... Playing this game at level 713 really trivializes most bosses. I can't imagine why. Iron Maidens were a myth, like the Morian Conquistador helmet? Really? Blonde hair instead of red hair, like his siblings, like concept art and official manga to take them with blonde. The thing is, this to me. Suggests that's not the case. Helm worn by knights once loyal to Praetor Rikard, its crest of red feathers symbolizes Rikard's pedigree as Lord Radigan's son, right? No one in the game wears this anymore because the whole point is blasphemer and we remove the. It's red with gray in it. Just like when I look at that, I see red to gray. Now keep in mind, the light here is very red, but someone on the Discord. Uh, also argued it was blonde, and thus they posted pictures without the Volcano Manor lighting on the Discord and was like, hello, this is what they look like without the Volcano Manor lighting. And I was like, oh my god, it's red with gray, just like I thought. So, I'm not saying that for sure, but I really don't think he was blonde, personally. The thing about the, the, the feathers, too, it's such a conscious choice. Why does he have random gray feathers in there unless it's supposed to depict his hair, considering he went gray? I could, I could, I could uh, argue it's strawberry blonde, like a really light blonde, like not as red as, as Rad, uh, Radon's, for example, or Radigan's for that matter. I could definitely see that argument. The thing about strawberry blonde is still considered a hue of red for sure. Like it's still considered red hair. So I don't know. You look for yourself, you decide. I, I personally found the Gelmir Knight Helm to be really telling because I looked at his portraits, all of them, and went, it's red, but he's gone gray. Almost entirely gray. In fact, this one, this one is almost like 100% gray. The gray Melina kind of tone? No, it, Melina's hair is pink. It, it's not an actual color. Her hair is dyed or, you know, magic. All these, I mean, to be fair, Radigan's hair is like really red, right? So we're kind of playing with a little bit of weird hair colors in this game. But um, this hair is almost entirely gray if you see it without the light, right? So that's 100%. But this portrait, the older one that we just opened up, this one is still got a lot more red in it if you see it without the Volcano Manor light. Whoops. Iron Man's are historical fakes? I actually didn't know that. Ah, dang it. Anyway, like I said, the lighting makes it really hard to see. I lit it up as much as possible. Um, but this one still has what... I, like, it looks like the helmet I'm wearing. When I saw it without the lighting, but with a little bit more lit up, it looks like red that has started to become gray versus there it's like fully gray. So it's interesting. Um, yo, Anonymous, thanks for the gift of sub to Nola. Nola, enjoy your butterfly. Um, just as a side note, I just want to point out the difference with Radon's helmet, right? Like, his helmet, um, and his knight helmet. I should have the Radon knight helmet, shouldn't I? Oh, I guess I don't. Hmm, we'll have to go look at one then. But yeah, versus this hue, which is, like, vivid red, right? Both of them were evoking their, their father and the pedigree of the red hair. But they did it in different ways. It's rather notable that this one, though, is so similar to what I see from his hair, though. Diluted with white to me, looking pinkish. The thing is, if you diluted Radigan's hair with red, with white, I think it would look more orange. But then again, pink, your hair does go pink if you start stripping color from it, yeah. Pink can be a, a, a like, okay, if you're trying to go from red hair to blonde, there will be phases of orange and pinkiness, depending on the, the color you're starting with and the color you're ending with. So, like, for sure, pink is definitely, like, less... Uh, color, what was it called? Saturation hue? Like, it's like bleached. Like, some of the hue has been removed, so for sure. But it's very pink. It's like rose pink. Like, um... I think if you tried to... If you showed it to, like, a hairdresser, they'd say, like, rose pink is often that hue. 
God to be the youngest of the demigods? Most likely. Most likely. Because his blood is the most dilu diluted? Diluted, not diluted. Yeah, sorry. Let's mark up hold some new trick with Renala. How would Riker get blonde hair? Well, the whole idea is that Riker, Br Bradigan is Marika, right? So it's not unheard of. I'm not saying he can't have blonde hair. It's just like, I, I don't see it as blonde. I see it as gray. And what's here's the thing too, I will say about blonde and gray. You kind of need to treat them really similarly. Gray hair is color, it's hair that has lost its hue. Like you, the, the color has been stripped from it, right? Blonde hair also has a lot like less hue. Like that's what it is. That's why if you want to go lighter hair, you bleach it. You remove color from hair to get it lighter. When I got this hair color done, I bleached it, right? I had darker brown hair um, and it, the color was removed to make it blonde. Um, gr gray hair is very similar. It just happens with age. Your hair just like... And also genetics, frankly. I know people who started getting grays at 20, you know? <laughs> They're definitely not old, but... They just got the grays. Some redheads have patches of blonde. Usually that's the spots that turn gray because they have less color. That's actually really interesting. I knew one guy who had ready, like pretty blonde hair, like dirty blonde hair, but his facial hair was red. Not uncommon. Hair is all over the place. Also, just one other thing I think that I just want to cement. He looks older than his mother. Age is a little weird in this game. It's likely his actions prematurely aged him into the form we see him in or whatever, but still. He looks a lot older than even his own mother, so, you know, time's convoluted. Image of him with blonde hair may have always been white. Good point. Yeah, Godfrey looks a lot older too, right? So it makes sense. Morgoth also isn't particularly youthful, so demigods seeming to age doesn't seem natural. Yeah, that's the only thing. I, I'd like to talk about age a little bit because, for example, Mesmer looks very young, but lore-wise, I think personally, and I have, we obviously don't know, I could be totally wrong here. We're all just speculating here, having a good time. I think he's one of the older figures in the lore, but he looks really young, right? So there's always that. Also, Nicola, of course, I know he has an eternal youth curse, right? But like, he looks very young. Melania looks very young. And yeah, they are. They are likely the youngest of the demigods that we know of. But that doesn't mean they're young because they were born before the Shattering, which is like thousands of years ago, right? Riker's hair is the same color as Ernala because Ernala's hair actually isn't black. Her hair is pretty black though, like really dark. I don't think he uses the same hair color as her. Land of Shadow gonna be like kind of frozen in time. I wonder if it was frozen for a long time because of what Radon did. Sorry, let me just talk to these people here real quick and then we'll do some more maybe assassinations if I can unlock them. Ronnie has red hair too, yeah. So I'm not saying the siblings can't have different hair colors, right? But it is interesting that Ronnie had red hair, Radon had red hair, and Rikard, I think, had red for sure. Hello, cat. What you doing? Meowing. Look at you. A recusant through and through. I knew you had it in you. Take this. Thank you. A special invitation to hunt some of the first tarnished who sat at the round table hold. If you should accept, I'll next see you on the field of battle. I was trying to unlock this. This is very pog. Azunta, thank you for the 100 bits. Welcome in as well. Thank you for that. Moog and Morgan are twins, but the former looks a lot younger. Mm-hmm. Their coloration is definitely different too, obviously. Here's the other thing too. Morg and Mo... Morg. Moog and Morgot likely looked a lot more similar when we knew them, but their... Their ideologies have changed their appearance in a very real way, right? Moog of course, has taken on a lot more demonic appearance. He's got these awful fangs. He looks like a stereotypical demon. He growls like one. His horns are that of like a demon figure. Morgoth looks quite different. All those bloodbaths do wonders for the skin. <laughs> Should have given us portraits of Ronnie and Godwin. Jeez, this cat. I was playing with him. He always wants to play right when I'm starting stream. It's part of the reason I was... Um, a little late today it's because i ate some food and then i was chilling i was a little people fat and then uh my cat wanted to play so i had to play with him 
seen any paintings of Godwin as prime either. No portraits that we know of of Ronnie or Godwin. Oh, one more portrait I do want to point out just real quick. Um, I know we've looked at this during the Lorathon before. Jesus, cat, relax. Just kidding. Have fun, but also, oh my god, you're scaring the heck out of me. This portrait. I would be remiss if I did not mention this one. We looked at it before, but still, if we're talking portraits, we just unlocked a new one, so still. Um, very interesting. Mask wearing figure. Red um, cloak on top of the head, mimicking hair. Um, eye covered. Also wearing very similar garb to figures that we've seen, but not the same. The chest marking is different. Also, the color, not sure about. I personally see like a navy blue, arguably black, because the portrait can is aged and cracked. Also, you could see, if I'm not mistaken, an eye through there. It looks to me at least like a golden eye, like a grace given figure. But really interesting stuff here. Potentially a portrait of Rikard in his youth. I We don't know, but for me, I always think Rikard because of the red cloak mimicking hair. Very similar mask to, of course, Tannis. Not quite the same, but similar. Just guy, that guy, just a Mirai. The Mirai mask looks quite different, and the chat, the outfit is different. And he doesn't have the shoulder pieces. What if that's Mesmer? <laughs> I mean, yeah, interestingly enough, the golden eye fits, if it's golden, uh, and the eye cover, the same uh, eye that Mesmer has shot. And the masks can really change your face, too. It doesn't mean it mimic the mask underneath. Now, like, can this be Mesmer? Yeah, it could be Mesmer before it became a fucking snake boy. I wonder if it's a vanity mask, like something he wore when he started looking nasty. The thing is, there's lots of masks in this lore. Kari yeah, the Karian line passes to daughters. That That's for sure true. Renala groomed her daughter to be the princess. The, the boys didn't fit. It's, it's more like matrilin matrilineal. Rikard and Raya's outfits are the same as Kenneth's. Uh, which which Rikard outfit? Do you mean the one in the portrait? Because the one in the portrait... Hang on, let's go look at Tan uh, Kenneth. Because it's possible I just don't have the right piece. But it doesn't look like the Mariah outfit. It's really similar, but not quite. Hang on. I should have Mariah. So much I need to do today. I'm gonna foregore. Yeah, okay. So the marking on the chest is not the same. That's that's what I noticed when I saw the portrait. It's not It's not exactly the same. Opening cinematic image of Rikert's head being eaten. He looks ancient, few scraggly white hairs, well into his 80s. Yeah, he looks real old there. But, uh, I mean, eating someone it doesn't isn't great for them, right? Mariah family do a fairly diverse mask, if I recall correctly. Where, where do we see other ones? Because we have tan people from Tannis culture wear masks. Uh, the castanets that are apparently of Tannis past are found in the Shaded Castle by Patches. So there is definitely a link there. The Barai could be from the Land of Shadow, considering their castle is the Shaded Castle. Like, there's definitely some stuff there. Something I actually want to talk about. Okay, so the reason I wanted to do this now also is because you get Bernal's letter. And you get to fight some really interesting figures in the lore. So I wanted to do this now. A written request from Volcano Manor addressed to Bernal, disclosing the name of two tarnished to be hunted, Vargram the Raging Wolf, Errant Sorcerer Willem, or Wilhelm. Both men can be found in the royal capital of Lindell. Find the red mark on your map for the exact location. They are found in the Round Table Hold. Tanith looks rough as well, if you mean without her mask. According to Zuli, no, she looks pretty normal from what I remember. She looks very normal. Really pretty, actually. The masks don't necessarily mean that the figure beneath is uh, like hideous or anything. It's it could just be a cultural thing, uh, a representation of something. The Zamora wear masks as well. Um, the um, they represent a face of someone that you're sort of taking on their role. Also, if we look at like masks in uh, in ancient Greek 
uh, players, they literally were like, you wore them to represent what kind of character you were playing, right? And it would, because they needed to show everybody, so you would literally like wear a mask or hold it up to your face. I don't even remember which tradition they did for their plays, but they would just know the character you were, very similar to Kabuki. Kabuki theater, you either paint on or have really elaborate masks that represent the character that you're playing, sort of like a, like a shorthand. You don't have to... Um, people know what to expect when they see it. No theater. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, so the mask doesn't mean that they're hiding something. The idea of masks is concealing or, or masking something um, hideous. It, it's not necessarily the case. It's just when you take on a role, you wear the mask so that you become the role, right? The audience who might be 100 feet away in the nosebleed stands would immediately know what to expect. Exactly. Same reason why people in theater now, in modern era, we don't wear masks anymore very often, but they wear really heavy makeup because you got to be able to see their facial expressions as they're acting. No theater is masks? Yeah, I thought Kabuki was similar. Maybe I'm getting myself mixed up, but I could have sworn it was. Hi, cat. Yes, good boy. All right, so we're going to do this wonderful assassination, and we're also getting to get an armor set that's very, very interesting for all this. Just because it's also in the round table old. Oh, I haven't been to West yet? Huh, okay. Hey, thanks for the follow. Welcome in. Yeah, so it looks like the, the, the Mirai mask, basically it looks like someone's face that was in presumably the Mirai family and they're all be basically being, when they are the leader of the Mirai, they wear the mask of their initial founder, right? Like the initial Mirai. Because they have become that ruler. It doesn't mean they're hiding anything, it's not necessarily like a suspicious or negative thing, it's just different. Gravel stone all over the dead body of this dragon. Surprise, surprise. Hey, buddy. Good aim. It was a joke. It was a joke. It was a joke. All right. So, God, this place looks so beautiful at nighttime. From here, uh, we can open. The path. Wait, was it? Wait, was a head? Hang on. Was it? Did I pass it? Oh man. I remember so much, and then there's so much that I have forgotten. Maybe it's below. Where the page is. Ah, here it is. Okay, great. These things sound like kids. They kind of do have a... sound effect when they die to fire. Distressing creatures, marshmallow beings. Interesting that they have a fire animation. I don't think I realized that before. I haven't used too much fire damage in this game. Wait, did I pull the lever? Yep. Okay, so it's open now. You can see Grand Sax's foot over here. How massive it was. Oh! 
finger slipped. I actually really like this moment where we help Bernal with the fight. Oh, really, bud? Oh, I forgot to get the, the Patches quest line. That's the one I wanted to get. So Patches gives you a quest line too. Whoops. He asks you to do an assassination as well, but the difference is, well, he's kind of a coward and he's not really good at one-on-one -on -one fights, so he tries not to engage in them very much. And his target happens to be Mr. Bullgoat. So he instead asks you to do it. But Bernal, he has a sort of knightly honor. Even though he's a recusant now, it doesn't mean he's let go of his past as a potential lord. He wants you to fight with him. He wants to join you and work together on it. Basically like an honorable fight together. Growl stone seal. I don't know that I've ever gotten that actually. Interesting. Let's take a look. That sounds like dragon stuff. I probably passed it. Bulgo is a nice guy. Bulgo is yet another nice guy who helps you and cooperates with you. You can summon him for uh, various fights, including the magma worm that leads to Altus, which you still haven't done. Blades of Chaos? The these these are the magma blades. The magma blades, the blades of chaos are from God of War. <laughs> to be the master of dual curved swords? I do love curved swords, yeah. They're some of my favorite movesets. They're so freaking viable as well. God, they're so good. Um, actually, this is a really nice hint. There is a, this took me a long time to discover. There is a door that opens in the real round table hole that doesn't open in the fictional, uh, not fictional, but the the one in the earth tree, let's say. And this gives you a hint that it's there. You can see the path following along there. Dr. Virgin's there too? A ton of them, in fact. Yep. They're all over the place. So like, while we can definitely derive lore from where they are, their point is to abduct people. So I don't think it's necessarily too unusual that they're all over the place. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's it's similar to, like, godskins who seem to have a more immaterial goal and are searching for godskin. Uh, their, their, their main goal is godskin, so they go where the skin is, from what we can tell. <laughs> okay. The gravel stone seal. Sacred seal made from gravel stone thought to be an ancient dragon scale enhances dragon cult incantations of the royal capital. The worship of the ancient dragons does not conflict with belief in the earth tree. After all, this seal and lightning itself are both imbued with gold. I've never gotten this before because it's a chance drop and there is super intriguing confirmation lore in it. That is so freaking neat. So this is just another thing that even while bad things were happening in Leandell, while Radigan was taking over, while some of his siblings were potentially being mistreated, Godwin seemed to have kind of been cool with it, and it's quite possibly because his cult was okay. Hmm. It's a guaranteed drop? It is? Well, then I must not have killed that guy. Weird. I don't think I've ever seen that, but I'll have to check my- You know what? Oh, no, I'm not on PlayStation. I'm gonna have to check my main character after this. You mean the real fake round table hold? Yes. Okay, so right here. Invade Vargram's Raging Wolf and Errant Sorcerer Willem. So we actually have some lore on them already. Willem specifically. Worn by the Errant Sorcerer Wilhelm, one of the first tarnished to visit round table hold. A silent seeker of sorcery who had gone so far as to make contact with the primeval current. Wilhelm was led by guidance into confrontation with his friend Vargram, and, and it is said that he was then taken prisoner in Round Table Hold. And then... Alberich. On a guilty figure. He invades you right over there in the fictional Round Table Hold, or the illusory one.
Mad Tongue Alberich's pointed hat, a sign of a heretical practitioner. Set with red glintstones, said to be formed by the blood of sacrifices. Oh, that's likely what they were doing at the, the Volcano Manor then. Strengthens Thorn Sorcery. Albrecht was an aloof yet disturbed heretical sorcerer said to have been driven mad by jeering tongues during his service to the Round Table Hold long ago. So we have basically gold glinstone, like the amber of the halig tree. We have the blood of sacrifices, thorn sorceries. with the red glinstone, and then we have the standard blue glinstone. So they're all of a form of life. Blood, of course, is often considered lifeblood. It's literally what flows through our veins. It keeps us alive. Without blood, we can't be alive. We need it to flow. Sap is the blood of trees. It can turn into amber, which is, of course, very important for the earth tree worshippers. Um, this is basically amber made of blood. And then we have glintstones which are said to be the vestiges of life like cosmic life the stars throne sorcery is used by the fire monks mm -hmm. um it is of the guilty we haven't quite gone to the mountaintop of the giants yet so i don't have all the information yet readily available in my inventory but thorn sorceries are associated with the guilty their eyes are gouged by thorns and in that darkness do they see the blood star the blood star is sort of the the guilty see it in the darkness. Include the lore that explains how this place is connected to the round table hold. Uh, what do you mean? Flightless bird. This one's pretty easy to find. Tip to differentiate the round table hold in Landell is called the fortified manor, but is both they're both the round table hold though. Let's read the rest of the garb, but, um, like, the lore may not be... If you ask me, it's in this game, so I don't know what you what you mean. Jeering tongues. Oh, one more thing about Alberich. It's been a long time since we fought him, so I just want to bring it up again. He's where we get the taunter's tongue, <laughs> which lures in invaders. Albrecht likely created it by cutting out someone's tongue that was talking shit. In fact, I think that might be in his, his lore description. Albrecht was an aloof yet disturbed heretical sorcerer said to have been driven mad by jeering tongues during a service around the table old long ago. Hmm, that's it. Oh, he's got the best boots though, let me tell you. Put it in the game because it wasn't relevant to player decisions? Yeah, but it... Like, I know what you're saying, they didn't put it in, but it, if you ask me, it's all there. Maybe not super why the round table hole works, but it's there. Why it burns? Makes sense to me. I've talked about it quite a bit. I have my, like, super solidified theories on all that. More black key bolts. Ah, the two fingers prayer book. Right, this is where we get that, very neat. Prayer book containing incantations of the two fingers, an item once entrusted to tarnished worthy of lordship, can be given to a learned cleric to gain access to the following incantations, Lord's Heal and Lord's Aid. Notably, this is the room that we get uh, the Creepus crossbow. It's right here, and then in the similar location, we get another bolt. This was where the two fingers assassins, the confessors would hang out. Sorry, you're just cooking dinner. Most dangerous meal of your life. Praise the soup. Oh, as the soup, Dark Souls 3. We inside the tree? That's that's pretty that's a big chunk of it. The reason it burns when you burn the tree is because we're inside the tree. It's really that simple. <laughs> like there's more to it for sure. I'm not even trying I'm not trying to be like, you know flippant it's just I, I like 
There will always be lore that didn't make it into the game, but because they do such a good job creating such a cohesive narrative with the symbolism intact, they don't need to tell us outright. They don't need to smack us over the head and be like, this is what's going on because we can infer certain things. And that's what's so great about Elden Ring. He heard tongues. Well, tongues were jeering at him. Jeering is like insulting. People were talking shit to him and it drove him crazy. So he killed them. And cut out, well, maybe not killed them. He just cut out their tongue. What's a little tongue cutting out between fellow tarnished of the round table? You know what I mean? Hey, Vargram. You're using the Godskin sword. Huh. Let's look at Willem. So Willem is using, I don't recognize his helmet, but the garb I do. I thought you were dead, I unlocked. Yo, Bernal, you doing, go you doing okay? You're doing great, Bernal. Yeah, he does use the Godskin sword. Interesting of you, Vargram, isn't it? So Vargram wanted to become a shadow, but he wasn't able to. Maybe he wanted to become the shadow of the Glomide Queen then. Helmets in the mountaintops? Great, we will get to it. Home is a glintstone mask? Yeah, I just don't remember which one, like what, it could be primeval current related, but I don't recall. So we have gotten Willem's armor as shown, so that one we don't need to get, but this is where you get the Raging Wolf Garb. The Raging Wolf Garb is really interesting for a few reasons. Number one, the initial Elden Ring trailers showed this off. This was sort of the cover armor of the Tarnish. The very first wallpapers that released that were like, well, Elden Ring's coming, Vargram's outfit. It was sort of our... Uh, it's not quite the cover armor, but in, in the sense, in, a, in like a Dark Souls 2 type sense, it is, right? Like, this is the, the initial armor that we saw that was supposed to represent us as the player. And it's also visible in the DLC as well, in the DLC trailer, I should say. The initial image of the Tarnished riding on Tornit is with this mask. This guy was going to be the main character. Yeah, I kind of wondered if he was going to be the, our equivalent, but they changed that. And uh, Vike and Bernal are kind of like the equivalent to the Tarnished in, this, in a typical sense. But I thought he was going to be like the Oscar type character, but he's not. Yeah, so this armor is notable for that reason. Yeah, in fact, uh, I just changed my uh, background image my, on my, my desktop. It used to be one of the wallpapers. That was actually the image of... Vargram walking through the hallway that led to Godric's arena. It's like this really cool artistic game. If you look up like Elden Ring wallpapers from like way back when, it was one of the ones they released like high res wallpapers similar to the ones that they released for the trailer. Although those I think were just images. These had like Elden Ring on them. Anyway, so I just changed my background. But for a long time I was staring at Vargram's ass all day. Let me tell you. Keep the good work. Thanks. I sure will. Helmet is associated with the traveling conspectus, but if it's in the mountaintop of the giants too, that actually that's interesting. We'll have to do, we'll have to take a look at that. Okay. Vargram's nickname comes from the white wolf's mane that decorates this helm. Windblythe? Windblythe? Anyone? Windblythe? <laughs> helm worn by Vargram the Raging Wolf, one of the first tarnished to visit the round table hold. So he was likely keeping Willem perhaps in custody? because that's the idea they were together, unless he was like freeing him. It's unknown. Both of them ended up being a little heretical. One of them using the Godskin sword, like the Godskin sword. I can't remember the name. Sorry, give me a second here. God Slayer's Great Sword. Sacred Sword of the Glomide Queen who controlled the Godskin Apostles before her defeat at the hands of Malekith. He was using this sword. Kind of interesting. Okay, where is the... chest piece? I probably passed it. Sorry, gamers. Give me. Did I read Bloodhound Knight? 
Yes. There it is. Raging Wolf Armor. Armor worn by Vargram the Raging Wolf. Here we go. According to the old legends, wolves are the shadows of the Empyrean, and this is what Vargram aspired to be. So the man basically dressed up in his persona so that he could be the loyal Empyrean. It's interesting, too, that he dresses a wolf so that he could try to become an Empyrean. And then we also have the Bloodhound Knights, who are... They choose their master, and the knight stays loyal for life. There's very much this sense of the hound, whether it's a wolf or whether it's a dog, will choose his master and remain loyal no matter what. Without any... Like, nothing can change it. Except for maybe killing your body and then putting it into your soul into a doll. That can apparently break that promise. But other than that, there's not a lot. So it's pretty interesting. Glomide Queen being a slayer of gods is a whole can of worms and she predates the death of Godwin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the demigods, it's interesting because... So, okay, demigods, they're part god. Suggest there was more beforehand. Yeah. Men are, Melina, our maiden, is speculated to be the Glomide Queen. Yeah, I really wonder if it's that simple, but either way, he clearly wanted to be the Empyrean for likely the Glomide Queen because of the sword, yeah. I think we see Vargram the DLC. So we see a lot of different tarnished in the DLC. They're supposed to be our stand-ins. We see one wearing a, a, this, a similar mask to Roderica's, the, what's it called? The navy hood versus the crimson hood. And looks like Roderica, but isn't. We see someone wearing the blue cloth cowl and the entire warrior starting set, including weapon. We see the raging wolf, which is supposed to be a tarnished star stand-in. Um, uh, we also see a Karian knight. Fun fact, the Karian knight was a starting class in the network test. It obviously wasn't at the start. They replaced it with something else, probably because the Karian knight set was really strong to start with. But either way... They aren't necessarily, they, they, it might be like a little secret, but most of the time the, they're just rep supposed to represent us. You can pick your class. That's why they have various different weapons and play styles. So I don't, do I think it's supposed to be Vargram? I don't know. I think it's supposed to be sort of us because we can wear Vargram's outfit. It's supposed to sort of be the Tarnished. Kari Knight's now the Prisoner. I feel like it was the astrologer, because I, I don't think the astrologer was one of the starting classes. Either way, the network test was just like a test, right? So they they had, they probably added, they moved things around, different sets and stuff. Yeah. Black Knight Assassin, her undercover worked among them. Uh, I mean, she also, she probably likely just got trained by similar people. And if, okay, Marika was probably an Empyrean. She just became a god. And thus is no longer an Empyrean, is just a god. The Glomide Queen was also an Empyrean, and one of the first things that Marika did was get um, Malika to defeat her so that he she could seal the Rune of Death. She wanted Death gone. That seems to have been like the first thing she did. Um, it also could have been getting rid of a potential rival, considering they were both Empyreans, but they were around in the same time, like time span, because they were... She's the Glomide Queen. She's not the Glomide Princess. She's not the Glomide you know, local uh, warlord. She's the Glomide Queen. She's the queen of a realm. We don't know much about it, but she was clearly a ruler and thus got defeated by Marika, who was potentially also a ruler. I don't know. I still have my interesting theories about how they could have been siblings, considering we do know twins and uh, other various siblings who became, who were all Empyreans, but, you know. Marika character model? Uh, I, is there a further question? But yeah, so basically I think that they were both trained by similar people, yeah. That whole entire era before Marika is a little bit mysterious too, generally. I've aggroed too many boys. Time to go. Someone trying to depose Marika? 
The thing is, we don't know because we don't know much about Marika. We call her Queen Marika, the goddess, but we don't know, was she a queen before she became a goddess? Was she a, literally just a random person who encountered the Elden Ring? Like, we don't know much about her. I haven't been up to the Colosseum either. Let's go take a peek. Oh, right, the gargoyle. I don't want to fight the gargoyle. I'm not going to lie to you. I freaking, I'm, I'm kind of sick of gargoyles right now. <laughs> all their lore on all their weapons is the same, too. So we're going to grab this, and then we're going to go. First to die in the Shattering. Godwin was dead before the Shattering. For all we know, Marika was descended from the prior god. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The thing is, a lot of the information we have is sort of incomplete because... It comes from so long ago, and there have been... Okay, just as an example, um, the the church over the years, like the real life, like Christian church from various denominations or whatever, um, have been known to destroy things that they considered blasphemous, um, including, for example, the work of Sappho. If you know um, Sappho, the poet, um, her work, for very um, probably clear to your reasons, was considered... Uh, I don't know if they would use the word heretical or blasphemous or whatever, but basically she was a she was a woman who really loved women, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh boy, like seriously? She's the reason we have the terms sapphic and lesbian is because of Sappho. But she was also a very talented and respected uh, poet. Even in her time, uh, the church destroyed it because, oh my God, we can't have people reading such work, right? Considering what Radigan was like, I wouldn't put it past him to destroy things that didn't really fit with his particular story, right? So it's also possible that a lot of the information, a lot of the truths from way back when have also consciously been obfuscated by the modern church. His death sparked the war. It was the catalyst of the shattering. So yes... But we also got that information from Ronnie, who's also interested not necessarily in telling you the full truth as well. So we have to take it with a slight grain of salt. The reason we know that the, you know, oh, okay, we get it from multiple sources. But the main one is the whole Queen Marika was pushed to the brink out of Ronnie. And it's just like, okay, Ronnie. Someone killed Godwin the Golden. Who could have done this? Who's? Church also slighted which books are into the Bible, which were left out. Yup, that's actually also very true. Yeah, exactly. So for sure. First recorded death of a demigod in all history. Is that also Ronnie? Because once again, grain of salt for our queen. Anyway, we got Bernal, we got Vargo, we got Willem, we got most information on them. Let's take a look at this. And this is why this door looks so weird to me. It's because it's not activatable. Yeah, so this is some really interesting iconography. Um, Zeph, you actually just posted this on the Discord the other day and we were doing a whole ass like, where is this from? Where is this from? So we have... We, we talked about this. I actually did, like, uh, we, we all discussed on the Discord, but I definitely cemented some theories based on this new image that I've, I, we've seen similar. But take a look at this. So we have two lions facing one another, and then we have two, like, sort of weird, unidentified animals uh, sort of coming up there. Kind of potentially female lions. Looks like a freaking camel to me. Maybe some sort of dog. I don't know. You know, uh... But what's really interesting about this is that this particular relief, the top one, is taken straight out of real life. I don't remember exactly where it was, but it's on the Discord somewhere. Zef, we posted it. I, we, I relinked to it and I was like, check this out. But the lions are not lions. I think they were horses or griffins. It's, but the point is that FromSoft consciously changed this image. Lions. The rest of it's the same. But the lions they put in by... by actual choice they looked at it and went we're putting dragons in here uh, not dragons sorry i read dragons in chat and freaking tilted myself lions in here well what can we learn from this 
that FromSoft actually chooses these things. FromSoft actually looks at their art and adds little Easter eggs or details or things that relate to it that we can look at and actually derive lore from them. This isn't completely control C, control V from, uh, what do you call it? Like those those banks that have various images and then video games copy and paste them wherever to make it look like a certain thing. FromSoft consciously changes these. It's really interesting. Dragons possibly? Could be. The nose looks not so dragony to me, but like I said, this custom by FromSoft, up there, those heads, not. So they could all be lions just with different art styles, potentially. However, then we get this image, and as far as I can tell, this isn't anywhere else in the game. We see people using shields and their fists to fight some sort of beast, and uh, bro over here playing the flute like he's a bard. <laughs> Considering this is in the Colosseum, this is likely supposed to, to, to represent gladiatorial combat. Now you can see there's a figure holding a shield here, figure holding a shield here, and most of the other figures are either, I don't know, playing tug of war or something, or cowering and running in terror. The Colosseums in real life history, um, I don't remember when this started, but uh, in ancient Rome, I think Nero did a lot of this. Nero is famous for hating the Christians. Um, the ancient Romans, of course, were like, yo, there's this new religion popping up, uh, Christianity or something. Anyway, let's kill the non-believers, and they would often use Colosseums to execute Christians. They tossed them in with lions and other beings, like, like other beasts and stuff, to, uh, be violently killed for, like, entertainment, but also punishment. Um, it wasn't just kill the Christians with lions and stuff, there was also, like, you know, combat like we see in the gladiator movies and stuff but generally there there is something to be said about the punishment of people from other religions um in coliseums now i don't know which item description it is it might actually be did i get the hammer from that guy did i fight this duelist did I get the hammer? I think there's a hammer up here. Either way, the Colosseums, they were used to honor the Erd Tree, according to some lore. Um, but this ran out of... This was no longer in fashion around the time of Radigan, which means it was in fashion before him, which likely means it was under the, the, the purview of Godfrey. Right? So, Godfrey, the reason I'm not sure that this is a religious persecution image is because Godfrey, also represented by the lion, even though the lion is actually Siraj, he believed a crown is warranted with strength. Fighting and combat was almost like a religious exercise for him. It was, it was this, like, he was king because he was the strongest, period. And that's what he truly believed. He lived by the sword, he died by the sword type thing right? So the fact that these people do not seem to have weapons, they only have shields, could be something to do with the fact that it was like, prove yourself against the beast, fight against the beast, and prove yourself that you are the strongest. Because it's the only honorable way to fight is with your bare hands. Now, I don't know what kind of animal this is. The stubby tail is really interesting, because that would mean not a lion. Could be a dog. Honestly, looks very dog-like. A lot of dog breeds without uh, long tails and stuff. But the thing is that the beasts aren't necessarily bestial in this world, so it was likely just like a combat competition. Lions kind of look like red wolves of Radigan with long tails. You mean just the heads up top? The ears are swirly and rounded. I don't... I don't... They're swirled. I don't, I don't see wolf personally. Duelist jokes on you, my, religion's, my religion is dying in a coliseum. Yeah, they believe in fighting and combat as sort of a religious thing, so it's not unusual. I'm just, I, I wanted to give like the real life historical context, but I don't think that's what they're doing here. Yo Rob, thanks for the gifted membership. I appreciate that so much. Thanks for the support. Hyena, maybe? It could be a hyena. Hyenas do kind of have really interesting rounded ears. What would a hyena be? I don't know. <laughs> We're not exactly in the savannah here. Smaller cat head above the big lion heads? Hang on, let me take a look at this. Patches the hyena? <gasps> 
If you mean that? Yeah, it does look like a cat head. Rounded ears, almost human-like facial expression. This probably represents the fact that Godfrey's a cat boy. Now nah, I really don't know. Also this, isn't that like a lady with like... Oh no, that's like another cat. No lion here though. Interesting. Okay. Either way, Colosseums. Also, very notably, every single Colosseum is like not fully round or they're like cut off. Like they're all just like kind of half here. Accidentally killed patches? No, that sucks. It's easy to do though. Uh, what's your favorite boss lore? Um, in this game? Boss lore? Mm, I don't know. Like, who's my most? Who's the boss that's the most interesting? Melania. I think Melania is the most interesting uh, in terms of lore. Her story is so intriguing. Um, the dialogue she gives you is so intriguing. Malik is pretty freaking neat himself, for sure. Oh. Please, I implore you, continue, continue your reflections, your rhythms. I must be the one to record them. What matters this issue of Radigan really? Corin is the people who want a quest log. Of the golden order <laughs> lies Please continue. Eyes. Tell me where to go. Why must these qualms come to you now? We were on the very cusp. I'm joking. I just couldn't resist. Um. So um. Gomez having like a little mini meltdown. On Golmask's visible features, for sure. So he's only doing half the T pose, and then he's po he's he's pointing. So he's he's doing the like I kind of got it, but I don't fully have it. Like, is, is this inner order? I forget which one it is. Is that one inner? I don't remember. Dang, he sure is looking good. Working that freaking thong, boy. I tell you what. Kind of looks like an kind of looks like an Onyx Lord from the side. I can see it. I mean, he's very uh, sunken, skeletal, like a like a like a corpse that moves still. Malika's the only being that can actually kill something lands between, like, really kill? Mm-hmm. So that was, of course, before the Rune of Death got out. Um, so the demigods kind of lived without fear because they couldn't die. Um, and they became complacent, potentially. And that's another thing, that the complacence might have been part of the increase in stagnation. The fear of death kind of spurred them into action. Could have something to do with it. Don't have them pointy ears? Nah, his ears are pretty round. He do be having, like, no eyes, though, if you ask me. Look at that jawline, though. I don't know, I think my jawline's better. Sorry, gold mask. He do have the, the buckle fat surgery, though, bro. How do we kill the demigods for killing Malekith? Yeah, you don't really kill them. Nothing really dies in this world. Actually see the finger making really slight movements? Can you? I mean, his body, he like, he's hes slightly shifting, and his whole arm is moving. Does that count as finger motion, in all seriousness? Like, I'm actually wondering. Long-ass neck, too? Yeah, my man's stretched. My man's a, a bit of a giraffe situation. So that's the thing that's really interesting. He does kind of look like one of the Onyx Realm of the Master Lords. I can see that, but, like, I thought they were kind of, like, made of stone. Then again, he doesn't look like he's not made of stone. You know, it's not independent movement of the finger. It's his whole body shifting. Stop just to make me look foolish. There is precedent for just a finger moving on a character model. Ahem, <laughs> the doll in Bloodborne. So, no, for sure. I mean, it's not impossible. It's just that one's kind of a interesting one. Very obvious. It, it's, it looks more like his entire arm is kind of like, like doing a passive animation. Like an NPC moment. His head does turn, though. 
Interesting. His head, yeah. All right, give me one second, gamers. I'm going to check on my cat. Be right back. Hello, I'm back. Thanks for waiting. Marlo's great. I'm actually glad I checked because uh, he's being rambunctious and playing around. My sweet cat boy. But um, he has this fun habit. I don't know if I've mentioned this before. I, I definitely have, but it's been a minute. Um, when my cat eats food, he likes to drink water. So what this will lead to is he's holding food in his mouth and then he goes to drink water and food, like his food falls out and into his, his bowl his water bowl and he won't drink it after because it's been contaminated. So I need to change his water bowl. <laughs> He's actually such a prince. And that's what happened. He had a little bit of food in there and I'm like, all right, new water for the boy. Okay, gold mask. Hey, sweetheart, the sex symbol of the lands between. That's the real lore. He is the most naked one of us all. It's almost like he's looking at the tree and then looking at his finger. It could also be like a side to side thing. You know, it's interesting because I really. His head is definitely moving. His finger might be moving a bit with it, but honestly, let's look at a different place because his finger shouldn't move here because Corin is distressed because he's no longer communicating. So if anything, this would be the place his finger doesn't move if it does otherwise. So we'll look at his next appearance on the mountaintop of the giants. But in the meantime, he's like a broken record. He looks, he's um, like a skipping record, you know, it's like old vinyls or whatever. He lacks thickness though. Are you saying that you need to be thick to be a sex symbol? That's not true, bud. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. This is, this is 90s chic. This man would be like absolutely the ultimate in supermodel. Look at that skin texture. Look at those cheeks, bro. You don't need to be thick. 
He's really tall, too. He's actually probably a model. Independent of the body swing? Did anyone else see it? Really? I don't know what the best angle is to look. Maybe like this? It's just like breathing to me. 70s, not 90s? Nah, dog. 90s. In the 90s, the fashion was called a heroin chic. 90s. 70s, too. 90s, though. He got that singed waist! You don't even need a, a freaking corset! Tall, dark, and dabbing? The perfect man. Anyway, hello. Oh, was that you? Sorry. I hardly noticed. Thanks. I'm a little shaken since the master ceased his movements. I'm gonna give him a prayer book and see what he says. That is a work of heresy. Its incantations bear no lineage from the earth tree. Very well. I'll take it off your hands. He's kind of a purist. I cannot afford to maintain my innocence any longer. I must dirty my hands to test my faith. Even if it offers only the most meager of hints, I will do whatever I can to help my master. Actually, really great dialogue, all things considered. But it's a little funny to me because, okay. Urgent heal, heal, great heal. This is new, Lord's heal and Lord's aid, right? But when you first encounter Corrin, he teaches you these incantations and a couple of these. Like, almost all of these are literally just his base ones. They're all two fingers faithful incantations, and then you give him... Well, okay, it's bestowed upon by the two fingers upon the tarnished deemed worthy of becoming a lord. So you don't get to start, I guess. Maybe that's why. But it's really interesting to me that to this day, he still insists that two fingers works are heretical. Considering they still have the same root as his initial starting incantations. One book that he re re reacts positively to. I've heard that too. It just, I find it really interesting that he goes on about how this is heretical when every single one of his incantations, barring Catch Flame, is a Two Fingers incantation. So how heretical can they be exactly? You know? Gold Mask's clothes swaying? Oh yeah, his clothes are for sure swaying. But, I mean, that's the wind. All right. Lord's Heal, incantation bestowed by the two fingers upon the tarnished deemed worthy of becoming a lord, heals a massive amount of HP for the caster and nearby allies. Tarnished, oh tarnished, seek the Erd Tree and stand before Marika, its queen. Become the Elden Lord. Incantation bestowed by the two fingers upon the tarnished deemed worthy of becoming a lord alleviates buildup of poison, blood loss, and sleep for the caster and nearby allies. Additionally, cures poison. Ah, uh, so it alleviates buildup and also cures. Interesting. Two fingers do have that assassin thing going on with the dark version of the prayer book. For sure. In fact, we find the prayer- in fact- Oh, now you mention it. That prayer book that you're talking about, we found it in the exact same spot in the Erd Tree version of the Round Table Hold versus the, the real world one. Um, but the thing is, it's just, you know, he teaches two fingers incantations. And if I'm not mistaken, he literally tells you we should follow the two fingers and stuff like that. So, you know, obviously he worships the Erd Tree as the source of all. He does. That is his core. That's why he's so intrigued by Gold Mask, right? So it makes sense, but it's a little bit like, okay, buddy, you know? <laughs> all right. Do I have all of his incantations? Good. About the Nomo Gold Mask. The master's reflections had heightened as we neared the Erd Tree. While still a precise calculus, the rhythms grew increasingly wild until he simply ceased. Now the master is facing quite the puzzle. The Golden Order is founded on the principle that Marika is the one true god. However, the name of Marika's second husband, King Consort Radigan, also appeared. Who exactly was Radigan? 
The master is stumped. His finger has remained still ever since Radigan's name was discovered. Curse my mediocre mind. The master only has me. And here I fail him. Though he does initially sell Catch Flame and Flame Sling as well. Yeah, that fits with the lore. He's got the wheel around his, his neck because he's uh, he had a vision of the flame and thus was banished. The wheel around the neck, his is unique, but we have the, uh, it's a chess piece, sorry. The shackles around the neck warn passerby not to lend an ear to their sermons because they witnessed the flame uh, because they were exiled as a result. So um, what's really interesting is both Corin has catch flame. That's not unusual. He likely witnessed the flame despite, you know, worshiping the Urtree, he still witnessed the flame. Um, but the player starting as the prophet role with the exiled uh, shackle around their neck. I mean, his is a shackle. He just got extra on it because he's cool and special. Um, the uh, the player starts with catch flame if you start as prophet. It's actually really interesting. Additionally, this garb with the wheel was actually the starting class prophet in the network test. They changed it. Um, in the network test, you got to wear Corrin's exclusive drip, and then then they changed it to the more boring outfit. You had to go get Corrin near the very end of the game. Yeah, take it easy, Sasun. And you read the movements of the two fingers in the round table hold without eyes? Now you're asking the right questions. Because where we're going, we don't need eyes. I mean, you can ask him the same question, he's wearing a freaking blindfold. blindfold. <laughs> but no, absolutely. They, they don't... The senses in these games are a little bit more mysterious or nebulous. In fact, wearing a blindfold heightens your faith, which can help your understanding. Do you have the Golden Order Principia book? I don't think so. Like, I don't have any books. I don't remember where you get that one. Can you remind me? What do I know when questions Mar Radigan's disappearance? Because no one knows Marika is Radigan's secret. Oh, no one knows that Radigan is Marika. Yeah, oh shit. I just realized we're going to need to level up our int if we're going to be able to do that. But we'll, we'll just wear hats and use forbidden runes. Who cares? Hang in the chair? Oh. Well, yeah, but I haven't been there yet, so yeah, I don't have it. Oh, I thought, I, I I was thinking of a different book. Yeah, I know where that one is. That one's very important. It's where you get freaking Golden Order. You know what? We will give it to him this playthrough, because then we can, like, literally learn it and be like, oh, interesting. And then we can, you know. Okay, so let's go do a couple things that I forgot to do and get some items that I also forgot to get. Karia Manor. I don't remember exactly what the best way is to get to the ramparts. Yeah, no, I haven't been there yet. We're taking a real slow- today is our day of doing Lane Dell. Wait, this isn't it. Talisman pouch whenever I get to Landell. Oh yeah, no, normally I do too. For my like PvP characters I all set up. Oh yeah, I have like a whole dedicated route, but this has been a very slow run. Rather, in opposition to the others. I think that's everything addressed. The round table hold. We have to go back to Volcano Manor as well to turn in those quests, get some items from Burnall. We'll pick up Patches' quest, and then we can actually do the this isn't it. Sorry, I'm getting Get my wires crossed. It's been a while since I've done this pla this path. Oh, I think I wanted to show this off actually at some point. But I wonder if this is not the place where Ronnie and Renala well, Ronnie at the very least encountered the cold moon, the dark moon. You can actually see the little, you know, tendrils of blue light here. So clearly the moon is close. Also, this is the Royal Moon Gazing Grounds. This was likely a, uh, a a moon pool, so it was it's it's made in such a way that when the moon aligns perfectly, it will reflect in the pool, and you can gaze upon the moon by looking at its reflection in this perfectly designed pool. It's 
pretty neat. Also, definitely some interesting stuff going on with reflections, shadows, you know, stuff like that. To the shadow of the torturer? I, I don't know what that is, but I mean, they do be executioners in there. Wee. Oh, shit. Slightly less wee. Today has been a real stream of gravity, I gotta tell you. <laughs> A vehement rejection of the grace of gold represented by one eye being closed, or in Moog's case, there being a horn impaling it. Yeah, there's so much potential imagery with the eye being shut. It could be a blindness to something. It could be an awareness of other things that others don't see. It could be a representation of power being sealed. It could be a, a sign of seeing things that others don't, because some of the most insightful characters are ones that do not appear to have eyes, like Gold Mask. He sees the truth of the world, apparently without eyes. Anya, very similarly, doesn't seem to need eyes. None of the finger readers do. Annie is an interesting case, though, because of where she is, you know? Enter me, average, dumb, tarnished, maidenless. Wow, there's a lot of chairs to watch a bath. What kind of bath would be so shallow? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But seriously, that's why it's called the Moon Grazing Grounds. Moon Gazing Grounds. Also, there's some... Uh, Ronnie's a witch, as is Renala. Um, there's like some witchy stuff about the moon and creating moon water. So what you do is you... Like, I know some people like modernly do this and stuff. Um, the, the, you get power from the moon by placing water, preferably in an open basin in under a full moon and the water will absorb the moon's power um so it isn't unusual too so it could be like a multi like a multiple uh a thing that they do for multiple reasons but mainly i think it's so they can see the moon because they're like all moon folks here read the fingers moon so that eyes but then corn also reads gold masks without vision mm-hmm yeah Melania's eyes are also rotted away. I know people like to say that she uses the water in her arena to see you, because, you know, the, the movement of the water. Definitely possible. Um, but there wasn't any water when she fought Radon, and she still had no issue looking at him. Hyeta can glimpse light when she eats grapes. Yeah, because it's a flame taking root in the back of her eyes. In her mind, effectively. But no, absolutely. And what, what do they say? In the mind's eye? Like, in your mind's eye, you can see it? You know, imagining things? Intriguing turn of phrase, all things considered. In the book, the torturer is exiled from his home citadel to become an executioner? Whose uh, book is this? Like, what, what book is this? I counted. I think I remember there is 47 chairs around the moon pool. Interesting. I didn't think to count chairs. That's insightful. But total aphantasia, it's hard to relate. Yeah, no, no. I, I have actually heard about that. Yeah, it's really intriguing. There's different levels, too. I, I tend to be the complete opposite. I can imagine things very vividly. Radon's heart beats like a freaking drum. Don't even try to find him with hearing. <laughs> you know what? You make an excellent point. <laughs> I mean, Radon also does use gravity sorcery. It's not exactly quiet. He also likes yelling a lot. Karian Grander. I feel like I missed a pad. Did I miss something up there? I definitely did because wasn't I supposed to... <gasps> Wait a second, I'm a goober. I know where I'm supposed to go. This is this is cool, but I, f I forgot. I rem like I've been reminded of a thing that I missed. Karian Grandeur. Karian Royal Prestige embodied in a skill. Transform blade into a magical greatsword and swing it down. The blind would be without grace, but the closed eye is like a symbol of defi defiance. 
But the the blind aren't necessarily without grace, are they? The tarnished are. The tarnished. But the thing is, the tarnished are the only ones that are without grace, which means that even the blind have grace, right? Like it's not it's not mutually exclusive. Closed eyes, a symbol of defiance. We see that with Moog, Ronnie. I don't know. It's it's a potential symbol for sure. Also, eyes in FromSoft games in general have always had significance. From red eyes meaning a certain thing to uh, the fire keepers have no eyes. In fact, to be a firekeeper, you need to be blind, apparently, because you see things that we otherwise wouldn't. Karian do to keep their eyes, whereas the Earth Tree Fam discard eyes. In what in what sense? Because the Karians are into intelligence and sorcery, which you need your eyes to be able to see. Um, with the exception of figures like maybe the primeval sor the sorcerers who found the current, although they did see the current, they did look upon it, right? The blindfold represents faith. Blindfold of exiled prophets who foretold misfortune and were persecuted and driven from their homes as a result. Why hesitate if the path leading to the future is clear? Just close your eyes and walk. Faith equals, like, faith in this game is blind, basically. Um, it's sort of a representation of how some of the most faithful figures are also, I mean, the least intelligent, frankly. <laughs> it's like, there are exceptions, of course. Radigan, Gold Mask, right? They combined intelligence with faith because they needed to understand both, both parts of it. I'm having this moment because I remember there's a path here somewhere that leads to a crab that I haven't been to in a long time because I forgot that there's a path to the crab. There's the crab. That looks like way too high, but like, okay. Oh, it sure isn't. None of the chairs are troll sides, so the moon gazing grounds likely weren't meant to seat the knights. Yeah, I feel like that was probably a very exclusive thing, despite there being 47 chairs. That's the thing, yeah, who would be seated? 45 chairs, okay, neat. Look at him, he's hoarding. Do you do any element, little crab? Let's find out. Okay, you were supposed to spit at me, not pick me up and squish me, you rude guy. The element of pinch? That's true. There we go. There we go. Sleep! That's freaking weird! Actually, no, it's not weird. The ones that bring Lucaria do sleep, too. What did I pick up? Was it the Arumi? I was so focused on his, his adorable little eyes that I, I forgot to uh, pay attention to what he actually gave me. What he was guarding. What did he give me? Someone said you get the Arumi around here? It was a stone sword key. It was. Yeah, where do you get the Arumi chat? The Uwumi? Is it down there? Where even is that? No, that's just the exit. Oh, snap. Okay. The jump near the elevator? The jump near the elevator? Maybe I don't remember that. From the other side, the I don't know what jump near the elevator is. Do you mean on the lower level of the manor? Never found that crab? There's just a random crab on the rampart. How did he get there? You must wonder. Upper level backtrack down the elevator. C can I start from here? Do I need to go down the elevator? I want to get jumped by Cuckoo Knights. 
This works neat. Okay, so I'm back. I'm doing a jump. Maybe I never found this. Maybe that's why it's like not remember. Wait, is it over there? Do I jump like straight from here? To like over there or something? I think I see it. Neat. Near the abductor virgin? This is, yeah, you guys told me there's an abductor virgin in Caria Manor, and I was like, there is? And this might be exactly why. Oh, that thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, how do I freaking get there? I'm supposed to jump from here? Oh, my lord. Oh, neat. Oh, fuck. Oh, boy. Gentle? Oh, that's not gentle. Oh, it's gentle. Okay, okay. Wee! Nailed it. I don't know if I found this, genuinely. I don't remember. You know, I do have vague memories of fighting in the Dr. Virgin around here. Hands! More hands! I forgot there are hands on the upper level. I talked about how they're only on the lower level. I completely forgot there are a few here, but they're still isolated from other enemies. And here's the abductor. This one's the wheel model. So these might be older than the dagger ones, maybe, because these use Giza's wheel, and Giza's wheel was used as like, um, what do you call it? Like a, like a model for this. There's an Arumi here? That's what I'm saying, I forgot. Okay, so they do you hurt? Yep, they hurt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, they are enemies. It's not unusual, the abductor versions do hurt other enemies. Why is there a Nox weapon in Karia Manor? <laughs> Remember how the I said that the Nox and the Karians have split? I mean, first of all, this guy probably brought it here. He's just wearing the, the noble garb. Oh, son of a... Help. Let me out. Nox and Karian crests are very similar too. At their core... So, Ronnie starts the Age of the Stars, the Nox were about the Age of Stars, the Karians were about the Moon. In other words, and the whole reason there is a there is a School of the Moon is because of Renala. So basically, what this sounds like to me, astrologers. Astrologers, some of them discover the primeval current. They found Rhea Lucaria in order to study the primeval current. Uh, Renala goes down her own path and as a stargazer discovers the moon, thus founding Rhea Lucaria, not founding Rhea Lucaria, becoming the leader of Rhea Lucaria via the moon sorcery. And then from there, some of the astrologers, most of them arguably, became the Nox. Knife a weapon, not a Nox weapon? The thing is... The night folk are they the are they the the blue ones? You find them in Nokron, as in the Nox, right? For one of my favorite weapons, I really haven't read it. I don't remember its lore off the top of my head. Where are my whips? There they are. This weapon made of extremely ni uh, extremely thin, flexible blades of metal is wielded like a whip by nightfolk warriors. Though in essence a whip with a cutting edge, it can also be used as a spear to pierce foes with its really unique R2. Check this out, gamers. I love the Urumi. I will, I will praise it. The only reason I don't use it all the time is because I like uh, the look of the hosels better. Like, seriously, <laughs> but it's beautiful. Meow. <laughs> Yeah, it's basically like a liquid whip that coils. Hang on. There we go. Okay. 
Wait a minute, I got too many weapons on. Okay, 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 okay. How do I make it do the thing again? Uh, there we go. Look at the stance that you take, too, to do this. So neat. Pretty similar. A snap bracelet when you see the whip? I can see that. Marlo, you are being an absolute menace today. Forged in the liquid metal of a silver tear, it is thoroughly tempered until hardened. Grim weapon wielded by swordsman of the Eternal City. Yeah, it's... they're really similar. Cursors are like a dancing pattern with successive attacks? Mm-hmm. The, uh... I, okay, personally? Personally, I think that the, the, the swordsman, the warrior swordsman, used a shamshir. I think that was his weapon. The fact that um, Millicent uses a Shamshir as well, but it has waterfowl on it, is really interesting. It's meant to mimic flowing water. It looks a lot like the Nox Flowing Sword. There's a lot of really interesting stuff. Hi, cat. Cat devil child. I hear you running around everywhere like a little menace. You're so cute. Shamshir are the same flowing artus. Not like the, the ones that become liquid. Interesting spin, huh? So, doesn't forgive me for the vacuum cleaner incident? Oh, when I scare my cat with the vacuum cleaner because I was scared of the centipede? Um, no, Marlo's fine with that. He doesn't like the vacuum, though. Okay, so I think we're done here. I'm glad we went back because, like, I just wanted to pick up all the important items. I just completely forgot about that. Very Indian Middle Eastern name to it. Yeah, I don't know where the origin of the Shamshir is because it, it is a weapon that, like, exists. Oh, wait. Do I have the... I think there's a couple places in Kayla that I have to revisit. Did I go to that, um... Castle with a lion? There's a weapon you get there. I think it's a fist weapon. I don't know where fist weapons go in your category. Doesn't look like I have it. Yeah, we have to go get it. It's also got a really interesting name that I can't remember at the top of my head. Shamshir is what we call swords in Persian. I see. Yeah, like the curved swords of scimitar is also, I think, from a from the east. Oh, that's like a whole region of the world. You know what I mean? I don't know the exact like origin of it. The Qatar, exactly. I forgot to pick up the Qatar. This is a good way to sort of remember all that stuff. Like pick up some of those important items that are frankly just cool. Like I really would like to get all those. It doesn't look like I've actually been to that place at all. Huh, that's funny. I forgot. It's tough because a lot of it, a lot of this run is like me getting things, but also talking about lore and like, I only got so much brain ram, you know what I'm saying? Rocking double eclipse shuttles. So I, the thing about death is it's not the best status effect in the game. Um, You might be like, Oh, how could this be? I think it only works on Tarnish, like Frenzy. Um, I, I might be mistaken, there might be some exceptions, but Deadly really only works on Tarnished, um, meaning they'd be good for PvP. But the problem is that the Deathblay buildup generally is so slow that you're more likely to kill people before they turn into trees. Not a bad thing, just is. Also, I went the wrong way, I know. Oh boy! You notice how this one's more white than the other? So, you know how you run around and you'll see wolves, and then there's one, one larger white wolf, and then the other wolves are just like wolf colored? Yeah, I'm pretty sure these are wolves that have become mutated. But no, I love the look of the Eclipse Shuttles. A beautiful weapon, super cool. Um. I actually do have a PvP build. I had a PvP build that used the Magma Blades and the Candlestick weapon. 
I did a whole PvP video. I called her Flame Dancer. One of my best thumbnails was on that video, I swear. Gorgeous. Gorgeous fashion. It was great. But the wolves aren't annoying? Generally true. Yeah, no. Excuse me. I'm trying to get the greatsword. I'm trying to become like nuts from Burke. Can you move your bodies and stop body blocking me, you rude ass animals? Wait, I did get the greatsword. I got St. Trina's sword and then I never went to uh, this place. Butts from Gazork. <laughs> That's a good one. Would be good if the DLC reworks Deathblight in our favor. The thing is, Deathblight is a very fearsome status effect because when it fills up, you die. No ifs, ands, or buts. That's it, right? So from a PvP perspective, It'd be like us being able to wield Frenzy and Bloodborne. There's a reason that it builds up very slowly. There was also, um, gamers will remember, a Deathblight exploit you could use. Was it Blood? I always forget what the skill is called. The one that... Blood Flame something? Like one of the Blood Flame ashes or weapon arts or whatever it's called? Uh, and you would run up to people with death blight, and you would death blight them just by proximity, and they would get sunlocked and die. They patched it ha lightning fast. Fire is deadly sin. That's what it is. I never remember what it's freaking called. Um, but yeah, basically they're gonna be really careful with death blight. I don't think there would be a reason for them to rework it now. From a PVE perspective, the reason that frenzy only works on tarnished or tarnish-shaped enemies is probably so they, you know, you can't just trivialize the game by applying continuous death blight and turning all the bosses into trees. So I'm not saying that they won't rework it, but there's a reason they're being very careful with it because it's a status effect that just freaking kills you. Frenzy and, and blood, like the bleed proc, both got reworked to stun you for a shorter length of time, I believe. Also, there's another fun little thing in uh, online, in From Games, specifically this one you see quite a bit. Um, you can basically still status somebody while they're rolling. Status will build up on like a phantom hit. So you're rolling, you don't take damage from it, but your status bar fills up. It just be like that. Oh, there's this guy. Right, I should get him. I misjudged where it was. Don's rain type thing is kind of similar to the Karian defense belt, the manor. Yeah, the automated one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very good point. What the? It, 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 they pranked me! I forgot this one goes on a big old figure. So, beach ball. Trust me, it would be fun to use Deathblade. I just mean, like, they're really going to be careful with it because of how powerful status effect it is. It'd be like if you could wield Curse and Dark Souls. Or Frenzy and Bloodborne. Or uh, Fear or whatever in Sekiro. What did I pick up? I literally just wanted it. <laughs> I didn't even... I just skipped through it. Oh my god. <laughs> Ah, so this is a great example. They are uh, building these walls, burning the freaking wolves and the and the uh, rot. Um, it's not working like well at all, <laughs> but it's not bad, I guess. Flame is a red means. Why did I read it the way you wrote it? Dang it! Hang on. Uh, yeah. It's still rotten. But they're trying. It's just they're basically fighting the illness and, and rot of an outer god with literal torches. <laughs> like, they're doing their best. A 
couple items up here I want to get, though. Whoops. So this nerd right here is the one who's doing it. Now you might notice, though he's got a rather small little, um... What the heck was even... <laughs> oh, that looked really funny, thanks. <laughs> oh my god. Sorry, that really distracted me. That looked really funny. Um, Walls enchanted with Flame of the Giants, the rot would have reached Limgrave. It isn't the Flame of the Giants, it's just plain old fire, though. Like, that's the thing. If it was the Flame of the Giants, it might, but it is not. The Flame of the Giants is pretty much only... Like, these guys, I know they're meant to evoke the image of the Giants, but they just use regular fire. In fact, they use oil. And there's little guys in there. They're just kind of guys. Flame grant me strength, foggy. I don't think these nerds have access to the fire... to the Flame Giant stuff. And even if they did, it requires faith. Whole different subcategory. I mean, they do have faith in Radon. To this day. It's kind of sweet, actually. Um, anyway, sorry, I was talking about something and the freaking fall completely made me... Oh, oh, oh! The giant, uh, the large knight. Where'd he go? Where'd he die? I want the point of his outfit. Did he vanish? Does he, does he vanish when he dies? Well, unfortunate. But his, um, the, the plume coming out of his head, he fell off. <sighs> Typical. The plume coming out of his helmet looks a lot like Radon's helmet. It's basically one-to-one, -one, like a huge bright red plume, just smaller, smaller than this one, obviously. This is like a whole ass wig, right? But it ver pretty much one-to-one -one in appearance. So, of course, the, the hue of red is quite different, but compare with the more muted, dull red that the Galmir Knights of um, Rikard wield. Also, the, the helmet itself is tarnished, so it could also be like the, the color has faded because of the, uh, the, the age. But feathers that have been severed and attached to a helmet don't go gray, as far as I know, suggesting to me that it's meant to evoke Rikard's own hair, the red and the gray. Just an interesting side-by-side -side comparison. How come they manage to set walls on what seems like eternal fire? I just really don't think it's the it's the fire giant flame, because the fire giant flame, yeah, it's it's not as on lock and key as it should be. Where's flame Grammy Street? Superior incantation of the fire monks. This incantation does not burn the caster, and so it is considered forbidden by the guardians of the flame. <laughs> Damn, that's some masochistic behavior. Creates an invigorating fire within that enhances physical and fire affinity attack power. It's like they have to be reminded of the, the power of the flame. Right back in Caleb, because we need to get the items in here. We're trying to get the Qatar, for example. Also, Radon... Do I have Radon's rune? I should, right? Hang on. Great rune of the Shardbearer, Radon. The great rune burns to resist the encroachment of the Scarlet Rot. Radon himself doesn't use any fire spells, any- he doesn't appear to really- like, he doesn't use anything faith-based. I'm trying to go through his general moveset. He's just strength and some int to use his gravity sorcery. Yet, despite not using anything associated with fire, his great rune burns. It represents kind of him, his personality, his- his resolve, whatever, right? Um, the fact that the- his soldiers. Can we just talk about this freaking gorgeous view, though? Holy crap, the way the light goes. Oh my god. 
It like almost hurts to look at it so bright, but it's beautiful. We collecting every item? No, but we want to pick up most things. And I just forgot about this whole area. So and sulfur for the volcano. Most definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be a sign of the volcanic ash. Thing is, I don't see much ash in volcano, like the volcano region, really. Ironically, you'd think there'd be a little bit more ash, but yeah, no, good point. Fort Gale, that's what the name is. I always forget. Anyway, no, but like, despite Radon not using any fire, any special fire, any incantations, his great rune burns to resist the rot, right? So that suggests to me his soldiers are using fire not in the sense of like real and, and you know, casting fire spells. They literally are lighting their weapons on fire to resist the rot to burn it away. He becomes a meteor. He flies into the sky with his own gravity sorcery. Still gravity. Here we go. This guy, look at his helmet. Do you see how it looks very much like Radon's? Very bright, fiery red to this day. Good God. Elevating for the first time, not doing very well? I understand. Keep at it. You'll get there. Slowly but surely. <laughs> Convene the festival of war. Honor General Radon with a warrior's glory. It's in your hands, Sir Jaren. And that's how you get, like, he's looking at Radon's castle, Redmain Castle. Star Scourge Heirloom. Ah, oh, I was wondering where you picked this up. This is great. Glad we came back here. This is very important. A talisman engraved with a scene from a heroic tale raises strength. The mightiest hero of the demigods confronted the falling stars alone, and thus did he crush them, his conquest sealing the very fate of the stars. In this image, we see him riding um, Leonard, his horse, you know, swords out, stars in the sky, and then one large meteor-like thing falling, and him just being like, Rarrr. Um... Why he has blood magic? Sorry, who is blood magic? Mean creatures like Estelle and the Falling Star Beast? Yeah, but it's really interesting. Because when we hear falling stars, we are like to assume that they fall on their own. That Red Main Knight? Oh, you mean that... Was it, was it Red Main Knight? I thought it was a Godric Knight. One of Godric's knights? You mean the one that ends up here at Fort Height? Um, he just probably got, uh, vampired. It wasn't a Red Main Knight, though, was it? I don't remember, actually. He might have been a Red Main Knight. Does anyone remember? I fought him so long ago, and honestly, I didn't pay attention to his iconography. I should have. Anyway, sorry. Just one thing about the <laughs> Radon. I know we've mentioned it, but it's, it's relevant to this. Um... Fires numerous gravitational projectiles, any foes struck will be pulled toward the caster. A gravitational technique mastered by the young Radon. I thank you for your tutelage, for now I can challenge the stars. It pulls enemies in. So, I wonder, is it possible that there were falling stars because of Radon in the first place? It's a heroic tale, but he started the fight. It makes it seem as if the stars were following, following on their own. And then he confronted them, the brave, lonely warrior. It's a little bit of a different story if he called them in the first place and pulled them in, isn't it? So after that, we can access... We get a shortcut to Redmain Castle. Sorry I get mi got mixed up. No, it's easy to get mixed up. I just want to make sure I didn't get mixed up. Either way, he basically got infected. Also, I have to run back because I forgot to get the guitar. I just wanted to show off the teleport point. <laughs> uh, 
That boy would do anything for his horse. It started as a way to ride his horse, but by the end of his teaching, by the end of his learning, his goal was to challenge the stars. He didn't go to school with the intent of getting a degree in star fighting, but that's what he was, that was his major when he left. It's pretty interesting. That's the thing I think that is, it's sort of so reading between the lines that I think a lot of people miss it. But his sorceries involve pulling things in, not pushing them out. I think he, does he, does he even have any pu push? Sorceries, because he learned from an alabaster lord. They do pull. They do pull in. His lord is about keeping the stars in the sky. Yep, he froze them after pulling them in, presumably. Because he fought them first, so he yoinked them in. He fucking said, get over here, scorpion style. And then he fought them, and then he froze them. It's weird. Pulls in, then pushes you in the end. I mean, does it push you or does it just hurt so you get freaking blasted? Could be a difference. I don't really use many sor many uh, gravity sorceries. Also, the Qatar. Import a dagger design with a rather unique handle. The blade can be swung about as an extension of one's fist. Which is really cool. Dang it, I forgot to open the gate. That's okay. Oh my god! Ready to throw hands, huh? Ash of War Lion's Claw. Which one? What category would that- that's not it. Uh... Um... Skill of the Red Mains who fought alongside General Radon. Somersault forwards, striking foes with armament. Pretty interesting that it, you see like the Red Main Knight using it, and also you get it from a lion. Gravity just kind of pulls in general. It does, but there's a re there's a distinction made within the game between the sorcery, um, the gravity magic sorcery of the Alabaster and the Onyx Lords, and the Alabaster Lords pull. And the uh, the Onyx Lords push, and it's all gravity, but they seem to be like there's there's a difference between what the two of them do. And Radon's teacher was an Alabaster Lord. We can actually see that based on all of his sorceries, most of them at least being pull. Mount Tops by land, they both have the mega giant skeletons and also the giant wildlife. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is actually probably the first place that you will see those giant corpses, which were likely giants. Crazy to think about that the giants that we encounter might actually be shorter compared to the giants of the past. In fact, everything from the past was larger, mightier, and stronger. As things were closer to the crucible that were less evolved, they were mightier. Ancient dragons uh, are far stronger than the um, their like modern pale imitations, as the game puts it. My boy has a mushroom on him. There's mushrooms over here. Like, Redmain Castle is trying, but goodness. His father's desired to bonk everything? Oh, good lord. Summon the cosmos so you could bonk it? I will say, there's actually something really interesting about Radon. Like, he was a wannabe warlord and a warrior who was born during an era of peace. He literally craved violence. Like, he wanted to prove his mightiness and his strength, and to prove your mightiness and strength, you need an enemy, and he was born during peace. There's a reason that Radon was likely the demigod, probably the most interesting, in fact, probably, quite possibly, other than Godric, the only demigod actually interested in acquiring great runes, which is likely why he fought Melania. Like, I'm not saying Melania didn't start the fight. 
I'm just saying that it's likely one, one reason that he wanted to fight her. She has a great rune. It's also possible that he simply wanted to test his strength against, yes, yet another powerful warrior, one of the mightiest of the lands between, right? Like, there's something to be said. There's multiple reasons that he could have wanted to fight. But the man just wanted to throw hands. Could have had a war outside the lands between. I think he would have been happier if it came here, because he sure seemed to be pretty fine when it did. Looks like the beast clergyman's weapon, the Cincadea. Which we should go pick up, actually. You just reminded me as well. I know that this is like a little bit of like housekeeping, for lack of a better word, but I don't want to forget to do this stuff. So this is actually really huge to do. Um, do you, can I give you any death root? Do I have any? I don't remember. I sure, I have five. A lot of people online think that he was helping Ronnie by keeping her fate sealed. I think that is absolute cope. I think I think that is cope from people who like Radon and don't want him to be against Ronnie. There's zero evidence of that. In fact, there's more suggestion in the opposite direction. Because the people that um, Radon idolized were Godfrey and his father Radigan. It doesn't mean that he didn't care for his mother, considering he did learn sorcery, but he didn't learn it from his mother, nor did he learn it Rhea Lucaria, where she was the basically the headmaster or whatever i forget what the term is like the the leader of the school he learned it in celia potentially from people who are nox which are a different category right and it we don't know if he did it in secret we don't know what renala thought about this we don't know if she had a problem with it we really we don't know too much about the relationship of the family but it's really interesting because renala clearly favored ronnie because she would be the one next in line to to get the throne um, but it's similar to how Radigan, as far as we can tell, only has a relationship with Mikola. We only have lore about exchanges between Mikola and Radigan and Renala and Ronnie. We don't know any other relationships, really. We can, we can imply, but we don't really know how the characters felt about this. Like, was Radon salty? You know, was he like, I want to be the king and ruler? Was, was that like, did he resent his mother? Or was he just cool with it and he took a different path and did something else? We don't know. But no, I think that Ronnie and Rad Radon were pretty opposed. It's possible I'm wrong. Feed me more. It's possible that everyone else was a was a casualty of Radon, because we really don't know why he froze the stars. Since they guy the fate of the royal family, it's possible it was a, a, a giant fuck you to his sister. It's possible that he like let let's let's get this reading. His quite possibly younger sister, I don't know if we have confirmation of birth order, I really don't know, but either way, it's possible that his younger sister was going to be the, the queen and he was salty about it, so he's like, can't become the queen if I freeze the stars. Could have been that, really. He could be salty. Or maybe he was trying to help his sister, but I don't really see any reason for that. It's also possible he was trying to avoid a fate of his own, because his own fate would be guided by the stars, and he wanted to freeze that too. She was the one to make the line matrilineal? Yeah. Let's just give them all. Did you craft weapons for Adon's army if Ronnie and Radon were opposed? But the thing is, this would have been a long time ago. Like a very long time ago. Post something up with Nicola? Nah, what he did fucked everyone over. That's the thing about what Radon did. Go Godwin, I know I've, I'm beating this dead horse over and over again, but I feel people need to be reminded that Radon is the reason that Deathblight is fucking everywhere because Nicola found a way to fix Godwin and he would have succeeded if Radon hadn't frozen the stars. Uh, he froze the stars to continue the stagnation of the land. There is nothing good that can come from freezing the fates of countless people. And that's what he chose to do. It is a strong vote in the realm of stagnation and status quo. Which is ironic because, once again, he was born into peace. He was a, He's a wannabe warlord born into peace, so he needed there to be change. Interesting. 
All right, we gave him five. I think maybe pissed at us when we rest. I don't remember where the trigger is. Ooh, really cool dragon. Dragon with like angel wings? This is really cute. Never noticed this super consciously. Pretty notable though, considering those statues in Volcano Manor. Yep, he's pissed. He's pissed. Is he pissed? He is pissed! Run! <laughs> oh boy! Just an end game boss fight, no big deal. Oh shit. Freeze the stars before the shattering? Probably not. But we really don't know, it's a good question. Hey, bud. Dude, I hit you one time, relax. Notice how he kind of holds up the, the hand that we now know has sealed the rune of death? Actually, now that he has his weapon in hand, let's take a look at this. Okay. That's a really interesting little weapon, isn't it? It looks like it's got, like, death root. It looks rather death rooty and corroded. Because that's not the sink of day. It doesn't look like that anymore, no? I mean, to be fair, half of it is in the thing. But the symbol on it, like, the markings all over it. Boss health bar in Farmazilla doesn't say Gronk Beast Clergyman. Makes me think it's not him. It's him. It is guaranteed him. 100%. They're just trying to obfuscate it a little bit at first. They want the Malaketh revealed to be pretty significant. But this is a, this is Malaketh. No doubt. Absolutely. Singadea. I gotta take a closer look at the Singadea. It's been a while, but I thought it was like one solid piece. It is? It really looks like this? Damn, it don't look as good as I thought it did. Shit. Anyway, this is the Rune of Death. Right there, peeking out. And when he calms down upon, like, hunting you, he kind of has his hand up a little bit before he puts it down. I will not forget again. Okay, can you, can you can you maybe scooch? All right, no scooching. That's fine. It really is sad what's happened to him. Like the, his concept of a sin is really heartbreaking because he basically made a mistake. That's what it is. Like his sin was that he didn't keep the rune of death away. It's heartbreaking, genuinely. He was targeted by Ronnie and, in my opinion, also Marika. I can never- I've only done this a couple times, so give me a second while I try to figure out where exactly you descend, because- Ah, there it is, see? Oh, sh- That edge is really freaking slippery. We need to put some safety railings in there. Let's get Gronk on that. Marika really was cruel to poor Malika with that punishment. The thing is, it's a self-imposed punishment. I don't think Marika was like, you fucked up, now you get to be punished. He's punishing himself. Like, really? In fact, I see a lot of similarity be between him and Morgoth wearing old, tattered robes instead of any finery despite being kings and these powerful figures, right? Like, genuinely. I think there's a little bit more to read into it. Also, the screaming, howling beasts in chains. This room, specifically, like, I know this is Varamazula architecture, but this right here is basically straight out of Demon Souls. The, uh, what's it called? Priest or something? The, the, the blind, the blind warrior fight has almost this exact same type of iconography, but rather than beasts, it's like people. It's cool. Okay, let's try to do that without falling into the pit. 
Yeah, he's, uh, he's... It, it's a self-imposed punishment because it was his mistake. Like, it'd be like if someone was like, Okay, you are, uh, your entire purpose is to keep this rune of death safe. Please swear that you will keep it, keep anyone from getting it. And he swears. And then someone steals it from him. Well, congratulations, you just sinned. There may be more to it. Yeah, especially since his, when you complete his dialogue, his, his quest line, when you give him every single death route, he says, um, I don't remember the exact words. Could someone find that video? It's like a really long, it's like a minute long video where I fought him and I got the dialogue. 5,000 point readings, you fought. Hey, do, let's do a gamba. Actually, let's also do a gamba. Mark betrayed him. She defo did that to him. But the thing is, when he he's trying to put it back together so that he can he can okay. Malaketh is trying to undo his sin by putting the rune back together by eating all the death root. And even when you do that, he realizes that it can't be done. Where's a gamba? I don't remember how to do a gamba. <laughs> it's been so long. What's it called? Prediction? Prediction. There we go. Hang on. Um. Okay, go quick. Predict. Predict. 30 seconds. Go, 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 go. Tarnish, why are you here? No, it's when you, it's when you kill him. He says, is this, he says, Marika, is this what it means to sin? Because finally he understands that what has been broken cannot simply be put back together. Because Marika is also a sinner. He finally understands her. Gone the interaction of Garan crying outside the earth tree? No, but I would like to try to get it. I think we'll just rest a few times and see if we can get it. I've tried. But he's never shown up there for me. I think it needs to be raining, which it often is, and you just rest and see if he's there. Malika being a shadow, you would have been compelled to work in the favor of the greater will. What do you think was the win, though? Or the betrayal, though? Because, like, I agree she betrayed him, but I wonder if it was, like, a direct thing. I wonder if she was spiteful toward her shadow. I really wonder, because, like, she betrayed him, but it's the type of thing that's really weird to read into. Has to be raining in night, night time. Oh, boy. Okay. Um. YOLO. Lots of gray with Marika? With all of them. Yeah. Had to reach the Golem, right? I don't even remember where the hell that is. Golem? Are you thinking of the right area? Sanctuary Stone. Yo, Destrina, thank you for 12 months! Thank you for one year. It's, it is the Raph anniversary, Pog. Golem is in Convergence. There's also the one like above Redon's Arena where you get the painting. He's making the whole thing up, the sin. I don't think he's making it up, but it's the type of thing that is it really a sin because he got robbed? Do you know what I mean? Like it's not a moral failing. He didn't choose it, but he still messed up. He considers it a sin. Maybe Marika would forgive him. Bro, I think Marika's the one who made it happen, but his own... He's self-punishing, you know? It's really sad. Like, trust me, it's sad. How did I even do this? It's also possible Marika wasn't even able to talk to him at this time. Can I... That looks too far. That's, pro that's too far. I have to... I think I have to go there. 
seen this area was here, you will see once I get down there. It's not easy, though. Fountains? Do these movie fountains? They sure look like them. They look like the ones at Ferrum. I mean, this is like Ferrum Town, so... All, all his dialogues, can I link it? I mean, like, I was hoping to find mine, because then I could just watch it real quick. But I don't want to watch, like, someone else's, like, long video. Oh, my ankles. Because my boy's got a lot of dialogue, dog. But my video is just, is like, it's like a minute long, because it's a short, I think. Wouldn't want hints about how to get down there? And you were trying to change the odds? Of the Gamba? Never. Oh, no, a freaking guy. Hey! Hey! That looks okay. That looks okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Falling along with Ronnie to have that rune stolen as you theorize? No, 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 no. The betrayal. Okay. When Marika asked him to keep the rune of death, she intended to make that happen forever. She wanted Rune to be sealed forever. She betrayed him later because she changed her mind because she realized it wasn't all it was cracked up to be. Marika sinned, yes, but her betrayal of Malaketh is a lot more akin to Malaketh punishing himself for his sin. When I hear that, I don't think he sinned, but by his standards, he did. Do you know what I mean? It's a lot more gray area than Marika bad. Bro, this freaking bat is clipping. Can you get the heck out of here? Oh boy. That looks too high to me. I'm scared. That's too high. Oh boy. I might have goofed it. YOLO. Maybe not YOLO. YOLO. Are you kidding? That is so makeable. All right, y'all won. But did I not make it so far? I'm proud of myself for that one. I'm very proud, but also sad. <laughs> Easiest point of my life? Did people really gamble that I would win? That's your mistake. <laughs> Easy money, sorry for doubting. Listen, every single person in chat is like, LOL doubting, LOL doubting. Exactly who thought I would make it? That's your fault. <laughs> I mean, I appreciate it, but like, my god. Are you insane? Wee. Wee. You can do another Gamba. I want the mods to set it up if you want, but I'm like, I want to I wanna go for it. I want the Cincadea. You thought you would make it? I literally didn't think I would make it, dog. I just thought it'd be funny to do for some content. I do a lot of things for content. Me gambling? Like, I literally made the gamba yes or no. You thought that that thought... Oh, shit. Oh, fuck no! Oh, ho, 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 ho. No way this counts as a surface. No shot. Oh shit. Oh, did I make it? Oh, that's stupid. Sinkadea! Let's go take a look at it. Never mind, no gamba. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too fast. Ten a way to get down safely. It feels really silly. Yeah. Dagger? I know it's a dagger. I just don't remember where daggers are. You know how big my inventory is? You know how many- Do you know how much lore is in here? I don't even freaking use daggers. I actually don't. Is this really what this shit looks like? Oh my god. It does look a little scuffed, doesn't it?
short sword given to high-ranking clergymen of Far Missoula, raises potency of bestial incantations. The design celebrates a beast's five fingers, symbolic of the intelligence once granted upon their kind. Oh, neat, I forgot about that, so they weren't always intelligent. That looks like a meteor, doesn't it? Like the meteors that we see in the Divine Towers. Like at the at the end? I'm trying to get a better angle. So yeah, the five fingers represents intelligence because it's the thumb that allowed us to make tools. Beasts in this case. You kind of have to betray, given that he's a Shadowbound Beast. Like, why? He's basically programmed to kill uh, disobeying Empyreans? Yeah! No, but the thing is... What's what's interesting is... I feel like people are really reading the betrayal, and they're, they're giving, like, the most... Um, negative possible read of it. I agree. Betrayal tends to be a bad thing, right? But let's not forget that Ronnie also betrays Blythe by going down her path. It's just they know... That she's going to do that. They know that, like, EG and Blythe know they're gonna die. It's just a part of it, right? But nonetheless, Ronnie betrays her most loyal allies because it's part of what she needs to do. Like Marika, the difference is Ronnie was able to tell them that. Marika was not. When she realized that everything was going wrong and she needed to sin in order to destroy the order that she herself had created. She wasn't able to tell Malekith. She also didn't have much use for him, for sure. I'm not saying that she was, like, kind to him or anything. Like, it's different from Ronnie and Blythe. But nonetheless, it's interesting. Little floor design is interesting. Sorry, which one? The Dragon Crest Shield Talisman as well. <laughs> Little one. Nothing too new. Wrought iron talisman depicting an ancient dragon. Where the dagger was? Let's take a look. That makes you wonder what the purpose of this was. Also, all, all of them are facing the center here. Most notably in Marika's bedchamber. Neat! You have to remember that Marika is apparently Malekith's half-brother. Or, Malekith is her half-brother. Interesting. Ronnie had E.G. and Blythe killed? No, she didn't have them killed, but her choices led to their deaths. She knew that they would die. She also knew that by going against her two fingers, Blythe would go crazy and become an enemy. Um... Did he just... How do you die to gravity with wings, you dummy? This is the part where he appears outside, right? I fucking hope not. No, he's just outside the thing. But yeah, no, it's not so much a betrayal than a sacrifice, in my opinion. Do you mean, uh, do you mean Blythe? Yeah, Ronnie sacrifices Blythe. Also, hang on a second. I just noticed that they each have one leg over the flame. It's like a torture depiction. Could be coincidental. Could, they could just be decoration. But these are bodies. Wouldn't die to gravity even if you had wings? No, now I feel better. Like a like a dumbass with fucking wings died to gravity. Am I, how am I supposed to feel ashamed? Black guys went crazy under the greater will. I don't think they went crazy, though. I think they were just doing what they wanted to do. Which was, in this case, not what Ronnie wanted. 
So Ronnie was willing to sacrifice Blythe and Eiji, her most loyal attendants, to do what she thought was the the best thing for everybody, which is generally seen as a heroic sacrifice. People are like, oh, dude, Ronnie's the best, man. Yeah, it's sad that Blythe and Eiji had died, but like, it needed to happen, bro. I feel like a lot of things needed to happen for what Marika did. Come on, baby. I really want to take you out. You're just really annoying. And I really don't like fighting you because you're always, like, moving away from my thing and then, like, teleporting my face into your freaking axe handle because of your movements and stuff. And you're always, like, clipping and teleporting behind me and such. Lucky. of the dodging behind you and also moving uh, thing. I really think they overuse that with some of these bosses, unfortunately. Literally the greater will's golden boy. But also, dragon cult philosophy was A-OK -okay under Lane Dell, which probably meant that Godon was cool with a lot of atrocities going on for the people who weren't OK under the Golden Order, including, potentially, uh, his uh, siblings. More God and Mo. Though that might have happened later. It's hard to say how old everyone was, right? Like, Godwin could have been young when Moog and Morgoth were uh, put in the sewer. It could have been all he ever knew. It's possible that Marika did that. It is totally possible that Marika was like, Sorry, my children are omen. I must lock them up. But I really don't think she would, because then why would she be friends with Hugh, dude? Or at least trust Hugh with such an important task. Stop running behind you, jerkwad! Uh-oh. It's hard to say. I don't want to say that Godwin was a bad dude either. Like, we really don't know. I just think that it's more than just a coincidence that he was chosen to be assassinated. I don't think that the Night of the Black Knights was YOLO. We just gotta kill somebody, whoever happens to be in town. Bro, like seriously, you're actually killing me. I'm gonna lose. I have to be perfect for the rest of the fight and I'm far from perfect. Black Knives had a beef with him. So the Black Knives were told to do this assassination by other people. So I really don't think it was their choice. It's possible that they were like, I'll help you kill someone as long as it's Godwin, though. Actually, that does make sense. Because they aren't exactly like casual, hired easily, you know? Nobody in the sending who's unambiguously good. There's different levels, though. Because there's definitely characters that we can point to and be like, they are pretty much pure evil. Who's cheesing you from that branch? Real. E.G. and Blythe knew the consequences of Ronnie's path, but I can't, like, I'm, I'm just pointing out the fact that Ronnie did something very similar, but because we get to hear Ronnie talk about it, and she sits there and goes, oh, man, uh, I love Blythe and E.G., man. People are softer on her. For even, like, freaking killing Godwin. You know what? If Marika appeared like Bendrick in Dark Souls 2, I really wonder people would be a little softer on her, too. If we heard her speak sagely, in a, in, a, in the form of a memory and be like, the things I did, I did, okay. I know that I have sinned and I martyr myself for it. Because Vendry was literally a coward who was so scared of his own wife that he ran away from his castle, stripped all his clothes off, 
and hid in a fucking tomb waiting to die. And yet, because he appears and says a couple cool lines and is like, Oh, the light grows as does the shadow. Chandra, I knew what she was all along. People are like, oh, bro, he's so legit, bro. I'm telling you, hearing someone's story from them can change your perspective quite a bit. Hope they get the answers in the DLC. I think we'll get some to some things. But I think we'll get more questions, is the other thing. I can't wait to ask more questions. Dude, your entire shtick is trying to run behind me. You might as well be a host in PvP. You're not creative. You are simply not. Backstab fish, backstab fish, backstab fish, backstab fish. Shut up. You're such a jerk. No one likes you and you probably smell because you're full of corpse wax. Stinky. Stinky. This is going better though. Stinky. You smell bad. And I can't talk about... Really? That was a counter hit. That's fair enough. But really? That much damage? In this economy? In this economy? Let me guess. Spin to win, run behind me, backstab fish. What did I say? Spin to win. It's like I'm psychic. so I can stab it. Aww. Whoops. Not exactly dressed for damage reduction. I beat Godfrey, the ultimate warrior, in a fucking dress made of softness and a fluffy hat. Does it look like I should dress for damage mitigation? It's only honorable. Godfrey took all his clothes off. I took all my clothes off. That came out a little hornier than I intended. I'm not into Godfrey. That would be a fundamental misunderstanding of who I am as a person. I'm not into Godfrey. I'm into Melania. Mesmer. Oh, I'm so glad he's dead. Okay, so we got the... What, what, I don't remember which one. It's probably the, the black blade or something. This one. The Gargoyle's Black Halberd. Bronze Halberd wielded by Valiant Gargoyles, mended with blackened corpse wax, deals holy damage. Such is the mark of those who serve Malekith, the Black Blade. Right outside of Garonk's location. Hmm. Also, interestingly, this one really doesn't aggro to you. Like, you can get around him pretty easily. He's largely chill. And considering the fact you can get here pretty early. Like, the other ones come from the sky to maul you. This one just chills. Unless you get too close to him, go in front of him, etc. Ever play with mods? No. I'm 99% of the time on PlayStation. This is like my first, this is actually my first PlayStation, uh, my first PC playthrough, except for Twitch Rivals, which I played on PC for obvious reasons. We needed to be on PC for that one. Um, so no, no mods. I did install that um, Seamless Co-op, but I didn't actually play Seamless Co-op. I'm not against playing it. I just, you know, the whole point of Seamless Co-op is a co-op. So <laughs> I would try that one. Do like a like a DS2 playthrough style thing. Okay, so we got that guy done. Sync Day is acquired. I think we're ready for Morgoth. Oh wait, the assassinations. These are important. We're gonna do Lane Dell, by the way. No, but really, this is important. Did you do the convergence beta? Oh shit, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, I did do the convergence beta. I'm kind of allergic to mods. I don't really like them very much. Like 
I'll only do them if, like, I really, like, there better be a good goddamn reason. Like, the Dark Souls 1 randomizer, that was really great. That was such phenomenal content. I should find, I wonder if I still have the VODs for that. That was funny. That was a good playthrough. Hi, are you good? Ah, I had hoped you'd soon See, return. we're friends now. I have the reward from Lady Tanith. Take it. It's yours, by right. Let us tread the path of the recusant together till we reach the miserable death that awaits us. Hell yeah, brother. Gelmir's Fury, one of the sorceries developed from the magma of Mount Gelmir, conjures a surge of magma from the earth covering the area. This sorcery is held to represent the fury of the volcano. The arrogance of attempting to harness it is solely that of men and serpents. I love that line. That's Mesmer, 100%. Hello. If you follow this heroic path, one day the Lord will see you. It cannot come a day too soon. <laughs> Ornstein's T posing, Ornstein's everywhere. I wish they were T posing. A lot of the time they just couldn't reach me, but they were definitely after me. Ah, hello. What impeccable timing. Do you have a quest for this me? This is for you. You're new here at the manor, but if you complete the request, you can improve your standing. Relax. We're old friends. Time's come to pass the torch, right? Go on, break a leg then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Padgett's. I love him. Such a mischievous little scamp. So compare Bernal and Patches giving you their, their quests. Like, Bernal's like, join me. He gives you the reward by right. Uh, Patches is like, you're new here. Let me do you a favor, new kid. Do my homework for me. What are the chances there's some Elden Ring game tester out in Japan watching your Lorathon stream? I don't know uh, the statistics, but that'd be pretty sick. I hate how he squats, just lo such low-class behavior. Excuse me? Are you disrespecting Patches? And the Patches squat, so named because he's Patches? Dude, he's chilling. He's squetching. He's, he's squetching? He's stretching out the old hammies. Who are you to disrespect the Lord himself, huh? Huh? Written request from Volcano Manor addressed to Patches, disclosing the name of a tarnish to be hunted, Great Horn Tregoth. He can be found at the ruins strewn precipice. Find the red mark on your map for the exact location. Hey, look at the feet. Imagine Miyazaki watching the stream. Oh man. Okay, so I actually haven't been here, so this is a good time to check this out. Yo, thanks for the follow. Okay, where the heck am I? All right, right over here. So right now we're just doing like a, a handful of things, but you know, housekeeping, more housekeeping, but it's still important. Let's be real. If instead of being a barely human statue after you beat Radagon, Marika was back to her blonde human form with the dumpy and was like, let me stand close my Elden Lord. There would be entire video essays about why she did nothing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's tough because Marik is a figure that we don't talk to and thus we don't get to emotionally connect with her. Everything wrong, it's easy to blame on her, but her motivation for doing it is interesting considering she martyrs herself. She doesn't want this to be the way of the world, but she tries to rectify her mistake. Like Malaketh does. That's the thing. When we look at Malaketh, apologizing for a sin that honestly doesn't seem like one that he really committed. It's something that was done to him, but he takes the penance onto himself. You can really kind of glean some interesting information about Marika herself because the shadows are very similar to their appearance, or at least they take on a similar journey, a similar path. Oh my God, look at the wolves are running.
Oh boy, there's a lot of wolves. Toodles. Never get to the bottom of Marika's reasoning, but I think it's there. Like, there's hints of it. We can never know for sure. But even with what Gwyn, why Gwyn did what he did, it depends on who's telling the story. Some people argue that Gwyn was heroic and he wanted to prevent the light from ever fading and he sacrificed himself so the flame would never die. And others see him, like me, see him as a coward. Who fucked up the world and then instead of dealing with it and allowing it to go back to rights, decided to break it further. Also, thanks for the 100 bits, but you're absolutely right. I am with you. If we got to talk to her even a little bit, I think people would be... Because it would be easier to read her... her What she did and why, but I feel like the fact that we don't know is part of the reason she's so intriguing. The less we know, the better. In my opinion. That's why I hope that Mikola doesn't talk to us either. I think Mikola is only interesting because we don't get to talk to him. Never meet your heroes. There should be a Patches Festival? Is it a Patches- is a Patches Festival that everyone shows up and then they just leave? Because... I don't know, someone could get hurt? Hello, stinky juice boxes. Okay, I deserve that. need to do that. I just wanted to. Two years ago, I kept calling runes souls. I still do, unapologetically. Souls is easier to say. It's quicker. <laughs> Nido is pretty cool, too. Part of the beauty of FromSoft games, though, is the ambiguity, for sure. Like, the idea that we can still sit there and debate why someone did what they did. Even with Gwyn, even though we know why Gwyn did what he did, why he did it in terms of the true motivation can still be discussed and argued about. You know, it does seem like the least corrupt of the First Lords in Dark Souls. But what about the the pygmy? So easily forgotten. Grace bonfires? Yeah, I mean the thing is Grace. It's not hard to say by any means, but sites of Grace versus bonfire? You know? I st I think in Bloodborne I even still say bonfire. I might say lan no, I think I say lantern in Bloodborne. I think it depends on the day. This glintstone is kind of interesting, isn't it? I don't think we see this anywhere else. It's like poison. And don't we get a serpent greatsword here? We gotta pick that up and read it. Gwyn, Gwyn was afraid of the abyss, was out of selfish reasons or altruism, like he's a martyr, is still not known. Yeah, and even then, um, he was scared of the abyss, but he was also not even the abyss, because the dark and the abyss are different. He was scared of the dark. He did not want there to be a natural like life cycle of light and dark. He didn't want to have to live as weak. He didn't want others to be dominant over him because if there was an age of dark, it would be the age of humans, of humanity. And Gwyn hated humans. So he decided to artificially prolong the age of the gods. And yes, he sacrificed himself to do it, but that was considered the first sin. In other words, not a very good thing to do. And the distorted cycle of Dark Souls 1 can be traced back to that moment. So it's hard to see him as any... And not to mention, then he has, has to ask humans who he and pretty much everyone else look down upon to link the flame. Um, Kieran talks about you quite negatively when you talk to her because you're a human. 
she has pretty negative opinions of humans. Giants, too. The um, people like Gwyn didn't like giants. Goff was an exception, but he was mistreated by his peers because he was a giant. Humans, similarly. Whatever Kieran and Artorius and Smo were, Ornstein as well, Smo wasn't a knight, but the pe those people, those large, larger than life figures, they were not human. They weren't gods, but they weren't human. So no, it's really fascinating. It, it's I know it sounds like I'm going off topic, but the motivations of the previous rulers of the, of the games are really interesting to look into because Marika, they're all unique. One really interesting thing about Marika is she actually faces her mistake. None of the others do, ever. So she's particularly intriguing because unlike that, the others who fled from their errors and their sins, she wanted to undo it. Or at least rectify it. Falca is who made Gwyn sacrifice himself? What do you mean? Seath is bad, though. Seath is pretty unequivocally bad. And that's the other thing. Gwyn loved Seath. Like, they were incredibly close. He gave him free reign to... Well, okay, to be fair, the, the whole experimenting on maidens and weird experiments was likely after Gwyn, like, when he went more crazy. But, I mean, dragon, he was a dragon and he allowed his own people to be genocided because he was jealous of them. And that's the type of people that Gwyn decided was his most loyal confidant. You know, it says a lot. This is really interesting. Have we seen similar iconography to this? I don't think so. It's really easy to forget, but these gems, these particular glintstones are unique. It looks like they've absorbed the poison around here. No, 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 no. Gwyn was very... Okay, there's there's a word um, that... I, th I think they use the term confidant, but no, they were close personally. Um, Gwyn gave Seath a portion of his soul, made, made him a duke, and gave him the archives. There's a, there's a word they use. and In English, I think they use confidant. I'm not certain. It's been a long time. But in in JP, they use a word that basically means like super, super, super close, like bro like brothers. It was more than alliance. It was personal. Personally, I definitely I, like. I don't ship it because I'm like, oh, that's hot. I just ship it because like, I think that might be where Priscilla came from. He's the only character that has a relationship with the uh, Seath, after all. Do you hear the eerie whispering around here? I don't remember this particular statue. Not Guinevere? I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie to you. The only reason people think that Guinevere and Seath hooked up is because Guinevere exists. I'm not joking. The only other link is that her maidens, two of her maidens, are there, um, having been transformed to be Sokka's. But that just means that he was after any maiden. I, I, it might be why she fled Ain Orlando because of him. But it doesn't mean that she had anything to do with with Seath. He's li she's literally the only woman around. So people are like, well, obviously she's got to be Priscilla's mother. And it's like Jesus Christ, <laughs> like genuinely. People are very close-minded. They're like, like, it's a little bit like in this game how. People keep saying, this person's a glow my queen, this person's a glow my queen, this person's a glow my queen, because like we just need a woman around to be like, this, it must be her, you know? <laughs> you know? It needs to be someone we've seen! So, Jess, the Seath and Guinevere were together some degree? I hard disagree. I've seen no evidence of it. The only evidence I've seen is the fact that her maidens are there. And if you ask me, that's probably why she simply fled. Thinking it was a Valka, Priscilla is a feathery look to her. Child of a dragon, the goddess of sin. The thing is, I really wonder... Like, it could be. The feathery appearance, like, I see, but it looks more like... The, the feathers are more like scales, so that would be the seath link. Velka statue is holding a child who seems like a little girl. Where's the where's the Velka? I don't think this is a Velka situation. To be fair, she lives. Priscilla was thrust into the land 
uh, where all of Velka's creatures are, uh, every item associated with her, a bunch of other abominations, things that Gwyn would be scared of were put in there. Turtleneck meat in the lands between and help repopulate it? They took out that item description. The fact that turtleneck meat makes people horny doesn't... isn't real anymore. But sounds... Fancy says with Gwendolyn? Gwendolyn was pretty cursed. Hence the snake parts! Now we get a little hint as to where we are. Dark Souls lore talks, maybe look forward to that lore -thon? Yeah, no, for sure. I'm, I feel the exact same way. I'm so excited for Dark Souls 1. And Dia's one's next, yes. I actually kind of didn't realize that this particular glintstone is quite unique. Oh my lord. Also, the Vulgar Militia's here. So the Vulgar Militia are, uh, well, they're, they're working with Malaketh, or sorry, Garonk. Hence why they use his sorceries. Wait, I forgot to read all of his... They're not sorceries, they're incantations, sorry. But I forgot to read them all. That's huge, let's read them. Darkness. Ah, this is what it was. Oh my god, okay. Um, I kept saying there was a lore description last stream that the confessors uh, were, went against the two fingers, or like, guidance, really. Um, and I couldn't remember what it was. It's this item. The assassins were themselves once tarnished who had strayed from guidance, and they pursued their duty in the darkness that is without grace. So they hunt other tarnished who, who also stray from the path. It's pretty interesting. Fallout 3 really part of Lorathon. I really do like Fallout 3. Oh, dang. Way at the start of stream. Someone asked me about the Fallout show. I'm, I'm still watching it. I don't know. I don't remember what episode I'm on. I think like 3 or something. It seems really good so far. I'm, I'm impressed by it. It's funnier than I thought. I was really worried about that. Really violent, but I mean like bloody mess perk. Am I right? Okay, so I don't remember what order we got them in. I think Beastial Sling was first, but we'll read them all. Who cares? It's interesting that they come... They're, they're in the same category as the Black Flame incantations, but I guess it's not unusual considering this was the previous owner of the Rune of Death and this is the current holder of the Rune of Death. Beast Claw. Incantation taught by Garonk, the Beast Clergyman. Creates Beast Claws that rend the land with shockwaves. This incantation represents the fury of Garonk, his bestial nature returned as much as it does his restless agitation. Oops. Bestial Sling. Swiftly flings a number of sharp rock shards. It is said that in the time before the Erd Tree, stones were the first weapons of the beasts who had gained intelligence. Stones were the, probably the first tools used by like ancient primates and stuff. They like took a stone and used it as tools. It was pretty interesting. Stone of Garonk, superior incantation taught by Garonk, the beast clergyman, hurls a boulder before the caster. Long ago, Garonk was a beast of such terrifying ferocity that his former name meant Death of the Demigods. Incantation taught by Garonk, the beast clergyman, fills the body with bestial vigor, restoring HP over a period of time. Having gained intelligence, the beasts must have felt how their wildness slipped away as civilization took hold. I will say, his- the rune that he uses, like, it's very- it's, it looks like a cracked oval? It's hard to see. Um, I might be able to cast some of these, though. They're just faith, so I should be able to. Let's take a look. Once we get to a bonfire again, I guess. Follow humor violence and the world were captured perfectly. I agree. The one thing, I'm not sure how it's going yet. Oh, and I love the ghoul character. Really good. Oh, actually, ah, oh, I love all the characters so far. I clocked Maximus so fast. I was like, this man's a psycho. 
He's acted so well. Oh man, I'm not gonna talk about it because spoilers and it's new and such, but I'm very, very, very intrigued. It's real good. Whoops. She's one of the most iconic bosses because she's so insanely difficult. Yeah, there's always got to be like a really cool lady boss who uses a katana very delicately with a dancing motion in FromSoft games. It's true. Maybe not a katana, but it's often a katana. <laughs> oh, you can hear this lady singing. Yes, the Dex Queen. Emma and Sekiro. Uh, Lady Butterfly a little bit too, but you know, uh, Emma also. The... Melania, Maria. I think probably Priscilla in one. Ancient dragons are basically the dinosaurs, the Elder Ring Unifors? Kind of, but not quite because the dragons exist in tandem. But I see what you're saying. Yeah, the idea that the beasts were given, but the really interesting about the beasts, we just got confirmation from the lore here again, that they were granted intelligence. I mean, someone else gave it to them. Maybe they're God. Frida? Frida. Frida too. Frida definitely, definitely. Lady Butterfly is so underrated. I love her fight. Dude, literally, she's the coolest because... Oh, it doesn't do any status. It just hurts. Oh. Holy shit. She just screams in your face real loud. She does it again. It's really hard. Now, when you talk to Lady... It's been a long time since I played Sekiro. More... Longer than the other games. But the thing about Lady Butterfly is basically Sekiro goes, so it was you. And then she says, yep. And then she, he goes... I think he goes, like, why or something? And she just goes, because... And then you fight. And that's it. And it's like the... Like... She's just like, yeah. I had to do it. No, Frida is definitely the, the lady, the equivalent. She's very much equivalent to Maria. So that's definitely her... I'm playing it right now on, like, who it is in DS2, but DS2 kind of has a lot of cool queens. You could argue Nishandra, but it's not the dancing motion. She's not even that good at combat, either. That's why she doesn't fight you until the end. It's a little stupid of her to fight you in the first place. Yeah, she's literally the definition of refuses to elaborate. She's really sick. Also, as much as I love Emma and all the other, like, you know, dex queens, it's really cool to have a character who's like just straight up a super badass old lady. Because when it comes to FromSoft games, we got a lot of super badass old dudes, but not a lot of super badass old ladies, and I appreciate that. Especially since if you want to ask someone who's the first boss that made them want to rage in Sekiro, a lot of them will probably say Lady Butterfly. She's quite a wall at first. Oh, an Ayer! Ayer counts too, but she's more like a level up lady. <laughs> All right, there it is, okay. Old lady who's so done with everything and kicks everyone's ass and also has like cool butterflies. Throne watcher? Throne watcher is in the next lady. It's definitely a concept they expanded upon later because even Priscilla like doesn't quite fit the vibe. I wish my first time playing Sekiro was on stream, but I played it way before I started streaming, so I probably would have had a similar reaction. Oh yeah, what it was, you know. Butterfly was my get good fight in Sekiro. Yeah, for sure. The Serpent God's Curved Sword. Neato. 
You saw Needle Wrath, it's the Serpent God. I don't remember where it is. Because there's so freaking many. See, the thing is, it's like, is it a great sword? Oh, no, it's a great curved sword. It's a great curved sword. I remember, I remember, I remember, I remember. That's a curved sword. We need the great curved swords, which are. Maybe it's not a great curved sword. Maybe it's a regular curved. It's gotta be a great curved sword. Where are the great curved swords? <laughs> hey, no, it's not a great curved sword. Or a curved great sword. Oh my god. Wait, where did I get that? When did I, oh, I forgot to read the Serpent Bone Blade. When did I get this? Shit, chat, when, where did I get this? Did I get this from the Volcano Manor? Because I think I did. Found some of your old Sekiro playthrough videos from way back? Yeah, that was my... Okay, so I streamed it um, way back when, but it wasn't my first... As you probably saw in the, in the playthrough, it wasn't my first playthrough because I played it off stream. So I was like replaying it, but it was a long time, so I didn't remember it. So yeah. When assassinations... Okay, so this is really huge because you get this from the Volcano Manor. Sinister katana modeled after a serpent bone. The densely packed row of spines that jut away from the cutting edge are coated in a lethal poison. This definitely is something they kind of co-opted. This, this isn't theirs. I'm almost certain. Okay, let me do that stupid thing where you... Oh my god, I hate this. Oh, Lady shit. Lady Butterfly Backless. walked so that Melania could kick our assess with butterflies. Rap respectfully. It is a curved sword. I thought it was a curved great sword. Well, that's my bad getting all confused. It's got coils. Very neat. Curved sword fashioned in the image of an ancient serpent deity and tool of a forgotten religion practice on Mount Galmir. Oh boy! More confirmation that there is indeed a forgotten religion. It must be of the hexes, the ones that um, our boy rediscovered. Riker rediscovered. Oh my god! Oh, that's so sick! Oh, I love when you like put things together anew and then you manage to find things that bring it even more. Ah, oh, it's so cool. Formerly used to offer up sacrifices. This sword restores HP upon slaying an enemy. So cool. Um, it's mainly strength scaling, which makes sense, but kind of a pity because I was thinking of using it, but it eh, doesn't fit with what I'm working. Well, maybe. Nah. Zenaida? I'm not familiar with uh, Armored Core. as uh, Only six, but yeah, no, I'm sure there's other figures that fit the lore. Also, I think, okay, I shouldn't talk about this. I just, I've, okay, I've heard a little bit about Armored Core here or there, but I think it could be like spoiler stuff. Um, I just seen like a lot of people talking about this one AC that like is from the older games and is really cool and people like the design or something. But anyway, it can be infused. <sighs> yeah, but this is like a lot of work. Well, but I think it's been a hundred bits as well. Give me one second, I'll be right back. I'm just going to use the restroom and also pet my cat who's napping over there now. Did you have fun running around everywhere and being an absolute menace? And now it's sleepy time? <laughs> okay, I'll be right back.
Hi, hello. I am sleepy today. Not like bad sleepy. I'm just comfy. You know, I ate a lot of food today. Not really. I just had. Well, I had some chicken. It was really good. Oh, my lights went out. I knew something was different. Bluetooth mode. There we go. All right. Back to it. So I want to get this done, and then I swear we're going to do the rest of Lindell. We did most of Lindell, really. We did, like, Underground and everything. We're going to defeat Morgoth, is what I'm saying. Oh, I want to take a look at this. Um, It's red, isn't it? It's not tarnished, is it? It could be. It looks a little old, but... That's the wrong button. It could be the blood of sacrifices giving it that hue. Doesn't outright say that it's bloodied, but it was used to sacrifice people. So, like, sacrifice to, like, a giant serpent? Some sort of god serpent, presumably? That's interesting. And then once again, we see the coiling around the handle. And at the base as well. Looks like two serpents coiling. Hard to say what the serpent represented, then. Maybe there was more serpents. Deliberate pick your gear for this character to just look like Mesmer's wife? Yeah. Except for GF. I don't know if I'm ready for that level of commitment yet. Oh my god. I forgot how to get down. One second. <laughs> Typical cat behavior. I, I came up here and now I don't know how to get down. How it's calculated percent? I don't know. It's not really math. It's just like a random... <laughs> Just you get to ask Nightbot. <laughs> Velvet Room Persona 5, which I did play. I think it's always a little different. No, wait, no. The the Velvet Room song, I think is I think is the same. Actually, you're right. You're right. It's just been a while since I played five. I still didn't beat it. I kind of want to play Royal though. I haven't finished Persona 3 Reload either. I've I've been too into Stardew Valley again. I can only play one game at a time. Hello, lady. This lady wears a hat and uses sorcery on you. I want to keep this hat in mind. Hat is probably not the right term. Headdress? Headdress? Hesitant for commitment? Well, I just need to know what he's like first, you know? My instincts tend to be good, though. I love Melania from the moment I saw her. Oh, no. Whoop. Didn't mean to do that. What other lore piques your interest? Uh, the thing is, there's not a lot of lore. There is, like, a lot of lore in games, but I like the way that this game... Oh, it's so cool how they respawn that you can listen. Um, I don't know, it's not a lot of games do this type of storytelling method that invites so much potential for discussion. Like, I like other lore. I got really into, it's funny, uh, way back in the day with like World at War and stuff, COD, COD 5 and stuff, the zombies lore it used to actually be really interesting. There was some really cool hidden stuff and Easter eggs and references and stuff. It was very mysterious at the time. And then we have, um... Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight is a very similar storytelling method. And I like Elder Scrolls quite a bit, but the thing is, like, the story and the lore is there, but it's not like this game. So it's it's not quite the same, but I still find it very intriguing, for sure. A um, little bit about Godfrey showing up in front of the Earth Tree for the final boss of the game, why he was there. He's the first Tarnished, so he's come back to follow the what Marika wanted, the Tarnished to come back and take on their mantle of Elden Lord. He's doing exactly what we're doing, except we beat him. And uh, it is only the strongest who can go on, so we are, he's not the strongest anymore. His guidance of grace is leading him to you. He's waiting for you. 
visited Prawn Boyle, dude? You can summon him? You sure can. I have visited him, though. He's simply dead because he also got visited from my boy, Dung Eater. Hi, Tregoth! I'm gonna kill you in a second, but first help me with this boss, okay? Might be like, Graf, why are you summoning him so that for the boss? Because I think, honestly, it's gonna be really funny to, like, summon him and then kill him after. I, that amuses me a little bit. It's not because I need help, I just really think it would be funny. Is this Makar? Yep. I always remember his name. You might be like, Rob, you fucking remember no one's name in this game, but you remember this dingus dragon's name? I do, because he's got the same name as one of the little tree guys from Wind Waker. And I'd be like, Rob, how do you know a little tree guy from Wind Waker? Didn't you not play Wind Waker? I didn't, but I watched one of my friends play just a little bit of it when I was over at their house one time. And they were they were at this tree thing, and there was this little this little this little seed guy whose name was Makar, and I was like, <laughs> and I still remember that, and that's all I know about Wind Waker. I know you ride a boat a lot, or something. There's like a lot of ocean, and there's like some little cutie patootie named Makar. That's it. Do you have green eyes? Can you come back here? It's really hard to tell because they're moving, but it almost looks like their hand, their eye is half gold, half blue or green or something. Oh, and now we enter phase two and it's fighting on its back legs and using its sword more traditionally like a human warrior. We've talked about the magma worms, so I'm not gonna get into them too much. Makar is my favorite Zelda character, and he's really cute, I still remember. Yeah, we'll get into Godfrey. I just haven't uh, fought him yet, obviously. We're still at Morgoth, but we will get into him when we get there. Failed Dragon? Yup. What's really interesting about the dragon, the dragon heart eaters in this game First of all, they're eating dragon hearts rather than collecting dragon scales as it is in previous titles, because the previous titles have a concept of transforming into a dragon as well. And it's really interestingly done in that one. Yeah, do you see the eye? It is gold, and then at the bottom is a ring of what looks like a, like turquoise. Yeah, you can see it. That's so cool. Could be the gold eyes of the dragon, but then the blue eyes of the human or something? I don't know. That's pretty notable, though. Magma Worm Scale Sword. Bye, Trigaw. Thank you. Yeah, in this game, they eat dragon hearts, not to become dragons, but to become like dragons. They want to channel the strength of the dragons, but as a result, they become cursed to be... Yeah, here we go. It is said that these land-bound dragons were once human heroes who partook in dragon communion, a grave transgression for which they were cursed to crawl the earth upon their bellies, shadows of their former selves. The shape resembles a dragon's jaw and is covered in hard scales. So, they didn't necessarily want to become dragons, but they nonetheless were punished for it. It's pretty interesting because in the previous titles, the goal is literally to transform into a dragon and become like a dragon, and there's different methods, but it largely um, comes from collecting dragon scales because the scales are the source of a dragon's immortality. Still pretty dope, though. The thing is, they've become bestial. They're ugly, misshapen. They crawl upon the earth on their bellies. They, um, they don't have intelligence. And apparently they were human heroes, and they're no longer very heroic. Right? 
I agree, they look really cool, but within the lore, they're being punished for what they've done. They no longer have the strength of dragons in the traditional sense, and instead have this primal magma sorcery. Not sorcery. Vike was halfway there. A little different, because he basically had permission from the dragons to wield their lightning. Not their strength. It's a little different. Also, Dragon Communion is eating dragon hearts. The ancient dragons probably wouldn't be very cool with this. It's pretty interesting, actually. Come on. Oh my god, Trogoth, you're being such a goober. Oh, dang, that was a good roll catch. Or not even a roll, just you freaking caught me, brother. Good job. Yeah, the spewing of the magma, the magma is clearly a very primal force. It's still strength, but it's not exactly what they intended. And it seems to be an inevitable curse. Also, I think it's Yura who suggests that the, the hunger for dragon hearts gets worse. Like they, they develop a hunger, sort of like uh, Malaketh with his uh, death root hunger, right? Okay, and then we get the bull goats at. Greathorn Tragoth's helm, adorned with a gold bull goat motif, provides high poise. Tragoth is a famed knight of assistance. Countless tarnished, facing adversity in the lands between, have survived thanks only to the Great Horned One's aid. And we took him out. We're basically trying to weaken the tarnished as a whole so that we can, you know, as a recusant, gain more strength. So our goal is to take on powerful targets and gain their strength, and thus Rikard can consume us, because we have acquired the strength of these powerful heroes, and then are able to do it, um, give it to Rikard directly without him having to go out and eat him. Also, I wanted to get the Candle Tree Shield, which apparently is in Sage's Cave, and I did not get, so let's go pick that up. We've been everywhere else here, so I don't even ride the light. I don't need to ride the elevator. Killing Tragoth for the Lava ca Candle Whip? Not for the whip, for uh, for the lore. I want to progress the quest line and get all the dialogue from everybody. So that is the reward, but that's not why I'm doing it. Okay. I'm looking for the Candle Tree Shield. And I've been here and fought both the bosses. Wait, did I fight both the bosses? Wait, did I fight the Black Knife? I might not have. Did I? Oh no, I don't remember. It's kind of a pyramid scheme, except, like, it's a little bit like Godfrey's MO, a crown, a uh, strength befits a crown. Um, if Riker defeats you, then you feed him. But if you defeat Riker, Tanith is obviously upset when Riker dies because she wasn't expecting that. But she doesn't go, "You traitor! You killed him!" She just goes, "Okay, uh, I'll, I'll just, I'll handle this." You know. Obviously, the situation by her standards is pretty much fine, even if you do that. So it's less like a pyramid scheme. It, it's a little twisted for sure. But they have their own code, and we followed the code. But then she eats him? Yeah, so that she can, he can come back to life and he can find purchase within her just as he found purchase within the, the god devouring serpent. Yeah, so it's all fine. Sage's cave? Yeah, I'm in Sage's cave, but I don't know where the candle tree shield is. So I, I thought I finished this whole place. Is that the how to train your dragon character? I thought of a joke, but I think it could be misconstrued as loot, so I'm not going to respond. <laughs> I would never be loot. I don't know where it is. I really thought I did everything in here. Killing everything for the lore? I mean, not yet, but kind of. Okay, so this is the dingus number uro. Uro? Uno? Numero uno. 
<laughs> Doing a Fia with trying to eat Rikard? The thing is, presumably, if Tanith eats them, then he would simply sort of, like, reform? I don't know. Oh, shit, I'm going in circles. Am I going in circles? Oh, no. I fought both the bosses in here because I can teleport, so that's clearly good. So this is the one... That, is this... Yeah, no, no, no. I, where's the black knife, then? I think it's behind a wall. No, this is the one that's behind a wall. Yeah, this is illusory. You jump down here, and you gotta... Oh, wait, over here? Aha! There we go. Wait, I've been here. Have I? Oh, no. <laughs> wait, no, this is this one. This is where you fight the black knife. It's the water. Are we sure it's in here? Lucy wall here somewhere further up? Oh, man. Where's further up? Might have to teleport back to the start. And we redo this whole thing. Yeah, I fought both bosses here. I just went to both arenas. They're both done. Got that one. Then eating is like a Kudoku or Fuko spell? I'm not familiar with that. Also, once again, uh, Rikard is a boss that talks to you after you kill him. So, like, the death is sort of... Oh, it's gotta be this. The one with the two flames framing the illusory wall. I wonder if it could be here, in fact. Whoa, did you see that? He parkoured. Even in death. Oh my god, Jesus, how many boys are there behind this wall? <laughs> oh my god, I missed a lot of things, huh? Whoops. Silver pickle, foul, foul, silver pickle, foul foot. Black hood. Oh my god, this is... Wait, did I not get the... Oh, neat. Okay, okay, okay. Hang on a second. Silver pickled fowl foot, first of all. Let's reread it. I know we've read it before, but... Four-toed foot of a fowl pickled in a silvery medicinal solution. Temporarily boosts item discovery. Since old times, the needy would scrape the meat clean even from a fowl's claw. So item discovery is linked to arcane, so it kind of like boosts your arcane. It, it doesn't necessarily boost the stat, but it boosts something else, right? Um, like the concept, it's supposed to sort of pseudo boost your arcane. Uh, then we got the nascent butterfly, of course, linked to Mikola. In a chest here, so someone stored it hidden away as a, as a treasure. I found this on the first playthrough. I just forgot about this uh, room. Hood of lusterless black fabric that conceals its wearer identity. In this world, there is very little that must necessarily be known. And then the candle tree wooden shields. A tall, medium-sized wooden shield, light for its size and easy to handle. Thought to represent a surreptitious prophecy of cardinal sin, the lit candle tree design was forbidden. So this is the candle tree symbol. Roots at the bottom. Roots, but also potentially five fingers? I mean, clearly they're, you know roots right but there is a sort of remnant like it does look vaguely like a hand besides that really long one um then of course the candle tree it represents it's shaped like the crucible i don't have Solaria's spear yet do i i forgot to fight Solaria. that's another thing we got to do and then we fight more guys where this time it's just like this is really 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 important stuff Mm -hmm. We need it because I need to be able to show pictures. Okay. 
So it represents a forbidden prophecy. And it's basically a tree that is a candle, a lit up tree. Considering the iconography everywhere in Rikers with lots of candles, it's pretty interesting too. Symbolize a burning tree. Oh, it does, it does. But I'm just saying that the tree that it's burnt, that is burning, it does look like the crucible specifically. That upturned um, candle-like look is basically supposed to depict the earth tree. Uh, sorry, the, the crucible, not the earth tree. You might recognize it from this spear, which is why I'm here. Oh, that was a terrible roll. That was my bad. Rookie mistake. But yeah, that's why I'm getting this. This is very important because this weapon is how it's said to be modeled after the Crucible. Her helmet, the same thing. Okay, my inputs got a little cute there, but so far so good. Oh my god. Cooked her. Celeria's tree. It's a great spear. Celeria's tree, weapon of one of the two honored as foremost among the Crucible Knights. The primordial form of the earth tree is close in nature to life itself, and this spear, modeled on its crucible, is imbued with ancient holy essence. Primordial form of the earth tree. Depiction of cardinal sin. Primordial form of the earth tree. Depiction of cardinal sin. Neat, right? A little heavy, though. Holding all this sin. Because <laughs> the Erd tree, when it's depicted, tends to look a little bit more like we actually see it. Like... Uh, Erd tree incantation. So you can see here, it's still got like branches that go up and out, but they don't curve upward, not the same way. This, you can see this is would be a depiction of the earth tree in the background there with the roots spread out everywhere, but not the curved upward. It's very distinctive. Doesn't mean it isn't the earth tree. It just means it's like a different form of it, very notably. And then we get Solaria's full drip. Very conveniently close by. Inuyasha is how Naraku makes bodies sometimes. I, I am familiar with Inuyasha, but I haven't seen it in a really, really long time. So I'll keep that in mind. That's really intriguing. Thanks for that. I just... I miss Inuyasha. I still remember all the names of the characters. I love Songo and Kilala. They were my fave, but... Okay. Helm of the Crucible Knights who serve Godfrey, the first Elden Lord. The great tree ornamentation is the Knight Solaria's mark, displayed also by your men. Holds the power of the Crucible of Life, the primordial form of the Erd Tree. Strengthens aspects of the Crucible incantations. Once again, the curved upward. And they are horns, for sure. Um, also interesting, once again, that the, this is supposed to be like a holy depiction. The Crucible, uh, Solaria's tree spear is literally said to be a tree. It does um, holy damage as well. It is It scales with strength and faith. It is a faith weapon and faith in the tree. And it's depicted by Siluria with horns. Yet another suggestion that the idea of the omen is not necessarily that they are cursed by their birth, that there's nothing inherently wrong with them. It's just that they are perceived that way and thus it became real. Lord of the Scribes said the Erd Tree came about. Nothing outright, but the Erd Tree seems to have uh, taken over and taken on this form. People describe it as like parasitic. I think that's a fair assessment. The Erd Tree became the center of Marika's order. We don't need to do any more. I just want to grab that way in the area, but time to go. We're not going to do the, the um, 
this guy. The wandering mausoleum is just unnecessary. Oh boy. Hello. You know what? I did deserve that. Is he stupid? <laughs> I've never seen him do that! <laughs> Alright, keep at it, buddy. Yep. Do you think you can teleport back up here? <laughs> Got a lot of dingus is following the gravity damage, huh? Although he lived, so he's like stronger than most. Oh, oh, you pull him with the bow back out. Okay. That worked really well for you. Oh, look at him go. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, bro. Chill. If you won't chill, then cook. Interesting that their arrows are coiled as well. You see the arrows sticking out of me? Looks more like a spear than an arrow. That would do immense damage. It drills into your skin, causing heavy bleeding. I don't think it actually does bleeding, but like IRL, it sure would. Okay, I got the Mausoleum Night Greaves, which is actually kind of neat. Don't think I have those. <laughs> Greaves worn by headless knights who endlessly guard the wandering mausoleum. Time has yet to dull their luster. The meteor bolts? Uh, like an arrow? Let's take a look. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not quite the same. These are very delicate. That was like a like a drill. Oh, I was gonna peek at you. He's shy. All right, that's it. That's all I want to do here. More god time. What the? He got too close, now he's mad at me. Please just let me travel. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that's Mausoleum Knight, Siluria, the Sin. Yeah, honestly, I might get a couple levels here just to use up my souls. No reason not to. I think I'm gonna level up Int. It's not gonna help, like, fighting, but I'm gonna need a little bit more intelligence in order to uh, to get, to use Law of Regression and complete and continue Golmath's questline. Dirty Peeper, have you no honor? I, I watched this playthrough of this, like, indie game. Uh, I, I say indie, not an indie game, like a, like an old RPG maker game. Um, and one of the characters was like obsessed with eyes and he wanted to take someone else's eyes and he kept calling them peepers. He was like, oh, I love your peepers. Look at your beautiful peepers. And I, I was like, this is the most disturbing. I never want to hear that word again. Um, anyway, thank you for reminding me about that. That's all. Not really lore for this game, but we got the guardian's garb in full bloom. Yo, this is sick actually. This is a chance drop if I'm not mistaken. Guardian garb, full bloom. Engraved golden garb worn by the guardians of the minor earth trees. Raises the HP recovery effect of the Flask of Crimson Tears, but greatly lowers fire damage negation. It is said that the blood red flowers blooming on their backs mark the senescence of their ancient pact. Perhaps the guardians are part tree already. Oh my god, I forgot how intriguing that lore is. So, flowers, trees bloom. If they're fruit trees, anyway. I don't think any other trees bloom. Because the flower, when pollinated, is what becomes a fruit. So I think only... Well, then again, sakura, cherry blossoms, bloom. That's interesting. I mean, they do heavily lower their fire damage negation. They've definitely become part three. So they made a pact to protect the trees. Keepers Creepers was it? No, it was uh, it was called Angels of Death. This really neat RPG maker horror game. I actually quite enjoyed it. 
uh, I just watched it. I didn't play. I, I love watching people play horror games that I'm not going to play. It wasn't even scary. It wasn't even like, oh, it's so scary I can't play it. I just was like, it's just more entertaining to just watch while I'm doing other games or whatever. Also, trees bloom and produce fruit, just not fruit that we would eat. Yeah, magnolias bloom, now that you mention. I don't think magnolia pr uh, bear fruit. Do cherry blossoms bear any fruit? Like even, I'm not even talking about edible, but like anything that, like anything resembling fruit. Cause I thought it was only flowering things. Cherry blossoms produce cherries? Oh, I don't ever put that together actually. In fact, I might've. Did I know that? I don't know if I knew that. you mentioned it. I used to have a cherry tree when I was a kid like like it wasn't a cherry blossom but when I was a kid my at my old house my well, it was my parents but like I was a kid so like I guess it's my house too um had a cherry tree and I love that thing it was so adorable and wonderful and it would give us lovely cherries and I do remember it blossoming in white blooms and when I was in Japan the cherry blossoms um there was like a full spectrum between like pink to white like some were very pink and some were very white it's pretty interesting I managed to go during cherry blossom season one year. Oh man, the pictures I took. I freaking love cherry blossoms. I love pink and pink trees, like hello. Kyoto is gorgeous. Oh my god, I know. I mainly was in was in Tokyo. I did go to Kyoto briefly, but oh my god. I've got the Guardian Greaves. Sorry, I'm trying to I'm trying to find them in here, but like I think we're gonna have to pull the Yep. Oh my god, I don't, have I gotten these pants before? I don't think I've gotten these pants before. In accordance with an ancient pact with the earth tree, it is said that their deaths led not to destruction, but instead to renewed eternal life as guardians. So you can live forever as long as you serve me, type dealio, huh? Interesting. Cherry balsam trees are bred for flowers, though, not the fruit. Mm-hmm. I wonder about magnolias, though. Does anyone know about magnolias? Because, like, I know there's lots of flowering trees. These ones are not as bloomed as the one that we acquired the garb from. Like, these only have a couple blooms. Sorry about your ancient pack. No, I wanted to look at your body. They all fell, dude. I wanted to look at their corpses. <laughs> oh well. I have one in my back garden. Pretty flowers though. Blooms a few times a year. That's awesome. I love my nullies. They're beautiful. They produce fruit, but I don't believe it's edible. That that would that would do it too. You're alive, come here. Wait, stay, stay in the corner, stay in the corner. Yeah, 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 okay. So they wear masks. I don't think we have the guardian mask. I don't know if it's a chance drop or what, but they don't really sound very human anymore. But then again, like, uh, like they said, they become part tree. So that's the one weakness of trees. They can't really do anything. They need other people to defend them because they're trees. Hello. Their hair does look rather root-like, doesn't it, as well? It's as if their hair is transformed along with them, but we don't see their faces. We just see what's jutting out of their bodies. This one is just a bud. It hasn't even bloomed. Ever seen peach blossoms? I don't know. I, you know what? I actually really, really want to go during magnolia, not magnolia, uh, wisteria season. That blooms, I think, in the summer. I don't remember, but like, God, wisteria are also beautiful. There's some really, really old uh, wisteria trees in Japan that are just like massive, so they're blooming all over the place. Not a very good guardian, huh? 
It's interesting though, they protect minor earth trees, but they're gazing at the er at the main earth tree, and these are still roots and of probably another minor earth tree that has like grown into the land. Oh! I say we're gonna fight uh, Morgoth, but I kind of forgot about uh, Goldfree over here. Was that an Erdtree incantation that was cast on the ground? I, I thought I saw the Erdtree symbol. So, a lot of people have different theories as to why Godfrey shows up here. Um, some people think Morgoth conjured him as like a, like a final defense, right? Because he has the illusory gold color that Morgoth is known for. I personally read it as a remembrance of Godfrey from the Erdtree. Sirach is absent, of course. Nor does he speak, and he basically has the Phase 1 Godfrey moveset. Only. Exclusively. He never goes back to his bestial form as Oralu. It's possible it's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. But this might be a sign of the Earth Tree itself maybe defending itself, maybe simply um, protecting protecting itself from you, but then again, Morgoth is the one who really wants to protect the tree. But personally, I read this as a remembrance. Because if I'm not mistaken, do we, we don't get, do, okay, when we get the remembrance, is it the remembrance of Godfrey, first Elden Lord, or is it the remembrance of Boralu? Whoops. I think it's Godfrey. Small withered bag knitted by hand bestowed upon the ruling lord or those attempting to become lord by the elderly finger reader. And then, once we defeat this illusory Godfrey, we encounter all the dead f finger readers. So they created them, they knitted these talisman pouches. It's remembrance of Horalu, which means the remembrance of Godfrey is already hewn into the earth tree because he died. That suggests to me that this is the Earth Tree. It could also be tending, uh, not tending, um, testing you, testing you. You know, like the final test before you're allowed to approach it. Morgot has other ideas, but still. Doesn't spam shockwaves here either? Uh, yeah, yeah, he doesn't use his full moveset. You're right, absolutely. But generally, it's like a simplified version of him, yeah. I don't know which one to use. I've been using three for or for so long now. I don't know which one's good. Maybe just something that increases my stats. Like what what could I use? Strength? Strength might be good. Might be able to one hand though. Yeah, sure can. Yeah, thanks for the follow. Welcome in. Do we fight Godfrey at full power? Um arguably yeah. But he's also just a guy. Yeah, exactly. He's one of the few bosses that might be at full strength. Because he's just a guy. He's he's just a tarnish. He's just a mighty one who has strengthened himself to such a degree that he has become so mighty. He's not a god. He's nothing special. Like, yeah, he's the Elden Lord. But he was the Elden Lord. Now he's just a man. It's so neat. Yo, 100! Welcome back. Thank you so much for 38 months. I really appreciate that. Welcome back. Good to see you. It's a big ol' resub. Thank you so much for the continued support. How did he get so tall? He just needed to be cooler than everybody, and he worked really hard at it. First Elden Lord? They mean Marika's first lord. Yeah! Mm-hmm. One chosen by Marika, it seems. Whereas Radigan was, was thrust upon her. Yeah, all we find here is bodies and bodies and bodies of finger readers. We don't know what happened to them, but it's probably their lives were tied with the fingers that they read. Um, some of them seem to have been spared, but very few throughout the world, and they're clearly in distress without anything to read. Bloodthirsty, bloodthirstiness had to be tamed by Sirash. Yep, mm-hmm. He just wants to fight. It's funny because in phase one, he's like... 
That was a great fight, honorable tarnished. And then in phase two, he's like, that's enough. And then he just basically screams and, and runs at you. It's hilarious. Urtree Bow. Do you think Renala asked Radigan if he would love her if she was a worm? Probably not. Um, I feel like, I feel like, I, th I think she's just too cool to ask such questions. Like her, she wouldn't ask because her, she would know that of course they'll love me. I'm me, you know? Truly. She's based. And confident. It's a bow. I picked up a bow. Longbow featuring Erdtree styling. In times of old, when faith and battle went hand in hand, this weapon was created in tandem with the golden arrow. Scales all arrow damage with faith, revealing its true worth when infused with holy infused arrows. So it's interesting too because the time of the creation of the Urtree, like we see it as this almighty force that rules the land and it was untested for so long and like or uncontested. But in the initial when the Urtree was when the when the Golden Order was founded, um the Urtree was beset on all sides and it was vulnerable and everyone wanted to destroy it. Like a fresh new religion. It was vulnerable, weak potential to be crushed, but they fought and a lot of the the fact that it became so powerful was godfrey as this this uncontested powerhouse of a warrior who defeated all the enemies um marika was definitely involved but godfrey as the elden lord was definitely a source of that and his armies all of this stuff and then when the war was finished and there were no more rivals godfrey lost his grace and Marika seems to have been forced to recombine with Radigan, which, which basically suggests that they needed Godfrey for a specific purpose. I don't think Marika wanted to discard Godfrey. I just think this is the moment where the greater will, the, the Elden Beast, the Erd Tree, whatever, was kind of like, don't need you anymore. Now I can take my mask off and tell you what I was actually planning all along because that's the moment where Marika's role in the story seems to suddenly vanish. And also when Radigan seems to be the one calling a lot of shots and I think that's conscious. I think that's the moment where she was like, oh shit, I made a mistake. I gotta undo it. I have to resist but she had no allies and then Radigan was clearly the more dominant one. Probably thanks to the Greater Will's influence, to be honest, like... But she was still able to resist in her way. And then we get the Golden Order Principia. Very important story, book, lots of lore hidden within here. Prayer Book of the Golden Order Fundamentalists, a dense and complex academic treatise that contains the Order's fundamental principles, can be given to a learned cleric to gain access to the following incantations, Radigan's Rings of Light, Law of Regression. And that is what Radigan represents, regression. Need to get this chick under control? The thing is, while she was fighting for the Erd Tree, she she was gung ho. She was ruling. She was the queen. She was like everything seems to have been fine. She was working together with the Erdtree and the Elden Beast and all this. Like everything was good. But when the war was over, something changed. And I think that that was the moment where the Golden Order is like, I only need you to be a vessel for the Elden for the Elden Ring. That's it. And it's actually kind of an ironic thing because there's that. Uh, I haven't fought Malaketh here obviously yet, but. It says that Marika, Marika's only use for her shadow was as a vessel for the rune of death. It's very, you know, it doesn't suggest a very close relationship. It's a, it's a relationship of use. Like, I need you to do this, only this, that's it. That same thing happened to her. She was used as only a vessel for the Elden Ring, and then she realizes how badly she messed up. Um, however, there's definitely signs that as a clever uh, figure, she... She planned, uh, she kept the, the giants alive. She kept one alive. And I think that was a conscious choice because she, she doesn't like to, from what we can tell, destroy enemies, merely weaken them so that she might be able to use them later. She's an incredible strategist. Um, but either way, what we know for sure is there was a war and when the Urtree became dominant, that's when Marika's role seems to have been reduced to just a vessel. 
and was probably Nicholas because of her rebellious when nature. She accidentally stepped on his foot. Mitosis. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. What's all the lion references in this game? Godfrey is basically all tied to Godfrey. Godfrey's symbol was the lion because, ironically, a lot of people, I don't think anybody knew this except for maybe Marika, the lion was Sirash. It controlled his bestial nature because Sirash is a, like a guiding, he's a beast regent. And he would basically guide the Elden Lord and keep him calm because Sirash was this wise spiritual figure. Um, so everyone looked at Godfrey and was like, oh, he's like represented by this really cool lion. And he's like this powerful warrior. He was a powerful warrior before the lion. The lion is what kept him calm and turned him into a king. So before the lion, he was Horalu, which met, no one seems to know. No one, no one ta talks about, oh, do you know who Godfrey used to be? They just talk about Godfrey, Godfrey, Godfrey. He is her symbol is the lion. It's actually really ironic because what the symbol is, is what keeps him as Godfrey. And when he removes Sirash, he becomes Horalu again. Um, also, the name was likely given to him by Marika. Like, it was like, okay, you're my warrior. I need you. I choose you to be my Elden Lord. Um, we're going to need to do something about that bestial nature of yours. Here's a lion. Uh, your name is Godfrey now. And that's it. That's how it happens. They couldn't put out the Flame of the Forge, so she cursed him to tend it for sure. But I think with Marika, there's a little bit of subtext that she doesn't destroy her enemies. Like, the, the Glomide Queen. We also... Apparent, if Melina has the Glomide Queen's power in the form of the eyes or something, it suggests that she takes things she doesn't like and she keeps them. Now, it's also possible she simply cannot destroy Like, the Rune of Death cannot be destroyed, so she simply removes it and puts it in her loyal shadow. So it's it could be a little, like, multifaceted. But during her plan, she knew she needed, like, to allow the Tarnish to burn the Earth Tree. Part of what she needed was the flame of the fire giants, which she apparently told Melina, presumably, speculation, but pretty strong evidence speculation. She told Melina to go to the fire giants, and then she needed the rune of death, and she got it from Malekith, potentially helping Ronnie acquire it, right? So, um, there's something about her. She doesn't destroy enemies. She keeps them just in case. I think keeping the fire giant alive was, was a multifaceted thing. Because, like, I'm not saying she isn't spiteful, but for her, her cruelty tends to come from a purpose. It's not cruelty for cruelty's sake from what we've seen. She seems aggressively prag pragmatic. A Machiavellian figure. She will destroy you because she needs to be stronger than you. Because you are against her. But she doesn't really take joy out of destroying you for the sake of destroying you. That's kind of her M.O. Very much like Ronnie. Except for maybe Salavis. He, uh, he might take some joy out of destroying him. Now, I this is one thing I don't know. Why the hell is this suspended from the ceiling in some sort of weird chair and there's some guy in it? I genuinely have no idea. I don't know if this is supposed to represent something. I've seen nothing like this before. Um... I don't know if it's some sort of like, the saint holds the relic and then, you know, is is hovering in the sky. I don't know, man. But it is right above where Godfrey appears, interestingly enough. Literal giant uh, guarding it and keeping it smothered. The thing is, the fire monks are supposed to keep it smothered and, and weakened. The fire giant is just weak. <sighs> Celestial do here. Interesting. We knew Rod uh, Rodigan. We knew Radigan used this. Over at the um the the Sin place. The Church of Vows when he got married, he first had to say I'm sorry for all the bad stuff or whatever. I probably passed it. Here we go. Hidden tier found in the Eternal City, also known as a night tier, allows one to carry out an absolution at the Church of Vows. Once upon a time, the stars of the night sky guided fate, and this is a recollection of those times. So presumably they can't make this anymore. Because the stars are frozen. So Celestial do what, what was made was made, and any more is gone. Godfrey is the old French version uh, of Godfrey. 
Godfroy is another. He's basic. Think of him like Godric. I know he looks the same, so it's like yeah, duh. But no, he he attacked Landell during the first defense of Landell and was defeated and imprisoned. It's really that easy. It does make sense within the lore. It's just unfortunate that he's largely been reduced to like a copy paste boss. Yeah, Kristoff. Um. Spirit of Kristoff, an honorable knight of Landell, who was also a devout worshipper of the ancient dragons. After the first defense of Landell, Kristoff earned the hero's honor of Urchi burial for the feat of capturing Godifroy the Grafted. In other words, part of the first defense of Landell was defeating Godifroy, so he was likely the reason it needed to be defended. Regression alone reveals secrets. Law of Regression. We're gonna go give Corrin this spell book. Kristoff is also very useful against Melania. Neat. I've only used Mimic Tear and Tish on Melania, I think. What the f- oh my god. That <laughs> scared me. Come back, little bug. Oh shit. It's Saluria. Sorry, I heard the beetle. Oh, forgot the follow-up. I couldn't see it. My bad. Also, the Crucible Knights are said to be warriors of Godfrey, and they also use his spells. Right? Like, his stomps. I say spells. His skills. Not exclusively, and they use their own. It's possible the reason they're Knights of Godfrey. Oh boy. Yep, I'm donezo. Oh, I live, bitch. You're gonna keep doing that because I'm gonna keep healing, huh? Yeah, so they use their own crucible based spells. But the thing is, they also, very notably, the Crucible Knights do not use them as incantations. They do not need to channel them. Oh my god, I don't know how this one works. Nailed it! Barrier of gold. That would be... Probably passed it. Wait, this is two fingers. This, it should be here. Barrier of gold, there it is. One of the incantations of Erdtree worship greatly increases magic damage negation for the caster and nearby allies. This incantation was, was used by the champions of the Erdtree in the first and second Lyurnian Wars, during which the red-haired Radigan joined the hero's ranks. So protection of the Erdtree was probably first. Not sure though. Honestly, timeline's unsure. But they were fighting mages, so they needed this. And then, um, after the second Lyurnian War, so Radigan joined the hero's ranks, but the thing is, by the time we get to where he met Renala, he was the leader of the army. So it's a little interesting. He just came out of nowhere and then was leading the army to the point that he was able to create peace. We know why now, but I'm sure a little mysterious people back in the day. Hey, Shreddy. Aren't Crucible Knights banished? Why are they here? Um, so Crucible Knights aren't necessarily banished. They're just kind of around. Crucible Knights are not tarnished. So they weren't... Um, yeah, exactly. That's it. So the, that's pretty much why they would protect it. And why they sided with Godfrey was likely because they were like, oh, um, well, the earth tree looks, a, or the crucible looks a little different now, but I mean, you know, still my tree, so. And then Godfrey's like, I'm gonna protect it, so will you fight with me? And they're like, sure. So they use their own, are you joking me right now? Son of a, that was like a Super Mario uh, Sunshine moment. I'm telling you, Super Mario Sunshine is some shit sometimes. You're just chilling, everything's fine, and just boom, you slip. They're also called Primordial Knights. Not that I remember, but it's possible. 
Radigan is definitely not the LMBC he fucking wishes. I can't even I can't even make a kink joke right now because like he actually fucking wishes. But yeah, so from what I can basically tell is most Crucible Knights were like, well, the tree looks a little different now, but I guess this is cool. And then they fought with Godfrey to protect it, and they're still basically around protecting it. There are various places. The one exception, interestingly enough, is the one by Tanith who very famously sided with the recusants, presumably because he hated the new form the, that the tree had taken on and wanted to burn it so that it could be what it once was. Anyway, I want Bolt of Grand Sacks. It is missable, interestingly enough. If you don't get this before Ash and Landell, I think it's too late. Not certain, because I normally either just don't get it or, you know, don't... <laughs> I actually I actually normally don't progress the game far enough to access Ash and Landell because I like Landell so much. So I... Whoa, try not to. Oh boy. Got it. Bolt of Grand Sacks. And then we'll grab... Oh, well. Freaking archers, I tell you. Oh my god. Oh my god. I... <laughs> Hee <laughs> hee, bitch. Wee! Alright, I kind of want that. I don't remember what it is. You can get it in Ashen? Oh, really? I feel like I was lied to then. I've just never gotten it, I guess. Yeah, so the Crucible Knights weren't banished, but they likely were looked down upon because they still use Crucible stuff, and then they were, like, unnecessary. But then again, they are still in Lane Dell. There's the Crucible Knight, um, over there. Also, interestingly, Crucible Knights do not respawn, and it could be just like a gameplay mechanic. They sort of take on the role of Black Knights, like in Dark Souls 1, where they wander around random places and you defeat them. You get a guaranteed drop, but they're no longer there. They're like an upgraded enemy. Um, but within the lore, there's also something about the fact that they are not reborn in the Earth Tree. Lightning doesn't strike the same spot twice. Falls. It strikes Raph five times in a row. <laughs> it sure does. So I destroyed this one, um, but yeah, it was here. Looking at this image of the earth tree. Um, so. Bolt of Grand Sax. A really freaking cool little weapon. I think it's a great spear, but like... No, just a spear. Spear whittled from the weapon wielded by Grand Sax. Ah, that's why I got confused. I couldn't remember if this was Grand Sax's weapon or not. It's a bit of both. So there was a weapon, the, the giant one, like the literal huge one that's like in the ground, and they turned it into a mini weapon that they could use. A great a great ancient dragon, Grand Sax, once, once rained calamity upon the royal capital, the only time in historical record that Lane Dell's walls have fallen. This marked the dawn of the war against the ancient dragons. Which basically became peace because Godwin and Fortisax fought and then they like became bros. Why do people hate omens so much? Was it just because they were ugly? It's because they represent the crucible and they were looked down upon. And as society evolved and developed, they started looking at ancient things. Consider how, like, Christianity talks shit about pagan religions that are significantly older than it. And was like, no, that's, like, blasphemy and stinky and gross, and we get rid of that, and we sanctify it, you know? Similar concept. For a religion to be dominant, it must, um, basically twist everything to fit its mold, but also, for example, the existence of a crucible would mean that the earth tree was not eternal because it used to have a different form, and to suggest it wasn't eternal would be an affront to the earth tree and the religion of the Golden Order, so it necessitates erasure of everything that came before. This, in my opinion, was largely spearheaded by Radigan. Um, I know I hate Radigan, so it's easy for, you know, it might be just like, oh, you're biased, but no, seriously, he's the one who mainly wanted those things. Um, Meanwhile, Godfrey, who is married by Mar married to Marika, fought with Crucible Knights. They use his same moveset. They luckily taught skill. Were le they learned skills from him, right? 
so they weren't looked down upon. Hugh, a misbegotten, has a relationship with Marika. Some people think it's a negative relationship, but nonetheless, like he worships her and and values her a great deal. If he, like I know that there's a couple self-hating figures here, but if the religion upon its founding was like fuck crucible, fuck crucible knights, fuck the misbegotten, fuck the omen, it would be a little weird to have them in your army too, wouldn't it? So I think that was the thing that started very much with Radigan, or at least progressed with Radigan. Because before that, everyone fought in Godfrey's army. Now admittedly, some of them fought because they were prisoners and they were forced to. Um, also, Marika does get the fire monks. Some of the fire monks are indeed prisoners that are forced into that role as part of their punishment. So I'm not saying that they're against forcing people to do things, I just don't think it includes this concept of like, because you are different, because you are of the crucible, you are filthy. That seems to have started quite a bit later. Also, we know for sure that traditions within the Earth Tree worship changed because at first it was, they were a religion of warriors. They fought to defend the Earth Tree and found this nation. The Colosseums are a remnant of that. I don't remember what item description it is. If anyone knows, feel free to remind me because I read it recently, but I don't recall now. Um, that the concept of combat to honor the Earth Tree in the Colosseum fell out of favor around the time of Radigan. So that means that there is precedent for things having changed because Radigan became powerful because Radigan was the Elven Lord now. So the order itself also changed, which suggests that he has quite a bit of power to control what is acceptable or not. And the Golden Order Principia is literally his fucking manifesto of what he believes. A dense and complex academic treatise. And I don't have other books because I gave them so I can get spells, but this is the thickest of them. Man spent some time writing, that's for sure. Let's go give it to Corin. Basically, you have to extend in St. Patrick to destroy the Irish... Oh, fancy? I don't know that word. But yeah, no, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Why did the giant dragon in the capital turn to stone? Dragons are always stone. That's just how they built. This whole uh, protect their lord as a wall of living rock is not an exaggeration. They're literally made of stone. If you want the urge to be the center of all history, want people to believe it's the origin of the world, you can't have other things contradicting that doctrine. Yes. And then look at Mir uh, Muriel, Turtle Pope. Um, heresy is but a contrivance. All things can be conjoined. The Crucible is a place of, of conjoining, of things being conjoined. He is also an animal, a wise beast, a great wise beast that the Karians appreciated. In fact, that's probably why they're sort of in Karian territory and why he was chosen to marry them. It's like Arebus, nah, sort of, yeah. Arebus though, yeah, you know what, we, we can, yeah. Rebus though is, is like a perfect being. Um, the primary Crucible is like everything before it was separated and the, the lines that divide were drawn. So, Erebus, from my understanding, needs to be created versus something that just is the way that it is, like the Crucible. The Pagans! That's what it is. Sorry, I wasn't sure if it was a typo or just like a spelling of something that I wasn't familiar with. I don't know all, all like Celtic spelling and stuff. Also, um, the, the Celtic religions, from what I understand, were very much focused on... Uh, like oral tradition, so it was pretty easy to wipe them out, unfortunately. And very few records remain. Also, St. Patrick, if I'm not mistaken, he's known for destroying serpents. It's pretty interesting. The serpents were pagans. It's not a good thing, but the, the, the depiction there is very relevant to this idea of serpents as bad and traitors in this game. Hi, Goldmask. Uh, wait, sorry, not you. Hi. Oh, was that you? Yes, the master is still ceased. And after coming all this way, why now, of all times? This is a volume of incantation. It's good to see your enthusiasm. 
Indeed, I will happily take it off your hands. This is the only one that he doesn't say this is heresy. Literally, even the two fingers one is heresy according to him. Radigan's Rings of Light, one of the incantations of the Golden Order Fundamentalists, a gift of gratitude to the young Mikola from his father, Radigan, produces a golden ring of light and fires it across a wide area. And yet the young Mikola abandoned fundamentalism for it could do nothing to treat Melania's accursed rot. This was the beginning of unalloyed gold. So it's really interesting because it says young Mikola. Uh, so it presumably, I know he's like always young, but this is presumably when he was truly a child and it's a gift of gratitude to Mikola from Radigan. I really feel like this is a thank you for being born and not red haired and cursed like all my other gross ass red haired children. Um, here have some rings. And Mikola proceeds to take the spell and make it better. <laughs> in the form of discus of light so this one the ring shoots forward this one the ring shoots forward and then comes back so basically it's a sign of Mikola's genius at a very young age um, that he was given a gift and then he proceeded to improve it it was probably, I'm not sure, it could have it could happen at any time because this timeline of receives gift then abandons fundamentalism could have happened later, or this could be a farewell gift. It's ambiguous, so I'm not going to jump to conclusions here, but still, it's very interesting. Also, notably, um, it's actually interesting because this one requires less stats, and this one requires way more. But this one's also cheap as hell, you can spam the hell out of this one. So he made it simpler. It could also be that it was, um, well, to be fair, he, he, he teaches it to the clean rot knight. So it's, it's sort of like the concept is this is difficult to understand. It requires heavy stat requirement versus this version is usable by more people and is, is more utilitarian for others. New game plus no new playthrough for the Lorathon. Pretty heavily, Nicola created the pulley bow and crossbow. I think I picked those up, hang on. Because it does say a master craftsman for those, yeah. Complex mechanism which required advanced mathematical and mechanical understanding to craft was likely made by a certain genius who learned golden order fundamentalism. I don't know. Like, I, this fits Mikla to a T. He was a genius craftsman, um, definitely a genius, intense understanding, and aware of golden order fundamentalism because he was raised with it. It's definitely possible, but I don't know. I really wonder, because we do get that crossbow user in the DLC trailer. I'm not certain that's him, but it's still interesting. But no, um, Mikla created a lot of things. The thing about Mikla, though, is a lot of what he created was to help not harm right like i mean the discus of light does harm right but it's it was a gift from his father a warrior which he then turned into something else ever hear melania being a fundamentalist yeah because she was the gross uh rot daughter with red hair who radigan clearly had no use for just like all of his other children because the only one he seems to have any relationship with in any of the lore despite having freaking five of them that we know of is mikola yeah very ironic too considering how similar melania is to personality to Radigan, that he doesn't, uh, you know, connect with her, you know? Triple Ring says the same, a gift from the young Mikola to his father Radigan. That might be the one that I'm thinking of as the improved version. I just don't have it yet. So, did I go to college? So I'm from Canada, so like I went to uni, but like same thing. It just, we call it uni or university or whatever, but yeah. Because he hates himself? Pretty much. Yeah. No, he absolutely does. But it's just really heartbreaking that he seems to only have a relationship with th that one child. So I don't know about the weapon. It's possible. Like, this definitely fits thematically. But 
I don't know about him crafting weapons. I don't know. Even Marika. Marika doesn't is not associated with anything but her hammer, which was used for creation. Um, all of the spells that are linked to her and all the items linked to her are more like defensive, healing, bestowing gifts upon others. The the weapons and, and things like that that harm are Radigan. So it's pretty interesting. She is a creator and only destroys in the shattering, but otherwise doesn't. Spent most of her time with Blue Dancer since she's trying to control the rot. Yeah, but the thing is that Mikola clearly cared about his sister to the point that he left fundamentalism because it couldn't help his sister. And I really wonder if the could not help his sister is because fundamentalism was focused on keeping things as they were and removing things that don't belong, of which the rot would be potentially one. So it's not it focused on healing or helping or improving anything. And that's why Mikla could not abide. Uh, and then we have... Where is Law of Repression? Really similar to Order Healing. Incantation of the Golden Order fundamentals, fen, Fundamentalists, one of the key fundamentals, heals all negative statuses, dispels special effects, and reveals mimicry in all its forms. Oh, that's really interesting. That's a complete opposite of the Mimic Veil. Like it literally reveals what's beneath. Cool. So it's interesting that the law of aggression heals negative statuses, but he had no interest in helping his daughter with the rot, right? Fundamentalists describe the Golden Order through the powers of regression and causality. Regression is the pull of meaning that all things yearn eternally to converge. Radigan definitely wanted to converge back with Marga, that's for sure. Did try to get rid of Mog and Morgot? Radigan? Yeah, I definitely I definitely credit him with that for sure. Because it it's interesting that Godwin and the Dragon Cult was fine under the Erd Tree. But not the Omen Twins. Okay, so now we need to try to get enough stats to use it. I don't know if I have anything, everything I require for this, so we'll see. I don't remember how many stats I can get. You know what, honestly, I'm gonna keep it real simple. I'm just gonna use my uh, dropped runes and just level. <laughs> like, maybe not that many, maybe like this many. Let's get like a ton of int, like it's... Wear the goofy hat or whatever. I can really only get 24, huh? Good god, with all those runes. Stats are expensive. So the Burger King hat, and then we'll probably pop a rune arc in order to get Godric's rune active. That should help. We're at 31 already. Um, then we can equip the Stargazer Heirloom. That's 36. We only need one. What's one more thing I can equip that gives me? Is there like a weapon or something? Goddess of Rot really be sick? The thing is, Melania did not choose the Rot. She was born into it. It's, it's her curse. So it causes her immense harm. Yeah, she's the goddess of rot, but we see her racked with pain. Like, Mil look at Millicent's journey, how she's in pain and in agonizing pain throughout her life um, until we give her the needle. And imagine that's what Melania's life was like, too. Marga Scarseal, thank you. Silly me. How could I forget that one? There we go. 39 int. Easy. Godfrey shows genuine affection for his son before he fades into the golden light. That's exactly why I think that the whole idea of them being uh, thrust into the sewer was a Radigan thing. I don't think it happened from birth. 
they're too intelligent to have been thrust into a sphere from birth. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's, there's, it doesn't make sense to me for them to be the way they are. Like, they're so well spoken, specifically Morgoth, you know? Morgoth is a genius ruler. He rules so well that when he's in control of Landell, the walls never fall. He defends it from some of the most terrifying figures, including potentially Radon. And he wins. Yes, it's playing defense, but still, he succeeds in keeping them away. He's abreast of everything that's going on in the lands between. Morgoth's a really impressive figure. That's why Needle is needed to separate Rot Deity and Melania. Yeah, and to keep her as she wants to be. She only blooms when necessary. Because she wants to follow what Mikola wanted. It's really intriguing. Regression alone reveals secrets, and when we cast Regression, that's not how you cast Regression. Radigan is Marika. One of the coolest moments in this entire game. So we know about this whole situation because Muriel tells us the statue holds a secret. The skeleton in Radigan's closet, as it were. So we know there's something about the statue, and the item description here makes it very clear. Regression alone reveals the truth, or real secrets, or whatever. And then that's what the skill does. The skill itself removes mimicry. Reveals mimicry in all its forms. All right, now we can stop looking like a dingus. Where did I on again? I don't remember. Oh no, I don't remember what. Uh, oh, right. Margo keeps his identity hidden the whole time. His rule wouldn't last if everyone knew he was Omen. So he's definitely clever and politically savvy. I, I think to a point you're right, but I personally read the Veiled Monarch as um, he hides more out of shame because his own appearance is so unsightly to him because he's internalized how people despise uh, Omen, right? And why they despise him. So the other thing that I'll say about that is... He doesn't change his name. He changes it when he fights you as Margit, the fell omen. But there's several seals in the world that are just sealed by Morgoth, the Veiled Monarch, right? Um, also, frankly, there's not really many people to, to rule here anymore. Like, there don't seem to be any people. The only citizens still around are soldiers or people who are so far gone. It's not like he's going to get deposed. I personally read it almost entirely as shame. Twisting cloth behind the statue of Marika? Yeah, it looks like the Elden Ring. It also looks like your dress. Yeah. We can see it in the opening cutscene, too. Two different people who became joined in one body? There's hints that it's both. Personally, the way I read it... Uh, I've changed my mind on this, by the way. This has been an evolving thing. I haven't thought this from the start. I used to be in the camp that they were separate individuals who were later combined. However... The nature of Erebus is really interesting because what happens is, I have a really cursory knowledge of this, I'm not like an alchemical expert or anything, but Erebus must be, to create one, there's apparently a period of purification required. So the idea that they were created, like Marika created it, created Radigan or what, like I don't know if it was a conscious choice or what, but they needed to be separated perhaps to purify first, considering that Radigan has Celestial Dew, uses Celestial Dew, that could be a part of it, I don't know though, but they become purified, perhaps becoming more complete, specifically Radigan, as someone who is an incomplete being, needs to fill the gap in himself, which is why he's so fixated on, on learning things and fusing together the Golden Order and sorcery and learning everything he can. And then when he recombines, with Marika, that's why it's sort of like an inevitability that they need to combine. Um, 
but the separation is a key part of it. So some people think that they were caught, they were always together and they were like swapping bodies with Renala and uh, that Marika was the one who fell in love with Renala. Um, I actually like the theory in terms of I find that really charming. Um, but nah, I think they were separate at the time that they had their independent children. I think that was a key part of it. And the combination of them is what led to Melenia and uh, Mikkel. Everything I know about Rebus stuff is from Castlevania. That's unironically where I first heard about the Rebus. Yeah, I'm not kidding. <laughs> I didn't know about the Rebus, even considering Full Metal Alchemist. They talked all about alchemy. Not one himself in the throne if he could help it, which means there was literally no one else around. Yep, but the thing is, Morgoth is an incredibly savvy ruler. Loki loved the headcanon of Marika being a bi queen. Also, frankly, Radigan does not deserve Renala. Marika and Renala are really interesting because they're both these powerhouse rulers. I could totally see Marika falling for Renala, right? But it's just, in terms of the lore, I don't think that they were like casually body swapping to whoever they needed, like some weird Freaky Friday. Like, oops, oh no, uh, Renala's coming, Marika, you have to, it's quick, let me take control. I can't, uh, you know, like some comedy movie. It would be very charming. I, I kind of like it as like a funny concept, but I don't think it's real. being parasitic birds lay eggs in other birds nests um you know, i don't know the whole thing about the cuckoo knights is that they can't use sorcery so they use stupid sorcery they get like little tools that let them use sorcery but they can't actually use it what do you think if people disagree with your setup um in terms like my setup like my lore theories or... yo rock glad you're enjoying your playthrough happy to be able to give you some lore insights Renala base, uh, Radigan cringe. That's basically, like, how I see the whole situation. Yeah, for sure. I think it's also the fact that, like... I Okay, the thing is, Radigan needed to leave Renala because he needed to recombine. But the thing is that Marika did not want to recombine at that point. Radigan did. He yearns to, to be complete. So I understand why, but, you know, it's a little tough to read, like... What he did to Renala in any sort of positive thing. Your setup is wrong, plus she's in the wrong order. I have actually, I was I was considering, so I'm thinking of like rearranging my background again, maybe putting the Pokemon by type and stuff like that. And like sort of by color, but like, you know, like Gengar with Miniku with Zorua, cause they're like some, like they're all ghosts and having the ghost together. So, you know, my setup could be wrong, you're right. <laughs> no, but if you're talking about like my lore theories, like the whole point of this, of theory is discussion. Like, you know, it, of course, this is my channel, so I'm going to talk about what I think, but I do try to talk about things that I don't agree with to try to provide all the information. It's just, for me, lore is also a thesis. Like, I'm giving you guys what I think and presenting the arguments for it, but I also discuss the things I don't agree with because they could give you an insight that inspires you. So it's like part lesson and part essay, you know? <laughs> So, like, it's it's not about, like, you know, I, I really think that lore is very collaborative and it's it's best to give voice to things that you don't agree with because, you know, there could be things that people see that you don't or perspectives because lore is alive. We all have it in our minds and we all continue the conversation. It's constantly changing. There's always interesting theories. Um... And there's some that I hear that I'm like, nah, but that's okay because we're all having discussion. Isn't it also just fun to be wrong? I feel like people are so fixated on being right that they're scared to talk about things and discuss and throw theories out there and just have a good time, you know? Anyway, Mark is bedchamber. That's some uh, that's some meta lore for you. I mean, hell, people have told me I'm wrong a lot, that's for sure. Some people are not very nice about it. And that weirds me out because it's like, aren't we all just having fun? Like, is it... Is it such an affront to have a different theory? Anyway, this is Marika's bedchamber. It looks like a baldachin. There are six... Fabrics? I can't think of the word right now. Veils! Six veils coming off of it around this strange light that seems to come from above, revealing the bedchamber, but everything outside of it is shadowed. People have been tying this to the trailer, with the veil covering everything since it dropped. Um, there are six divine towers. I think I might have them all now. Uh, maybe not all of them. Hang on. One. 
Eh. I don't remember where they all are, to be honest. There are six, though. You just have to trust me. <laughs> Where's Radon's? Radon's. Ronnie's. Limgrave. Wait, that's Ronnie. Sorry, this is this is Limgrave. This is Ronnie's. And then there's like... There's like there's this random one, and then there's like one somewhere. There's six, okay? There's just six. I don't remember where they all are. <laughs> um, but they are centered around this area, which when you get it on the map... I believe it actually might link to the Forbidden Lands map. Um, there's just like a little clouded spot and people have been like, that's going to be where the DLC is. It's going to be in the center. And that's like really likely. Um, the other thing about veils, of course, this is meant to mimic the safety of a bedchamber. It's a place of comfort. Um, notably, bedchambers are also where women would give birth, right? Um, especially noble women, it's not like they went to the hospital back in the day. This is a place of life and, and life beginning of safety, of the sanctity of the bedchamber, but also of birth. And there's a couple of really interesting things about veils. Like that, that's obvious and that's a big one. I almost don't even want to, I know this is like, what? But frankly, a lot of people have talked about this. So I don't really feel the need to get super into the, yeah, this is likely a microcosm of the DLC. The entire Land of Shadow is covered in a veil. But the veil is not just used to hide things, because that, I feel, has been the main focus of people discussing this. They've been like, well, it's a Land of Shadow because it's hidden. It's a place of shame and bad things happen there. But I also argue, if this is supposed to evoke the bedchamber, this is also a place of safety, of protection. Things that are hidden are safe. And... Then we have the Concealing Veil, which is kind of reminiscent. Obviously, it's it's a veil that kind of wraps around the top and then goes outward. But if this is supposed to cover the body, it looks a lot like what we see here, too. Um, Talisman put together from a dark cloth with a lustrous sheen completely conceals the wearer's presence while crouching at a distance from foes, part of one of the Concealing Veils used by the Assassins of the Knight of Black Knives. So. I honestly, I don't know if Marika made this. I personally think so, because she had. there's evidence of her being a craftswoman in general, just like Nicola, her, her son. Um, but if she made it or not, her people made this. This is used by the Newman, the Black Knives. However, this has one purpose, to keep them hidden and to keep them safe. That's actually it, right? The they, It doesn't harm directly. This isn't a dagger that's used to kill or stab. This is only to protect the Black Knives. That's it. And I find it really interesting that this is linked to the Newman, and then we also have yet another veil. I honestly think it's it potentially to protect um, Mesmer, because behind Mesmer is a statue of a, a smiling woman holding a baby. Once again, also, there's a curtain behind it kind of fanning outward, reminiscent of a baldachin. It looks like a bedchamber. Um, and it also has a, a depiction of safety and maternal love. So I'm not sure that's going to be the whole purpose of the Land of Shadow. But I think I just want to link that concealing is also protecting something. No offense, but is this actually Elden Ring lore? Listen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You can say the stream is stupid if you want, but a lot of people seem to be picking up what I'm putting down, so... <coughs> Projection. Sorry. Marika herself descended of the Nox people. So, Marika is a Newman. I honestly, it's weird with the Newman and the Nox because the Newman, the Nox live in the Eternal Cities, but the Newman and the, it, the, the Black Knives are called Scions of the Eternal Cities. So apparently they lived in tandem, but possibly the Numen are older. They came from another world as well. So I'm not really sure who came first, if that makes sense. Um, I personally lean toward the Numen, but it, you know, they could be two peoples that kind of combined. Numen, the thing about the Numen is they have long lives but are seldom born. In other words, low population. Long lives, powerful, but low population. Um, so potentially, they would have to live with other civilizations that would be more populated. Newman was a race, an ethnicity? I don't know, it's possible. 
Maybe they be also they could have become the Nox, right? So if the Newman came from far away, came from another world, whatever that means, that could be like a planet, a different planet, a different, you know, universe, whatever, then as they settled, they might consider themselves something else, right? And some people are rotten. Honestly, I don't take offense by people calling something stupid because to me that's just project projection, buddy. You point a finger outward, you're pointing three back at yourself, as they say. <laughs> like we've literally been talking about this for hours. Like it's of course not everything that we have is gonna be true. But I really don't think I'm saying anything that crazy. So it's kind of hilarious to me. <laughs> Is this really Elden Ring lore? I'm too stupid to understand, so I think it is. <laughs> it's like a really bad take. It's like... You know those people who post on the internet that like women can't have orgasms because they've never had seen a woman have one? And I'm like... Oh my god. Like, imagine being like a straight guy and saying that. Like, I don't think you would torture that information out of me. And these people are just posing on the internet? You know what I mean? Like, what are you even doing? That's a terrible idea. Shh, don't say that. Oh my god, like the biggest self-report on the planet. Yeah, you know, like it's like, oh bro. <laughs> oh my god. Newman come from the same place the Estelles originate from. And the thing is, the Nox are star worshippers trying to create an age of the stars. So I don't know, it's pretty interesting. How the Newman ended up in the Eternal Cities, I don't know. I still have my questions. I'm still not certain of like timeline because once we get into that timeline, once we get into Newman and stuff like that, like specifically the Newman, we're talking about first of all, the main Newman that we know about are assassins who we don't talk to and Marika who we also don't talk to. So their history is very, it's particularly nebulous. Anyway. Um, I think we're good to fight Morga now. Wait, I didn't read the spell. I'm <laughs> saying I'm gonna fight Morgoth for the past like 10 years. <laughs> it wasn't Lord's Heal. I think it was Erd Tree. Blessing of the Erd Tree. Was it Blessing of the Erd Tree chat that I got from the bed? I'm pretty sure it was. One of the ancient Erdtree incantations grants a higher blessing, greater blessing to the caster and nearby allies, gradually restoring a large amount of HP. The Erdtree once flourished with abundance, yet it was only for a fleeting moment. Such is the course of all life. So, uh, one other thing about the bedchamber, just because there's a lot to talk about with it. Um, there's stone tablets everywhere. They could be telling a story, they could be information but they look very similar to the thing that is behind uh, the spirits that you can summon. Of course, this one's curved. This one looks more like the things in the uh, Ancestral Followers woods. But interestingly, they are still runes. I don't know exactly what they could be, but there is tons of them. Ancient civilizations uh, before paper would literally write on stone tablets. There's also paper here, though. Perhaps used to copy down what was written here. But this doesn't really look much like a bedchamber. Especially, imagine having like no doors to your bedchamber. It's a very symbolic place. Oh, right. And this, uh, this thing, it's mostly covered. But you see the same thing at Farm Azula and at uh, Garonk's place. Love letters? Oh, fan mail. Using stellar language? <laughs> I'm glad you joined this lore stream, Necron. Thanks so much for saying that. Welcome in. Okay, um, so yeah, the shackle. Thank you for the reminder. Because I would like to use it, just to show off what it does in the animation. Even though it is rather cruel, I'm not going to lie to you. You checked how the same rounded symbols? A lot of things have rounded symbols. I don't see the same ones though, but I'll take a second look. Graceless tarnished. Hmm. 
What is thy business with these thrones? Ah, Godric the Golden. The twin prodigies, Mikola and Melania. General Radan, Praetor Rikard, and little one Luna Princess Rani. <laughs> Do even I have to? I Willful wish I could compare Melania and Mikolas because Mikola was literally a kid. You tell me he got a bigger throne. Thy kind are all of a piece. Oh boy. Pillagers emboldened by the flame of ambition. A sword that looks like on thy meager grave. Felled by King Morgoth. Last of all kings. You tell me this man was raised in the sewer? Like, come on. He ha he's read some books, dog. Mesmer did get a throne? Moog doesn't have a throne either. It's possible Morgoth doesn't know about Mesmer, especially if he predates him. He could also only be referencing... Godwin doesn't have a throne either. It could be that because he knows about him, but he's considered dead. There could be some hidden magic with the Concealing Veil as well. Like, it, uh, it causes people to forget about the Land of Shadow. I don't know. I really am not sure. There's tons of possibilities as to why that is. But yeah, Mesmer has a throne. We see it in the promotional image. Hello, good morning. Just so you know, English only in chat for moderation purposes. Thank you. You broke your throne, Morgan. Okay. All right. He's having a spicy time right now, isn't he? Seek shards and her role in the uh, Night of Black Knives is a secret? Um, well, she's not on his side. She's doing her own thing. He's so hyper, dude. He's like a cat that has the zoomies 24 freaking semi. He does not stop moving, I gotta tell you. He's squishy, though. Like, relatively. But he better be. Are they all grafted in some way? Uh, who? The the demigods? Nod. Nah, it, it's it's really just Godric. Well, Rikard arguably has a form of grafting, but they all do different things to gain power. Except for well, Radon does, but Radon's pretty mighty on his own. Melania simply pushes herself to an extreme. Oh look! So when you damage him a lot, whoa! PC little hiccupy. So now the curse is upon his sword. Stained by my curse. Such shame. I cannot bear. Thy part in this shall not be forgiven. So this is the omen that he sort of contains because he despises his omen side and he has been cursed. Not in terms of the omen curse, but others curse him for being an omen. He was simply born this way, but he has been despised, and thus he internalizes it and considers his curse a natural thing, something to be despised. However, when you weaken him, here we go. When you weaken him, he loses control of it, and it, it literally spews out of him. This is what he has been withholding. It's actually really similar to Melania, who only blooms when desperate. Similarly, now he is the curse upon his blade, the, the rage, the anger of, of the omen spirits, and he uses blood flame on you because he sealed the blood flame that he encountered along with Moog into his sword. There it is. He recanted, though, uh, after encountering it, unlike Moog, and that sort of marked the separation of both of them. Miss up one dodge, you're gonna miss up more. 
Well, flame is something all the omen use. Not the omen, it's curse. Not, sorry, not all the omen, a lot of them, the more powerful ones. I'm calling it curse because it's the same color as the, like, spirit thingies. What do you call them? The, uh, the vengeful spirits. Oh, God. I'm dead. I'm not gonna live. Oh, wait, can I still shackle you? Nope, I forgot. I forgot to shackle him. You can't use it in phase two. That's my bad. I got stuck in it, no. Actually, we need a death dialogue. Wraiths, the wraiths calling bells. Yeah, the people who worship wraiths, they use these bells. It's the same color. It represents vengeful, angry, bitter spirits. I don't think that the omen inherently have it. That would be like saying, to me at least, that the uh, the nomads are born with frenzy because they are cursed. Nah, they were in despair and they summoned it. The frenzy lives within them now, but they weren't, like, it's the same idea. The curse is not inherently a part of them. Is Margot a self-proclaimed king? I mean, kind of, but he is also of the correct lineage. He is a son of Godfrey. He has every right to be a king. He rules very well as well. Although, to be fair, if he had people to rule, it might be a different story. But he's very interested mainly in protecting the Earth Tree above all. When he says willful traitors, he means to the Earth Tree specifically. If you are not protecting the tree, then you are a traitor to him. He loves the Earth Tree. Oh shit, I, I meant to heal, but good, there's the shackle. You can do that twice. Yeah, he is the son of Marika and Godfrey. He is absolutely, he is of the golden lineage. He is, he, he's able to rule, absolutely. The only reason he doesn't want to is because he hates his uh, appearance. Also, yeah, he's really interesting because he has a tail. Tail makes him more animalistic. Could simply be more animal parts. Oops. Man, I got all caught. He basically accidentally unleashed his curse. He doesn't want to, but he cannot contain it any longer. He's basically like Melania, repressing a part of his nature when he fights you. Weakening himself because of his resolve. And he's a multi-talented figure. All the types of weapons he can use and summon is really interesting. Really impressive too. I want to. I want to get grabbed by this, just to show it off. Oops! I'm gonna die trying to show it off. He's not really gonna let me heal, so. <laughs> as I did not discover until a follow-up playthrough, you can talk to him after he dies. And the horns are gone Die from his desiccated body. Not but a fool. The earth tree wards off all who deign approach. We are... We are... So he still defends the tree even though it forsakes him. None may claim the title of Elder Lord. Thy deeds shall be met with failure, just as I. <sighs> and that's it. Um, what normal looks like without his great rune? No, he was born an omen. The Great Rune 
changes for sure based on their holder. Great of the shard bearer Morgoth, devoid of any benediction. All right, we'll get it. Ronnie died before the shattering, and she's a traitor to him, potentially meaning he knows she was deceitful. Um, yeah. The thing is, we know that she was alive. She's got a little chair, presumably her new body. It's it's a little odd to consider. We don't really know what's going on with that. Um, but I don't know that he knew the full truth. The thing is, I feel that he is kind of a simple guy. If you're not in Lane Dell saying, I will protect the Erd Tree with everything I have, you are a traitor to him. This is easy as. And then we have Radigan's Rune. Blocking entry. Impenetrable, impenetrable thorns refuse all. None may enter the earth tree. He's graceless. How do you get a rune? Um, so he is. His title is Morgoth the Grace Given. You might be like, how many titles does he have? A lot, actually. Um, Grace Given is one of his monikers. So presumably he uh, was indeed given grace in some way, shape, or form. Beef with people who are dead is crazy, but I get it. <laughs> the thing is, we see her talking about the Shattering War, so presumably he figured out that she was alive. Maybe he figured out the whole truth. I don't know. But he doesn't mention Moog, Godwin, or Mesmer. Neither of those three are mentioned. The reasons for it could be varied. Margoth suppressed himself as is Godfrey. Godfrey for a different reason, but let's listen to Melina first. Hello, welcome back. Hello again, old friend. Allow me a moment to converse with you. You were unable to enter the Erd Tree. Doesn't she sound no? happier? Prevented by the mantle of barbs. The thorns are impenetrable. A husk of the Erd Tree's being that spurns all that exists without. The only way to stand before the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord is to pass the thorns. My purpose serves to aid in that very act. She knows her purpose now. So I'd now. like you to undertake a new journey with me to the flame of ruin, far above the clouds, upon the snowy mountain tops of the giants. Then I can set the Erd Tree aflame and guide you down the path to becoming Elden Lord. So, Melina, initially, she doesn't trust you. We know that for sure. I offer you an accord. It's a deal. It's very much like going back and forth here. It's like I give you, it's a trade deal. You give me this, I give you this. That's it, right? But now she seems happier, more confident, more sure of herself. And the first thing she says is, old friend, she's familiar with you. It's not an accord anymore. It's not a deal. It's not I get something, you get something. It's I'm helping you become the Elden Lord. This is my purpose. I will fulfill my purpose. I will... The thing is, too, it's not just like serving you. She wants to do this. She wants to become kindling so that the Erd Tree can burn. She is sure of her purpose. We learn that a little later. But I love the subtle changes in her voice, her further familiarity with you. She trusts you now. I wish to journey with you once more. To the flame of ruin, far above the clouds, upon the snowy mountain tops of the giants, then I can set the Erd Tree aflame and guide you down the path to becoming Elden Lord. Mass figure in Volcano Manor is her too? Wait, you mean the, the one in the mask with the beard on it? Nah, the wrong eye is covered. Was there a beard? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's a mask beard. It doesn't mean a woman can't wear it, but the eye... Okay, Ronnie's eye... Uh, to be fair, this could have been before she took on the new body, but it's it's pretty obviously depicted to be like a masculine character. Um, Ronnie did have a deal with Riker, but he was sort of the backup plan. 
so because he was like i'm gonna do a blasphemy too sis she's like cool i'll help you do a blasphemy just in case i can't do a blasphemy so they kind of helped each other be blasphemers but we're not sure of the exact nature of it it was more just ronnie being like just in case i fail you can have this because keeping things as they are is the worst case scenario I don't know why that would warrant a portrait, though. Yeah, the, the thing about the portraits is there is a lot of them in the Volcano Manor. I think it could be a depiction of Rikard when he was traveling, when he, where he met Tanith in a foreign land, where they wear masks a lot. I don't know. Um, interesting that a lot of figures in the Land of Shadows seem to be masked. It's, uh, then again, a lot of figures in this world tend to be masked, too, so it doesn't mean anything inherently, but still. Um, yeah, no, I don't know that it's... The, the amount of portraits in there is very vain. It's not just of uh, Riker, though. There's also one of Radon, you know. So I'm not saying that, like, he's vain or anything inherently, but I, I'm wondering if it could be Mesmer, though, in the portrait. I'm not sure. It's just because the same eye is covered that Mesmer lacks. It's a little interesting. Also, the cloak on top of the head looks like, um, what do you call it, uh, red hair, which Mesmer also has. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But the eye being covered is really interesting. Yeah. Okay. I wish to journey with you All right, to that's the it. flame of M and guide you. Alright, so we can actually get her level up dialogue again. Shall I turn your runes to strength? Let my hand rest upon you. For but a moment. Share them with me. Your thoughts. Your ambitions. The principles you would follow. So we hear this so rarely it's easy to forget, but what you do when you level up with her is you share your thoughts, principles, and ambitions, like what you seek to do. It's really interesting. Also, you can see, it's really hard to see through the screen. There we go. Look at the glow, tiny little glow as you clasp her hand. I will note Melina has the same eye covered as that portrait. And we go a journeying again. And we got the amulet of Rold. Not the amulet, the talisman, the, the thingy. The medallion. Conjoined split medallion depicting the flame peak. Brandishing the medallion activates the grand lift of Rold, connecting Landal to the mountaintop of the giants. The forge of the flame of ruin is said to have is said to be found upon their peaks, and it is here Melina wishes to travel in resuming your journey together. Very intimate, yeah, but it's also like uh, what you're sharing with her is is what you want to be, and that's what you channel. Um, I want to be a powerful warrior who can wield the heaviest weapons. Congratulations, your strength just went up. I wish to be a sorcerer who can cast the most powerful spells. Congratulations, your int just went up, right? Like, there's something about, like... I'm not saying it's like a psychological profile or something, but it's really interesting... Who, what you choose to level up can say a lot about you. Are you a dexterous warrior? Do you like to, to stay at range and wear light armor? Do you like to wield heavy weapons and face everything head on? You know, what is your style? It says a lot about how you level up and they're really working with that in this context. Also, I wanted to point out this. We talked about this a bit on the Discord, but there's golden vines on all of these figures, which is really interesting because normally vines are destructive. If a tree has vines on it, it's very likely that the, the vines are choking the life out of that tree um, because they are invasive. Maybe they're sucking nutrients out. Maybe they're like literally choking it so it can't get things. It's, it's interesting that the tree, the vines here depict something more like a protective cover in these statues. Almost always every statue has gold vines growing all over them. And spears. I think some people think this might be Mesmer. There's a lot of different spears, though. I'm not sure. Like, most ivy plants will kill everything around it. Yeah. They can destroy, like, brick. You ever seen those beautiful old buildings covered in ivy? Yeah. It wrecks the, the brick over time. 
Can you go up to the Frenzy Flame immediately after beating Morgoth without talking to Melina and get getting the rolled medallion? I uh so you can't actually access the Frenzy Flame until you defeat Morgoth. Um also you can't warp until you get the roll medallion. It forces you to rest at the bonfire and acquire the roll medallion before you can progress. There else there's a fog wall here you can't pass. And the grace isn't here, and when you open up the map, it's all covered in those X's you can't teleport. So, we can't get to the Frenzy Flame directly. We can go now, we'll have to do the whole jump puzzle, but you can't get there until after beating Morgoth. So we're gonna do that next. But I think we're gonna say that for next time, because it's really late, everybody. I'm tired. Lore. Lore done for tonight. I'll be back tomorrow. I think I might continue the lore -thon. I've been going back and forth with playing Dragon's Dogma 2 and playing this game. But we'll see. We'll see what I feel like. We're kind of... I'm just really into the Lorathon right now. I want to get some good progress in it so we can move to Dark Souls 1. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for hanging out. I really appreciate it. Um, thanks for, you know, hanging out, chatting. Thanks for the support, subs, bits, um, lurking, chatting, everything. Oh, I gotta watch Fallout 3. The Not Fallout 3, the Fallout show. <laughs> Today was really fun. Thank you so much for hanging out. Seriously, it's really it's really great to see how many people are intrigued by the lore. It's like, it's fun. It's fun to share. It wouldn't be nearly as fun without sharing it. I used to know nobody who played these games. I would think about lore of Bloodborne and like read about it and read other theories and, you know, play the game. And I didn't have anyone to share it with because I knew no one who played the games. So it's nice to have this whole community to talk to. And it's like a beautiful thing. I know sometimes we get all into the you know, drama of the lore and like, who's right and who's wrong and you're dumb and blah, blah, blah. But like, it's really fun. And I would, I, I want us to remember that above all. Like, keep that positivity and remember that it's much better to have a lot of people to talk to than nobody. Let me tell you, it is boring. I would, I would talk to people about lore theories that I didn't even, I didn't even, they didn't even know Bloodborne, but I did my best. <laughs> Just got here. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry, just finishing for the night. Actually, one more thing. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I just noticed something in this. What's that? Because if that's Marika's bedchamber, that would be right above it, right? Hang on. That's like the source of the of the light that we see going down into the bedchamber. Mesmer? Mesmer? Machek? Yeah, that would be the source of the light, is this whole thing. With the boy, the, the potentially boy or girl at the center. Hmm, I wish I could fly. I was zoom in on that. Alright, we'll, we'll keep this up. We'll keep an eye on this for later. Never noticed that statue up there. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, good night, everybody. Let's see, I'm gonna take a peek to see if anyone, if I want to raid anybody, but I think we might just say bye until tomorrow. Because I'm sweepy. And I really want to eat, um, maybe like pasta or something. Maybe like creative mode, yeah. Fly mod next time, 100%, 100%. Um, I'll send you over to Oro playing Elden Ring. I'm, I'm just gonna take a guess that it's PvP, but I'm not certain. Can't assume. Up close shot of that statue? Yeah, I'd like to see if it's one that you've seen before. I don't really recall. Um, and YouTube, thanks so much for hanging out. No raid over there, but, um, Oro does stream like me, so if you want to, like, I know for sure he does. So, you can check him out on YouTube if you want. Thanks so much, everybody. I'll be back tomorrow. Join Discord and Twitter for go live updates, or just follow on Twitch, whatever is easiest for you. So you can continue with more lore, especially once we start getting into the other games. Good night, everybody. See you next time. Oh my god, my nose is itchy. Bye-bye. Aw, oh, thanks, Lyco, for that. That's perfect. See you next time. Bye-bye. Aw, oh, man, the sleepy hit me all at once. Sorry, gamers. I also didn't get my water. <laughs> so I'm tired. <laughs> okay. See you next time. <laughs>